Professor, if you'd like to call around. Of course, I'll be there if Brian's ringing. You try and keep me away. Now, that's not him. I mean, if you want to talk to Brian while he's phoning me, I'm only too willing. Nothing I'm going to say that you can't listen to, you know. I never thought there would be either. On the other hand, don't expect me to stand in the backyard while you're talking to him. Hey, gorgeous. Do you need sweetening? Sugar's on the table. Oh, yeah, don't mind about the sugar. Just come over here and stir it with your little finger. Oh, you miss your way. You should have had your own show. <laughs> Oh, well, it could be worse. I mean, she's quite high, I suppose, the League of Mother-in-Laws. I mean, when you think of the picture that Les Dawson paints, she can lip-read, you know. Well, my mother-in-law can not only lip-read, she could take it down in shorthand as well. I never thought of Mr Sedgwick with a mother somehow. Oh, Jim had a mother all right, no danger. And she's flipping welcome to him and all. I mean, his business interests and his site meetings down Wolverhampton, his cost breakdown of the housekeeping budget. I'm quite happy with my freedom, thank you. Even if it does mean me making a living out of chip butties. Yeah. Well, my mother-in-law's expecting a phone call about two from my husband who's in Qatar, so I'd like to be there if it's all right. I mean, if we can arrange lunch hours and that. Listen, love, you just suit yourself. I'll hope for. And if I can't cope, I'll put a notice on door saying out for lunch, which might be bad for trade, but I am not a grabber. I'll make it about 1.30. As I say to myself every morning as I come through the door to smell a sour grease and stale wooden. If Great Tycoon had wanted to put something in my name, I mean, why couldn't it have been a corset factory or something? Yes, love, and what can we get for you? How much are your pies? They vary. What sort of pies do you want, Mr Tatlock? The meat and tater to take out. Oh, and uh, change from a pound. I think we can manage that. Stanley, let me spell it out. It's the Manchester knockout. It's the finals. It's 5.01. It's seven legs. And Joe Cartwright, the district second, so he's going to be on the door. So if you're not a paid-up member of the British Legion, you've got no chance. I'll get in. I'll a guest. Stan, to go as a guest, you've got to go with a member. And a member is someone like myself who's had the foresight and wisdom to shell out his contribution. That's settled them. You're taking me. I've told you, I'm not going. I don't believe you. Look, you're as famous as I am, aren't you? I mean, since Hill has been nursing her arty, when are we at a square meal here? Stanley Marion's been here dishing out for us. Gannis, we've had some real uh, gold on blues we've had. We'll have no gold on blues today. Only gold on blue crisps. Yeah, well, you have to go to Chippy, won't you? I'll be whining and dining with me, Judy. Be short of a couple of bob, I'll lend you some money for chips. I don't want chips. Who wants chips when there's hot pot? What hot pot? A dance final, followed by hot pot supper. And that good hot pot down the Legion, you know. Well, you have to cop for my card. The Joe can't write on the door. He knows I haven't paid, doesn't he? Stanley, I'm sorry. I am seeing Marion in the Rovers at lunchtime, and when I give her the good news about the lodging situation, I reckon we'll be out celebrating tonight. What good news? I've told you. Elsie seen her, said she can go in. Saw her in the corner shop, likes the look of her. Well, you've no need to tell her today. I mean, you can tell her tomorrow, couldn't you? No way, Stanley. Not after the way she's been worrying about them digs. Anyway, she can move into Elsie's tonight. Look, she'll, she'll understand if you say hot pot. Stanley, let me ask you a simple question. Yeah. Has Ilde ever understood? Has Ilde, through the years, ever accepted coming second to hot pot and pints of best bitter? No. Now shift yourself. I want this table. I want to press me strides. Look, bite me head off if you like, but I still think you should talk to the police. Start a new career, you mean? Coppers and art? Don't be silly. Well, I'll stop being silly if you'll start nagging. I'm not nagging you, love. I'm just expressing a point of view. I mean, I'm in entitled to a point of view, aren't I? Yes, but look, love, you must admit, with the experience that you had, that you may be, well, just a little bit prejudiced. Oh, thanks very much. Well, it's very natural. You're bound to be if you've suffered some sort of random violence yourself. All I'm saying is we've now had three muggings round here recently. The police have said definitely that kids are involved. OK, so because Ray Atwood gets himself a new cassette, Player. I've got to rush to the police and, and shop him. Is that the word? Is it? I mean, what are you saying? I'm, I'm just a neurotic female who sees muggers in every dark alley. Well, of course I'm not, but at the risk of repeating myself, it is a sensitive subject as far as you're oh, concerned. Give me strength. Look, I know it's a problem. It's a real problem. There's no point getting hysterical and, and bothering the police with useless information. I'm crying out loud, Ken. Will you let the police decide if it's useless? Any road is the lads all up and above board. There's no harm done, is there? Well, of course harm could be done. If those kids find out that I've been running to the police, what confidence are they going to have in me? What trust? And the whole relationship that I've built up and that I need to function will be destroyed. I'm sure they're capable of being discreet, love. Look, if you're talking about folks getting hurt, 
What about Mrs. Schofield? I saw her around the old folks' place, and I'll tell you something, she'll never be the same woman again. So, what happened to Turkey then? Well, Turkey got knocked on the head, didn't it? Hey, right, what about this fella, eh? He says, I won't be seeing you this week. I'm flogging me Volvo through Turkey. Is that right? They told me it was a lorry load of frozen chickens for Turkey. Are you sure it wasn't fish fingers for Finland? It turns out it's sausage rolls. Three times of old bangers with gloves on. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, a Frank Miller. Don't think we've met. Nice to meet you. Go to us. Yes, it's nice to see a bit of class among the brown sauce and vinegar hey, bottles. never mind the cracks, eh? Right. Oh, who's talking? Fish fingers. Finland. <laughs> now, Marty Kane's got no problems. Anyway, got me back here quicker. Ah, oh, well, there is that. And being as how it was Spain I went to... Oh, don't tell me. Let me guess. You fetch me an onion. <laughs> Cop for this, eh? Now, listen, I'm free all afternoon if you fancy a posh meal for a change. All the Arab money coming in, Brian out there in the desert, coining the shekels. You ought to be out buying mink coats instead of on the fish and ship patrol here. Well, he's not struck oil yet, has he? Hey, next time you're in touch, will you give me my regards? Yeah, I'll be speaking to him this dinner time. Oh, I'm just popping out Gail Lockett to lunch. Hey, hang on, Mrs Sedgwick! Look, I'm not asking you to put out in writing. I'm not asking you to sign nothing. You want a bit of a post-mortem, do you, on the remains of that pie? Oh, you're trying to take a fork in that, that's all. Oh. Oh, it's just a bit hard, Albert, isn't it? It's not one of ours, though. I know it's not one of yours. All I'm after is your expert <laughs> opinion. Oh. You see, I'm not one to make a fuss, not unless I've got a good case. Yeah. Well, I can't go cos I'm working. Mind you, I'm not a member either, you know. Well, why don't you ask Albert there? I've tried, he's taking fair <laughs> Oh, well, that's it, innit? I don't think why don't you pull a stroke, Stan? What do you mean? Get him to ditch Fairclough and take you. Buy him a rum, pack of the nuts and a few drinks. What, and have Fairclough out of my blood? Well, that's the only way I can see you. Hi! Oh, hang on. Eddie, coffee, love. Hey, who is it? Fella called Chalky. <coughs> oh, right. Mm. Look, here. Uh, get yourself something big and expensive. I've got some great news for you. Hello, Chuck. I've got something for you. Something big and expensive, the man said. Um, I'll have a lager, please. Here you are. Usual bet, please. Right, look. What's this for? It's the key to my front door. You'll need it, won't you? Eddie told me that you wanted lodgings. Now, I know we haven't discussed terms and all that, but... Well, if it don't suit, just say so. <laughs> of course you suit. You couldn't suit better. But it's the first I've heard. I thought you two were in constant radio contact, like, uh, ten four and all. <laughs> Bad face flat. Have you spoiled my big surprise, Elsie? Have you given her the griff? I've just given her the front door key, which means she can move in this after. Who was that on the phone? Oh, it was Chalky. One of the bin gangs haven't turned in. They want me to work this afternoon. 25 quid, such, you know. He's going with a blonde, isn't he? Big peroxide birth. There's meeting her down at the docks. Can you manage the moving in? Yeah, of course I can. It's only a couple of cases and a few bits and bobs. Yeah, well, if there's anything heavy needs up in there, uh, Stan will be in. Won't you, Stan? Hey. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. We'll celebrate. Oh, oh listen, Eddie, there's, there's a couple that live across the road. I promised them faithfully I'd babysit for them tonight. Oh, but if you're going to be on your own... He won't be on his own. He can come with me to Legion. Oh, all right, go on, I'll go to Legion. You get settled in, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, you want to watch him, you know, else? He'll be over them rooftops, over the raptors, down that little trap door. I'll tell you, it's all crafty stuff with Eddie, you know. That little trap door is over my bedroom. Oh. He knows the score, don't you? Get it all weighed up. Fred, the phantom roof crawler. <laughs> I bet him and Emily Bishop have been at it for years. Hey, <laughs> <don't you? laughs> I'll have another cup if you're not busy. I'm just wondering when I'm going to get me break. I thought you looked a bit mithered. It's all on me, boss. Did you see her just wander off with that fella? You get a relief, don't you? She's my relief. There's nobody else expected to have gone for it. She'll be back. Yes, when it suits her. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not fair, is it? Brian ringing and me stuck here. I mean, I did ask her, but it just goes in one ear. All right, tell her. Don't worry, I will. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, it's gone a bit posh, is not it? Folks used to call it Liberty Hall. <laughs> uh, shall I get the rest of that stuff? No, love, it's OK. I'll fetch it. Don't want you straining yourself. How about a cup of tea? It's only my knitting bag and a few pair of shoes. Look, relax. Make a cup of tea and find some biscuits. Oh, well, I am parched. But as for pinching biscuits... Oh, it'll be all right. One thing I'll say for Elsie, she's not mean. 
She likes her out, likes her ding dong. But she does not count her biscuits. Not like Phil's mother. I mean, not like the digs I've just left. Flipping biscuit barrel had a lock on it. I said, I know you call them penguins, but they'll not fly away. Not that I'm having much success, are you? Hello, love. Hello. I saw you van outside. I just dropped in from the shop. How are you doing? Oh, fine. I, I was just making a cuppa. Hope you don't mind. No, I could do with one myself, except Ivy's probably got a binoculars on me. Anyway, see you later, love. Okay. Up to six. Ta-ra. We can't find the biscuits, Elsie. We can't find... Well, oh. hang on a minute. Oh. Here. Stop round to the shop and see what you can do with oh, that. Oh, you're a belter. Oh, you shouldn't, Elsie. Oh, I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. I'll get some digestive, shall I? Yeah. I stand. Oh. When you see Eddie, will you tell him I'm free tonight, after all? Free? All babysitting arrangements are cancelled. So if he wants to come round here about eight, he won't forget, will you? I'll brew that tea when you come back. Just live up and have a look at my bedroom. There's a law against selling stale meat pies, isn't there? Of course there? there's a law, Mr Tatlock. That's why we don't sell them. Thank well, you. why do you tell me that? Because it is stale. I know because I ate it. I mean, if I hadn't have eaten it, I wouldn't know it was stale, would I? I suppose that makes sense. I couldn't eat that bit any road. You can pave Oldham Street with that. Well, generally, what doesn't get eaten gets taken back. I suppose it does. Back to Brickyard. Look, I'm not saying we couldn't have made a mistake. I'm not saying one didn't get left behind. So, if you want to choose another from the selection... Look, I don't want another pie. I couldn't eat two. I want my money back. I can't give you your money back, Mr Tatlock. And why not? Are you learn that next up? Look, hang on a minute. I can't give you your money back once he's gone through the till. Look, you've got through the till, you've got to ring no sale, that's right. Oh, do I? You're an expert on this money back routine, aren't now, you? Now, look, I'm not asking you a simple I'm question. I'm sorry, Mr Tatlock, if you want your money back, you'll have to ask Mrs Sedgwick. Oh. Oh, I bet you thought I got lost. Oh, what a rush, Ed. Time's that busy. Time just seemed to fly. I had a bite to eat, couple of Swiss bugs and tonics, and then... Frank says, let's go shopping, and I suddenly thought, crimes and gale, she's all on a tongue. So I just said, ring me and dashed. Right, love. Now, do you mind me taking over this order? Only, this young lady's due on a dinner break. It's been due for over an hour. Oh, I know, love, and I'm sorry. I mean, I should have my hands slapped. I mean, if you feel like slapping my but hands. it's not so much the dinner break. I've had something to eat. Oh. But I did tell you Brian was ringing from Qatar, which isn't exactly two minutes away. Oh, God, Gail, forgive me. Do you know, I clean forgot. I mean, did I say slap my hand? You must feel like half killing me. What annoyed me was the way you swanned out. Off, Gail, and you were gone. I'll be honest with you. If you do that again, I'll follow you out. Do you know something, Gail? I won't blame you one little bit if you did. Right, love, sorry about that. Now, was it tea? I've come about this pie you sold me. Pie? Yes, it's well below standard. It's right wonky. He wants a refund. Oh, a refund, eh? Well, would you like a refund on toast with jam on it? Or would you like a refund with chips and salt and vinegar? Oh. Did you find it? What? The advert. Advert? The discount warehouse. Oh, that. See the cassettes? Yeah. Notice the price? What? The radio cassette things with headphones. Did you notice the price? No, I didn't really look. Oh, well, I'll tell you. They were 60 quid, give or take a bob or two, and those were the cheapest. So what? So, here we have a situation. Three muggings in this area in recent weeks. Kids definitely involved, according to the police. So it's Deirdre, the great detective again, is it? Coppers at the front door asking for your cooperation and this lad down at your youth club flaunting these radio cassette things that are down there at 60 quid. Well, there is such a thing as higher purchase, you know. Oh, it's HP now, is it? Last time you told me it were fond parents. Next thing you know, these radio cassette things will be growing on trees. Well, I just think you've got a bee in your bonnet. <laughs> Could have just done the odd job here and there. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of jobs going round where a lad can pick 60 quid up. I can do with a few jobs like that myself. Look, if you want to play Sherlock Holmes, OK. But I don't particularly fancy myself as Dr Watson. And as for casting Ray Atwood as Professor Moriarty or the Hound of the Viaduct or something, well, I think that's a bit wide of the mark, to say the least. I see. So you're just not going to say anything to the police, to the lad you... Uh... You just think it's far-fetched? 
well, whatever it is, somehow I just don't see myself as a snoop. Hey, Stan, did Marion say she was going babysitting straight from work? Or is she popping into Elsie's first? Perhaps I better call in. Call who? Call where? Call in at Elsie's, see if Marion popped back. Oh, it's no good going round to Elsie's. She's still in there, of course. It's uh, cutting her toenail, you know. <laughs> what are you trying to do to me, Stanley? Put me off women for life. I'm getting fed up waiting for you, punting yourself up. Getting worried the hot pot's getting cold, are you? Stanley de Gourmet, is it? Getting impatient for his first good folk? I'm not worried about the hot pot. It's a match I'm worried about. I've got a few quid on Barney Miller. It's all hot pot this morning. I know, but I got money off the windows and went to the chippy. Perhaps I'd better call in and see if Marion popped back. No chance. No, only if she did pop back and saw me all clobbered up, shoes irresistibly shining, she might just uh, knock the baby sitting into touch. Who are you going to talk all flaming night? There's plenty of time, Stanley. You're like a cat and a brick. I've been standing in ten minutes and Barney been getting double tops. Do you know you'd kill, wouldn't you? You'd kill steel and commit smash and grab all for the sake of a hot pop sub at the doubles and a 180. Ah, you want to go with your bird, you go with it. I'll find somebody else. Only kidding, Stanley. Come on, we're going. Just heard that front door go. I hope he's not Eddie. He needs me without my face on, so to speak. Ah, oh, it's time going out to the pub. Yeah, I expect so, cos I said eight-ish. You're very fond of Eddie, aren't you? I know some folks think that's strange, but you're right. Oh, maybe I'd like him to lose a stone, have his teeth fixed. <laughs> but, well, I've gone for looks in my time and been disappointed. Shake hands, love. Actually, between us, cos I've not said anything to Eddie, until recently I was quite involved. Well, I won't say a word, George. Landlady's son. All them digs you've just moved out of? Yeah, Phil. He's in the army. It sort of started on one of his leaves. He's stationed in Ireland. Well, what are you going to do when he comes home? Oh, nothing. It's all over. I mean, never written to me for months. Never came home on his last leave. He went skiing with his mates or something. But now his mum's blaming me. She thinks he stops away because of me. Mm. <clears throat> Tried to get me hooks in him. That's how she sees it. I can see why he wanted to move, love. Oh. It's been so weird lately, I felt trapped. I mean, I had to tell Eddie all these lies. Well, I couldn't have him calling round, could I? So I crept in this afternoon, got me gear, left a note and got out of it. Do you think I should go and give him a knock? I don't know. He, uh, he might be some doing something disgusting with aftershave. <laughs> Bang on the wall. Is that all right? Well, if Hilda's out, yes. If she's in, no. We'll have messages in Morse all night otherwise. So there's me falling over backwards to make sure there's no secrets. Well, of course you are, love. I mean, we've never had a secret in our house, you know. Oh, well, you're very lucky. <laughs> when folks start acting like that, well, folk in family, well, it knocks your coat leg, don't it? You see, Gail with this phone lock, she don't want us there, you know. Now, I call that being nasty. Oh, kids can be very awkward. I know I've had one myself. Well, I mean, I could be nasty with her, couldn't I? I mean, I can push her nose out. But no, our Brian's ringing, so I ask if she wants to come round. And what happens? She doesn't show herself. Oh, I shouldn't worry, love. Well, our Brian starts asking questions, doesn't he? Yeah. I tell him that she's gone back to work at Gaffey. Well, he blew his top. I mean, how would I tell that she's not mentioned it to him? Well, if he's coming back, it'll all get sorted out. Oh, I don't know. It's three months at the very least, you know, before he comes back. Oh. Hey, Fred, can you manage if I go off a bit early? Yeah, we'll do the washing up in the morning. Why, it's out of. No, but, I mean, bet I'd yesterday have to go clubbing it, didn't she? I mean, she can go. Oh, can I? Don't tell me you're going clubbing, better you. Am I, Egg? I was going to say. No, no, just fancy an early night. It's only ten minutes. Nick off through the side door, stop her squawking. <laughs> Big night, you know, at the Legion. Darts final, hot pot supper. Oh, there'll be some emergency that's keen night, I'm right. sure. Ah, look. Right performances, you know, these hot pot suppers. Rough, I've heard. You ask Freddie, he's seen a few. Rough, but spectacular. The high point being is when they wheel on this gigantic hot pot. <laughs> We've had some belters down at that Rotary Club, I'll tell you. Oh, Silence is called for by the hot pot master. And but for the occasional burp, is given. A choir of Blackpool landladies sing songs of praise. 
the cross burst open, and from amidst the stewing meat, carrot, and bits of spud floating round in the gravy, steps Miss Hot Pot. <laughs> oh, give over. They don't have crusts on Lancashire Hot Pot. That's cottage pie. Hey, up. There you look. There they come. Uh, all the towels. Keep the pumps from going dry, will you, love? Get them in. What are you going to have, sweetheart? He's in the chair. Nothing, thanks. I carried him home, full of ale and hot pot. I carried you home. Now to so it. If it hadn't been for me, you'd have been it cut, swimming about. <laughs> I want to protect him, you know, from the muggers. It was the other way round, it was. I carried you home, you dragged me in here. So you get your hand down. Mine's are wrong. Hey, lads, have you, uh, have you seen Eddie Yates on your travels? Is Yates a mugger? <laughs> He's a mugger. <laughs> blimey, stayed he were in, he should have been locked up. A couple of comics, you know. Him and Stanley. All you the ale was up. All the food were eaten, and then he started calling for strippers. All right, all right, we're all up with a flaming lark, you know. Hello, Rover. Yeah, this is the Rover's return, but we're not open yet, you know. Betty. Betty Turpin. He could have given us a shout. I did. Well, I didn't hear yet. Hey, see, in this pot. Yeah. Do you know, there's something about the ale in the Legion goes straight to your head. Ah, it was a grand night, though, wasn't it? Well, it must have been. Otherwise, I wouldn't be feeling like, oh, it's not the lads, is it, for me? Oh, morning, Angel. How are you, then? I brought you shopping. Oh, thank you. Uh, Elder Payer, when did you come back? Yeah. Well, Good night, was it, last night? Yeah, thanks. Watching them playing darts? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad I really am. Some of the matter? Some of the matter? Oh, no, life's just a bowl of roses, isn't it? I hope she's got some bacon with her soda bacon. What was all that about? What? Did she seem peculiar to you, then? All, like, uh, aggressive, like? Oh, that's women, you know. They like to make you feel guilty. Ah, good, she's got some bacon. They could have a fry up. Perhaps I better go round and see what's up. Oh no, don't do that. It'd be fatal. But there was real hatred in them eyes, Stan. Oh, I know. It often looks to me like that, but it, it doesn't mean anything. Are you sure you wouldn't like a fry up? Oh, dead sure. Coming here, getting back on my perch. Ah, well, you're going to be flying off somewhere else today, aren't you? You are. Ward 2, Weatherfield General. And what would I want to go there for? Because that's where Betty is. Been there all night, hasn't she? A couple of thugs set about her when she left here last night. Oh, no. Hospital's just been on the phone. Fred, tell me you don't mean that. I no. wish I could, I wish I could, but I can't. Betty mugged, eh? She wouldn't hurt a blinking fly, wouldn't Betty? How is she? What did they say? Well, they just said satisfactory. I mean, uh, well, that can mean anything, can it? Oh, my God. Anyway, they're keeping her in. They want somebody to go and see if she needs anything. You know, they've taken everything. and bagged the lot. What to? Yeah. I wish I could get my hands on the scum that did it, I'm telling you. They'll be looking out of that flaming hospital, they would. So, he's off taking a load of air conditioning units to Yugoslavia, isn't he? I suppose you can take me as well, if you like. Fat chance. So you'll be able to stop here and help me a bit, will you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I shan't be seeing Frank again now for four days. Hey, you're getting at me, aren't you? I wasn't back that late. 
Oh, I know you'd miss speaking to your Brian when he rang his mum. I wish I had. You wish? Ivy told him I was working here, didn't she? So when I got home last night, there he is ringing me. What am I doing leaving Nicky all day? Why didn't I tell him? He don't want me working in a cafe with a load of lorry drivers. Oh, no. Oh, yes. We had a very expensive row. Oh, they're awful, aren't they, rows up front? And when you've rung off, there's nothing you can do to make things better well, again. I did, but I'd already written to say I was working here, but Big Mouth Ivy has to tell him first. There, there is just one thing, Gail. What? Well, I mean, you will, you will be stopping on here, won't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. Well, never mind what husbands think, eh? Oh, I might. I'm stopping, but I still might. Hello, lovely. I'm tired of sight. How are you feeling? Probably not as bad as I look, love it. Come on, sit yourself down. Fred told me when I come in this morning. I know. They wanted to phone last night and I said, what's the point? I mean, not anybody could do then, love. What happened, love? Uh, would you rather not talk about it? There's not a lot to talk about, love. It all happened in a flash, you know. I went home my usual way, you know. Yeah. Went down Albert Road and then across by those those new flats, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's well lit, apart from when you have to go under that little railway bridge, you know. And all of a sudden, that somebody just knocked me on the floor and started dragging on my bag. Oh, I I mean, I stuck to it. I know they always say you should let it go, but, well... It's only natural, isn't it? It is, love. And, and that's when they started to, you know, knock me about and... And then they just ran off and left me lying on the floor. Aren't there some wicked folk? And only young? I think so, love. I'd say one of them were a girl. What makes them do it? I don't know, love. I only had about six pounds in my bag, but... Well, my biggest loss is going to be some snapshots that I had in there as well, and, you know... And my Cyril and, and Gordon and Maggie. I don't suppose I'll see them again. Were you keen? Yeah. Yeah, but the police say that they'll... Uh, you know, they look after me house till I get my locks changed. Well, you make sure you do. <sighs> yeah. So, those folks come out of it worse than me, so I... I suppose I've been very lucky, really, but... Mm. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. How are you going to manage, lovey, at the Rovers, you know, with Mrs Walker being away? <laughs> we'll manage, cock. Even if it comes to Fred working, we'll manage. Ah, uh, you're not going in at all today? Uh, this afternoon, yes, but not morning, noon and night. Just that as a rate payer, I like to feel I'm getting my money's worth, you know. Yeah, well, I was there till ten o'clock with the youth club last night, you know. Yes, we know. Anyway, I'll just get this lot put away, then I must get Hello? back. Hello, it's only me. Oh, hi, Bet. I've said you'd be here. Huh. Yeah, what's up? Well, Betty's in hospital. She got mugged walking home last night. Oh, no. Oh, God, not Betty now. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm awful. Yeah. I don't think she's badly hurt, but they're keeping her in for observation, so there's some stuff she needs. I've got to get back next door because Fred's on his top. Come here, love, I'll take it in. Would you, kid? Yeah, oh, of course. Terrific. Alf said it'd be OK by him. Uh, did she see who it was? No, just a couple of kids, she thinks. Anyway, I've got most of this stuff upstairs, towels and that, you know. Great. Look, uh, I better dash, so I'll see you when you get back, love. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, listen, what ward is it? Ward two. Two. Right. Bye, Ken. Bye. I'm flipping it. Um, come in! What are you about? Looking for you, she's not. Do you know what's up with her, else? Only the way she was this morning. Have you ever heard that saying about hell hath no fury like a woman stood up? Stood up? Yeah, that poor girl. 
girl last night. She waited in the Rovers, she waited in here, and all she got was a second-hand version from Len Fairclough about how you and him, Stan, were in the British Legion supping yourself silly. But she said she couldn't come out. She said she was babysitting. Yes, and then later she told Stan she wasn't, and she told Stan to tell you. He never said a word, honest. I'll kill him. I'll flaming kill him! <laughs> right, come on, in here then, flowers for our Betty. Yeah, I'm not waiting for that, love. Thank you, kind sir. I only wish there was more I could do, you know, like finding the swines that did it. Hey, I'll say, it doesn't mean you'll be out again, does it? I mean, there's only me round here, you know. Oh, shut up! Here, man, Bet. Cheers, Ivy. You know, we're too soft in this flaming country in England. We always have been. That's why we get these muggings and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But harsh penalties don't always work there, do they? Cheers, Captain. Don't do any harm, do we? No, but once upon a time, he could be deported for thieving. It still didn't stop it, did it? It stops him in Middle Eastern countries, though, don't it, with the chocolate hands off. Look, I say, I'll go and buy the flowers, eh? Oh, no. Well, you've been out all morning. Well, what do you know about buying flowers? It'd be like in sending a bull out to buy best china. I'll tell you what you can do, though. What? Get your hand in your pocket and get some in there. Oh, go on, then. Hey, come round here. Don't you worry, Albert. I was just on my way. You know, once you could go anywhere, no matter how dark it was, and carry any amount of money. You still can, my little garden gnome, as long as you don't mind being bashed on the head now and again. Mm. Oh, yeah. So what are police doing about it then, do we Well, know? there's very little they can do until they've got somewhere to go on. Ken! Oh, what have I done now? It's what I'm hoping you will do, like finishing this off for me and getting the flowers to Betty. Pleasure. Only you see Fred face reckons he can't manage without me. Hey, I've only got one pair of hands, you know. I've known young ladies you've been out with who would dispute that, oh. Tar Ken. <laughs> Ah. Well, I wash it. Oh, it breaks your heart to see her, don't it? It does. Hey, it's no serious, though, is it? No, I don't think so. They're just keeping her in because it banged on her head. I think she's expecting to be out tomorrow. Drink? Yeah, go on, I'll have her tomato juice. Tomato juice. Oh, are you lot pulling to pieces, then? Well, nobody today. Have you heard? Heard what? Oh, Betty. Can I have a word with you, please? I think I know what you're going to say. Well, it won't stop me saying it. Are you going to the police now, or are you still harping on about having to retain the confidence of these... these kids? Look, love, the police asked us to report if we saw anything suspicious, right? Right. Right. Well, all you've seen is a lad with a new set of headphones. No. I'll tell you something else I've seen, shall I? What? Betty Turpin in a hospital bed. Hey, Ken. No. Yes. Yeah, love. Oh, thanks, Alfie. Did it make you sick? Yeah. Yeah. We're collecting for some flowers. And is that all you do? Oh, forget it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stanley. Did I wake you up? What's going on? Well, now you're awake, perhaps you'll answer me a little question. Like, why you never passed a message on? What message? That Marion wasn't going out and would I call for her? Oh. Oh. Did I not? No, you didn't. Oh, well, it slipped out of my head. I forgot. Forgot? Yeah. So why, when I said I'd nip round to see if Marion was in, you said there was no point? Did I say that? Yes, you did say that, Stanley. And that is not forgetting, Stanley. That is a lie. That is a plain, rotten lie. Aye. Yes, so now I've got a girl who thinks I stood her up. Do you realise what you might have done? Oh, it's no. Nout? Nout? It might be everything to me, Stanley. Because in case you hadn't noticed, I'm not the sort of fella who changes his girlfriend every time he changes his flaming socks. And I'm warning you, Stan, if she gives me the elbow and it's cos of you, the next darts match you're at, you be the board and I'll be chucking a flaming at us. I thought I was doing you a favour. A favour? Well, I thought you'd rather come to the darts with me than take her out. You thought that? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Stanley. That's a very sad reflection on your life. Mind you, it's going to get a lot sadder if I can't sort Marion round. You're not going round then, no? Yes, I am. I'm going to get out my muck first, and then I am. So keep them fat little fingers crossed. Evening. I'll do. Hello. I think these will do. Very nice. Are they for Betty Turpin? Yes, I'll take them at visiting time tonight. Oh, where's Tracy? Round at a pal Sally's. Well, did you go round to the police? Not yet, no. No. I'll tell you what I have decided to do, though. 
I decided to talk to Ray Atwood myself tonight. I'll tackle him about where he got the money from. Ken, I don't know why you just don't go to the police. Never mind all the arguments. Just go and tell them what's happened and let them sort it out. Told you. Well, tell me again. I have a responsibility to help the police. Yes, of course I have. But I also have a responsibility towards the lads in the youth club. And I have to weigh the one against the other. And that's it, is it? That is it. Right. Your tea's ready. I've, uh, I've come to apologise. Don't let me stop you. Look, I didn't know you were waiting. The reason I didn't know you were waiting is that Stan never told me. Well, I told him to at least twice. Yeah, I know, but he wanted to go to the darts match, didn't he? Yeah. Look, I wouldn't stand you up deliberately. I think too much of you for that. I'll bring Stan round, make him tell you the truth. Will you believe me then? Oh, I'm right to know he's not just doing it to help you out. Oh, he wouldn't do that. Oh, not the sort of tell a lie, is he not? Ah. Oh. oh, it's all right, you daft thing, I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. You do? Yeah. For one thing, that row you had earlier with Stan, most of it I could hear plain as day through this wall. Mm, well, you know then, don't you? Mm. I'm sorry, honest. You better be. Oh, you two have patched up your differences then, have you? <laughs> Can't stay mad at them for long, can you? Mm, you get a bit more practice in first lady. <laughs> Gail, could you let me have a loaf of bread? Only Alf Roberts has sold out now for a slice in house. Oh, I don't know. Hey, can we sell a loaf of bread? What, sell one? I do want it. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, we've got plenty. I just don't know how much they are. Well, I generally pay 36. 36 it is, then. Oh, you've saved my bacon. My Bert would give me my marching orders if I ain't got any bread in house. Uh, by the way, Ivy. Yes. I'd be grateful if next time you spoke to Brian on the phone, you didn't make it your business to inform him of every little thing that I might be doing, like working here. Well, I only happened to mention it, Gail. I wasn't to know it was a secret, was I? It's not a secret, Ivy. I'd rather he heard it from me, that's all. Well, if that's the case, perhaps you should have told him yourself. I'd already written to him, as a matter of fact. 36, you said. Thank you. And while we're at it, Gail, perhaps next time our Brian rings, I and you'll tell me what I can say and what I can't say, and then I'll know, won't I? Right, I will. I bet you not only sold her that bread, I bet you toasted it for her as well. Yeah, well. Well, I'll say to her, our love, look, uh, tell Doris not to bother cashing out. I'll do it myself when I come in tomorrow. Hang on a minute. What? Hey, what's she doing? I'm coming with you. Oh, no, I mean, one of us has got to stop here till Doris turns up. One out, all out. Oh, come on, Gail. Look, Elmer, I told you yesterday, I'm not having you swanning off and leaving me to run this place on me own. Well, it's what? It's only ten minutes before you're off home anyway. I know. So you mean we've both got to stand here for ten minutes with his coats on? Yeah. Do you know, I don't know which is worse, being your boss or being your mother-in-law. You're a tough little madam when you want to be, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's a case of needs must, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, Betty. Oh, aren't they lovely? Oh, thanks ever so. Well, they're not just for me, you know. Well, I know, but you, you will thank everybody, won't you? Well, you'll be able to do that yourself very shortly, won't you? Yeah. I should be out by tomorrow. <laughs> Touch wood. Good. The uh, police haven't managed to come up with anything, I don't suppose. No. I wasn't much help either. I mean, the little bit that I could tell them. Did you actually see? Uh... It's as well that I didn't, I mean. Never know what they might have done. Well. Oh, dear. It taught me something. I'll never walk home on my own again. Not that late. Never. No. And, you know, I'll, I'll never give it a second thought before. All them nights I used to walk along them streets. Oh, Ken. Never again. Anyway, everybody sends you their best wishes, and you can tell them in here, if they don't let you out soon, there'll be three coach loads of visitors arriving. <laughs> well, I'll be glad to be out as well. Worst thing, you know, is it? time that it gives you to brood. You know, you, you get to thinking, what kind of a world are we living in? And we're just afraid of our youngsters. It's only the odd ones, you know, Betty. Yeah. Well, 
You see more of them than I do, love. Yes, I have. I know that they're not all angels any more than we were. But they're by no means all sinners, either. Oh, uh, hello. Could I speak to a Sergeant Bell, please? Thank you. Actually, uh... Actually what? Well, I was going to tell you something if we'd have gone out last night, only... We didn't. Yeah, so I think perhaps I'd better tell you now. Yeah? It's a little confession, really. Again? Hey? Well, last little confession we had, it turned out that your posh flat weren't really your posh flat at all, but belonged to Michael Baldwin. Oh, aye. So what's it going to be this time? Well, this is serious, this is. It was serious then. Yeah, I know, but... Look, as far as you're concerned, I'm a law-abiding, respectable citizen, right? Don't tell me. What? You're one of the great train robbers. No! Well, one of the little train robbers. Petty villain, you know. You mean it? I never did anybody any harm, just... just nicking things, you know, itchy fingers. Oh, Eddie, I think I know what you're going to say. What? You're going to tell me you've been in prison, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I wanted to tell you before, but it... It didn't seem the right moment. When Still doesn't, as a matter of fact. When was it? About eight years ago. How long for? Two years, altogether, all like. Oh, Eddie, how awful. Well, it wasn't exactly the best years of my life. Look, I, I, I wanted you to know because, well, they all know round here and I didn't want you to hear it from somebody else. Oh, I'm glad you have. Yeah, well... Does it make any difference, like? Oh, Eddie, you don't think I'm going to let that make any difference, do you? You know. Oh, why should it matter? Something you did eight years ago. You know, you're lovely, you are. Has anybody ever told you that? Oh, I might get mad at what you did last night, but not eight years ago. And there's me shaking in my shoes about selling you. Just one thing, though. What? Well, you haven't got any other little surprises, have you? Because if you have, I think I'd like to have them all in one go. No, honest. That is the Eddie Yates unexpurgated, whole truth and nothing but that is. Well, that's a relief anyway. I wanted you to know because, well, you know I'm very fond of you, don't you? Yeah. And, and well, we have been going out a while. Yeah. So I thought, like... Well, I just wanted you to know that, so. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you told me. I am. Just clear some of these away. Otherwise, they all have to be smelling as sweet and sour. I thought we might get engaged, like. Marion? Yes, Eddie? Did you hear what I said? Yeah. But you'd like to say it again now that I'm here. Only it's supposed to be the greatest moment in your life. I'd not like it to happen while I was in the kitchen. Well. Well, I thought we might like you. Uh, get engaged, you know. That's if it's all right with you, like. Of course it's all right with me. So? Yeah. You will? <laughs> yeah, I accept. Oh, great! Forty pence, fifty, fifty is a pound, one, two, three, and four makes five pounds. You know, I knew Ray Atwood when he was a human being. He comes from a family of human beings, as a matter of fact, but ever since he got that blooming earphone or whatever it is, he might as well be a zombie or a robot. 
Talk to yourself, Alf. What's all the flaming racket? Language of love, Stanley. Modern language to you. Uh, what are you doing? Turn me breakfast. Kitchen, Stanley. You'll find a couple of clog soles in there. You'll recognise them as slices of toast. You are? I told you. Marion's popping in for our engagement breakfast. Engagement breakfast? Who do you think you are, Cary Grant? Kitchen, Stanley. Otherwise, I'll put nails through your buckets. Engagement breakfast. You're on the flaming bend. And try supping your tea so you don't make a noise like a train going through a tunnel, will you? On the flaming bend. Hello. Morning. Are we still engaged? Of course we are, aren't we? Just checking. In case you had a couple of cold sweats in the middle of the night and decided to change your mind. More well, like hot sweats, thinking about you. Hands off. Hey, who set the table? Me. Grapefruit? Yeah, well, I uh, went down the corner shop. It's in half expensive, isn't it? Oh, but I'm worth it. Of course you are. Go on, zig in. Choice of cereal as well. Yeah, well, Hilda got the uh, Swiss stuff when somebody told her it uh, put ten years on your life. But then Stan took a chance of it, so she hid it. <laughs> Eddie, that's another of your stories. Yeah, I know, but it's harmless, isn't it? How's your grapefruit? Mmm, lovely. I had to cut it with my uh, French paratrooper's penknife. On account there was nothing in Hilda's cutlery come peg, come spare kale as well, you know. <laughs> I bet. Fancy me engaged. Not to mention me. Do you think we ought to uh, tell somebody? Put it about, you know, tell them in the rovers? Well, we could put it in the Times and save a lot of bother. The engagement is announced of Edward, second son of Sir Godfrey Yates, to Marion, lady in waiting to Lady Plonk. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> dad! Hey, Yates, I want some more toast! Well, do it yourself, Stanley. And while you're at it, do a couple for me and Marion. Out of the whole wheat packet. I'm not your famous chef. What's Mr Ogden doing in the kitchen? Would they have had him at that, say, uh, Tiffany's place? Well, no. Right, well, we're not having him here either. <laughs> oh, I love you, Eddie Yates. <laughs> Morning. Morning, what can I do for you? Mr Fairclough. That's me. Frank Hurst. Building inspector. What happened to Jack Lynch? I took early retirement. <laughs> Lucky fella. Yeah. So, you've got his job then, eh? Yeah, about a month now. Good lad, Jack. Everybody says so. Well, you know why I'm here. It's this new house you're building. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jack went over to see it too. Oh, must be about a month ago. Just before he retired, it must have been. It was about two months, actually. Was it two months? <laughs> I could have sworn it was since then. Well, time flies when you're busy, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know I'm here. It's uh, just want to have a little look around. See how yeah. you're getting on. Yeah. There's no need for you to come if you've uh, got something on. Yeah, well, I've got a bit of a rush job on down Balaclava Street. Oh, well, uh, you and I can have a little chat later, then, eh? Yeah. Oh, damn blood. You, Eddie Marty, I'm back. Oh, there is somebody in then. Only with nobody answering me like I thought I might walked into an empty bug up by mistake. What are you doing, Stanley? What's it look like? Mending me breeches. Flaming, Harry, it's like coming back to a doss house. You've got another pair, haven't you? It's arriving then, big enough to put your fist through. Oh. Do you know? I'm tempted to take the next bus straight back to our arches. I am. I mean, I knew I wasn't coming back to the Happy Valley, but I never reckoned on walking in and finding you in your long johns in the middle of the morning, looking as if you were half dead. It's what they call a cultural shock, Stan. Like two women in Rosamond's seat. Walk past me, Nada, just as my trousers bust. <laughs> oh, talk about showing me up. Giving me yeah. You could have bought yourself a new pair, couldn't oh, you? Oh, no, the ask even had all gone. What about your ale money? Oh, that's a separate account. Oh, I. Have you seen what you've done with these? You've sold them into a ridge. Do you know, if you'd sat down on that sharpish, you'd have split down the middle. I didn't want them going again, did I? 
Ooh, not like jumping in at the deep end. Still, I suppose it's less painful in the long run. At least it gets you back to work. Are you glad to be back? Oh, I am ecstatic. No, you can't borrow out. Have I asked? You must be glad back there, won't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the place I haven't seen the same without you. I sat here the other night, and it was like it was dead, you know. There's no life about. Ah, I miss. Yeah. I, I could do with a couple of quid just to collect this afternoon. Go on, take it out of my bag. Thank you. Hey, did you know them two women what was passing when your pants split? No. But they know me now. <laughs> <laughs> Anything has been happening while I've been away? If there has, it slipped my mind. Mm. Well, what can you expect? I mean, when there's no sparkler, there's no sparks, is there? <laughs> Cheers, Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for your good wishes. I'm sure my fiancé, Marion, echoes them sentiments as well. Oh, I do. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Next one's on me. Soon as I'm father to this little romance, mind you. Didn't realise it at the time, did I? <laughs> no, Mr. Well, when you didn't know. Well, good luck to you both, kids. All the best. Thank Good luck to you, Mr. Yates, and to you, Miss Willis. Thanks very much, Mrs. Walker. Thanks. And she'll need every bit of it. What's that, Mrs. Walker? Luck. She needs all the luck in the world. Linking your life with someone like Eddie Yates. Do you know, Fred, I sometimes wonder if many of my sex are not simple-minded. <laughs> I don't know about that, Mrs. Walker. I knew one was as sharp as a ferret. Maid Marion. You know, but I don't know what you're doing with him, though. I mean, you could have had me. Well, I think you're a bit too sophisticated for me, Fred. Probably. You got a drink, did you, Fred? Oh, yeah, I made sure of mine, Yates. I, I thought you might sort of jib, you know, when it came to the shorts. Fred, this is a happy day. A bird on the wing sort of day. Isn't that right? It's perfect. <laughs> well, I wish you'd look as if you were celebrating an engagement instead of looking as if you're suffering from falling out. Perhaps it's a bit more than that. Well, I wouldn't know. I'd just like to know what the hell that building inspector's poking his nose into. Well, I'm not worried about him, mate. Not cutting corners, are you? No, no, me, of course not. No, don't be Set him up again, will you, Fred? Oh, oh, right, oh. oh, you're a gentleman, Mr. Baldwin. Do you know that? I know that. I don't mind telling you. It's cost me a few bob in my time. <laughs> hey, Fred, I don't suppose there's any chance of any champagne, is there? I oh, think we can manage a couple of bottles, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, champagne! Somebody on the pools? Hello, Elder. Hello, Elder. Decided to come home at last, have you? Oh, well, I took a bit of persuading, I can tell you. What's all this about champagne? Yeah, well, we're celebrating, aren't we? Celebrating what? Three stunners and sold you. Told me what? Me and Marion, we got ourselves engaged. Engaged? What, to be married? Yeah. Oh, well, I am pleased for you both. Congratulations. Thanks, Mrs. Ogden. And there's this fat lump told me now to be happening while I've been Oh, away. it must have set me mind. You still sell beer, don't you? Uh, what do you think that is, Ogden? Okay? Scotch it's mist. It's hard to tell sometimes. Just fancy <laughs> engaged. <laughs> You know, I feel like it was my own son that got engaged. Now then, Mrs. O, no tears. Oh, only happy ones, Eddie. <laughs> Here we are. I've had them in the fridge, so they're quite chilled. Yeah, that's perfect, Mrs. Morgan. I'll get the champagne glasses. Thank you. Elizabeth. Hello, everybody. Oh, not so bad, How's it going, my love? Oh, not too bad, you know. Elizabeth, yes. dear, come straight through. I want to hear all about it. Yes, Mrs. Wilkins. Now, are you sure you ought to be out? Oh, yes, I'm all right. <laughs> See some champagne glasses, will you, Fred? Well, Mr. Walker. She looks rough, doesn't she? Suddenly, I don't feel like champagne. No, me neither. Would somebody please tell me what's going on? She was mugged, Hilda. Betty was mugged. Mugged? That slipped me in mind too. You told the police? Last night, I phoned them. Good for you, love. I don't believe it. I don't believe anybody could be so irresponsible. It's you what's irresponsible. Just keep out of this, will you, Why Uncle should Albert? I keep out of it? It's as much my... Don't business. think I've not had second thoughts, I have. Only second thoughts? You should have had third and fourth thoughts before you phoned. On the flimsiest of evidence, you've on the flimsy. flimsiest of evidence, you've exposed this young lad to God knows what at the hands of the police. Look, he's nothing to be frightened of if he's done nothing. But you've told them he's done something. You've told them he's a mugger. No, I haven't. I've just reported my suspicions. But she'd every right to. Not without more proof she hasn't. Otherwise, she'll finish up reporting every teenager in the town, in the country. Which is all right by my book, because most of them are going to turn out villains. Well, if you're going to take that attitude, there's just no point in discussing it. 
I just hope that nobody across at the centre finds out where this information came from, because if they do, my job with those kids will be impossible. Even if he turns out to be one of the young workers? Yes, even if he is. You've always had queer notions of what were right. But you're wrong this time, Ken Barlow. It's dearly what's right, no matter what happens. I'd best be off. I'll see you. Yeah, I was thinking that myself. <coughs> Listen, if you can afford to buy bottles of champagne in here, you shouldn't be bothered that I'm five minutes late back over there. Ah, but it's because I am bothered I can afford champagne, darling. Oh, yeah, I know. See. Hey, I'm coming too. What about you? Uh, no, I think I'll just have another for the road. Dr. Courage? No way. No, I was just thinking, love, why don't we have a proper do? I mean, a real party. Because what you've just gone and done deserves boiling over. You see, at heart, Els is just an old-fashioned romantic. <laughs> oh, I am, I am. Well, how about it? Well, I'm up for it. I mean, this is the first time I've been engaged. Hope it's the last, I know. <laughs> hey, don't worry, Eddie, it will be. There aren't too many birds daft enough to take you on. <laughs> right. Fred, for once in your life, shut up. <laughs> no, we could have it at my house, could we? Oh, smashing. We will not have it at your house, Elsie Tanner. Pardon, Hilda. If there's going to be a party, it's going to be at my house. Where this little romance was first fertilised. And where it blossomed under my care and protection. That's right, isn't it, Eddie? Eh, uh, yes, Mrs. O. In a manner of speaking, like. Well, I don't care where we have it, as long as we have it. Yeah, well, you just leave it to me. Oh, I will, Hilda, I will. See you, kid. Ah, two of I know her tricks, you know. She'd steal the thunder off a blanket and that one. Eh, uh, Mrs. O, this, uh, this party, it is about Marion and I, innit? Oh, yeah, of course it is. Just checking. Look, love, I know how you feel. I understand your anger and your impotence. And I'm very fond of Betty Turpin, too, you know. Ken, I'll tell you what it is with you, shall I? Like it is with a lot of very intelligent, very fair-minded people. See, your ideas about fairness and everybody getting a chance are fine in a perfect world. But this is a jungle now, as I well know, because I got attacked by one of the animals. Full bellies and having enough money to spend hasn't made people any better. It's made them worse. And while you're ranting on about justice, more and more of them are pulling things to bits. Look at this. This is last night's paper. Eighty-year-old woman, unrecognisable after attack. Dog walker, mugged. Gang terrorises estate. And that's just one night's paper. One night. Do you know, I suddenly realised something. I would have told the police about a dozen Ray Atwoods if I thought they'd harmed one hair of Betty's head. Because these animals have got to be stopped. Dead in their tracks, white, black or brown, and I don't care how deprived they reckon they are. Yes? Who? <coughs> yes, there she is. It's for you. The police. Hello? Oh, hello. I see. Oh, no, no, there's no need. I... Uh, well, tea time. I I'll be in at tea time. Bye. Well? I was right. It was him. So the end justified the means then, didn't it? But it's not a philosophy I will ever subscribe to, Deirdre. Because it's a very dangerous philosophy. Oh, yes. Be a party to remember, will this one? <laughs> Make some of the do she's had next door look like fish and chip suppers. <laughs> oh, the cheek of her, though. I mean, you can have it at our house. 
never seen any age for Patty in her house. When do you think of all that's gone on in there over the years? <laughs> Marriage is breaking up like firewood. Who's going to pay for all this? Well, we're not going to skimp on things, are we, Eddie? Oh, oh, no, no. Money's no problem, no. No, of course it's not. I mean, not for an occasion like this. Only the best's good enough. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. How come you'd forgotten all about it? And about Betty Turpin. You going to see now, or what? Just give your head a shake, see if that raffle's got any work. Oh, shut up. I've got my own problems. Like living with you. Stanley, without me behind you, you'd rust up in a fortnight. We managed the last few weeks. Well, that's only because Marion was here keeping an eye on you. Oh, now, Eddie, there's the question of who we're going to invite to this do, isn't there? I mean, there'll be uh, one or two old scores to settle for all the parties we've not got asked to. <laughs> and as for Madam next door, well, she wouldn't come very high on any guest list of mine, you know. I mean to say, she can give a very uh, common feeling to an occasion, can that one? Uh, Mrs O? Yeah. About the party, well, me and Marion have been discussing it and, and we decided that we wanted a very sort of informal affair. You know, everybody invited, the world in his harem, like, so we thought, uh, well, we can't risk turning Mrs O's little palace into a shambles, even though it is very kind of her to offer, so we've decided on having it at the Rovers. Well, it's bigger as well. Good idea. Ah, oh, that's it. No, you're too generous, Mrs. O. Too big-hearted. The Rovers it is. Mind you, you'll be the first lady there. I mean, after Marion, of course. What? You mean as your, uh, your standing mother, like? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it'd be very nice for that. Yeah, top of the heap for once, especially at the Rovers. <laughs> hey, would you like a biscuit with that tea? Oh, I'd love one, sir. Yeah, I brought a packet of shortcakes back from our arches. <laughs> You didn't want the party here, did you? Well, it wasn't me, Stan. It, it was Marion. Well, she just felt it was a little bit pokey for the party, you know. Ah, it is pokey, isn't it? There you are. Oh, thanks very much. Do you know, Eddie, I think it's very thoughtful of you and Marion to respect my home like that. Yeah, but well, it's the least we could do, isn't it, Mrs O? Oh, I was just going. Were you? <laughs> Do you usually leave your gate unlocked? Oh, there's very little to print, you know. <laughs> well. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is my missus. This is Mr. Murphy, the new Hurst. building inspector. Hurst, the new building. Building inspector. Nice to meet you, Mr. Hurst. Hello. Well, I had a look around the house, Mr. Fairclough. Oh, aye. It's coming on well. I think so. Just a couple of things. Oh, aye. You see, uh, the Joyce, there ain't the two on the drawings. Oh, I what, uh, what do I put in, then? Eight or and a half. Well, near enough, isn't it? Well, the cavities could be a bit cleaner, couldn't they? Could they? So if you put those two things right, I'll be quite happy. Oh, come on. Those joists are adequate. More than adequate. Oh, come on, live and let live, eh? Jack Lynch would have done. All right, I'll clean the cavities up for you. And replace the joists. There's no need to. You're just being fussy, that's all. It'll cost me time and money. Just because one little figure doesn't agree with the drawing. I mean, what the hell are drawings for? You only put them in a filing cabinet, don't you? I'm not replacing those joists. No way. I think you've been around long enough to know what'll happen if you don't, Mr. Fairclough. Sleep on it, I would. I'm sure you don't want to end up in court. Mr. Fairclough? I have been round long enough for you to know that I'm no flaming cowboy, which is what you're implying. A nice one, Leonard. How to make friends and influence people in one easy lesson. Jack Lynch would have passed him. Well, he's the bloke that has to pass him now, and his name's Hurst. Try not to be late. I won't put your tea on. A very nice pickup, thanks to you, Mrs. Burlow. A couple of young villains, those two. My inspector asked me to pass on his thanks. Oh, I didn't do anything. Oh, you gave us some vital information. I mean, you started the ball rolling. We're hamstrung without the cooperation of the public. There's only a few of us. There's millions of you. That's not what her husband thinks. Now, that's enough, Uncle Albert. Pardon? He says she's a telltale tit. He doesn't think that at all, Uncle Albert. Well, what does he think, Mrs Barlow? Well, he, he just thinks it's wrong to go telling on people unless you're very sure. I mean, he's got a point. Look at Hitler. I mean... He got kids telling on their parents and all that, didn't he? Ah, oh, but we're not the Gestapo, Mrs Barlow. Although, to listen to some, you'd think we were. 
Where do you say to keep the peace? Keep you safe in your beds? The odd phone call if you should see something dodgy isn't too high a price to pay for that, is it? I'll tell you this. If we got onto those two sooner, I can think of a couple of ladies who'd feel a lot happier right now. And that's a fact. Well, thanks again. Ah, oh, Mr Barlow. A couple of your kids from centre, those two. Yes. Well, you might have missed them. I mean, they look as if butter wouldn't melt. Keep your eyes open in future, eh? So. You heard what he said, didn't you? What? He said if you'd told the police about them lads when Deirdre asked you to, Betty Turpin would have been mugged. That's what he said. So we thought Wednesday, if that would be all right with you, Mr Walker. Too late now to get an extension. Oh, I know that. So that means a 10.30 finish and not a minute later. Understood. Right. Will you want any refreshments? Marion? Well, but nothing fancy, you know, supper pies, sandwiches and that. And how many will be coming? Oh, uh, say about a hundred. I've got a lot of friends, you know. Yes, well, I'll cater for twenty. Uh, now, what about drinks? Drinks? Well, are you going to pay for everything? Oh, I'm not paying for everything, Mrs Walker. I mean, there's some round here that could suck the Queen into bankruptcy. <laughs> no, I think if we uh, if we buy the first round and the last one, you know. Right. Well, Fred will keep a record then. Fred? Yes, Mrs Walker. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Uh, I love you. Yeah. Right. Well, I hope you have a nice evening with the emphasis on nice. <laughs> She'd be lucky. How's that, mate? Well, I've got an influx coming from the pool. That's one word they've never heard of. Nice. Just throws a rat inside, mighty. Yeah, that's another thing they're not going to think much to. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for the very happy first day in games. You're welcome. <laughs> dinner in front of you, haven't I? I can see that, I'm not blind. Well, how about saying thank you? What are you talking about? Oh, Stanley, it doesn't cost nothing to be polite, you know. It's them little courtesies what lubricates the moving parts of a marriage, thereby preventing friction. You'd be reading too many women's magazines. Well, at least I do read a bit of summat. You never get further than the football and the horse racing. Oh, that looks highly appetising, isn't it? They are, you see. Why can't you be more like Eddie? He's polite, isn't he? No good paying attention to him. He's not in his right mind. Hey, do you mind? Engaged to be married? You can't be in your right mind. Oh, I but you'll be at my party tonight, won't you? Sucking yourself blind on my ale. Yes. Because I'm in my right mind. I don't know what I'm going to wear for this do tonight, Eddie. I don't, I'm sure. Whatever you wear, Mrs O, you look a picture. You're getting a proper crawler, aren't you? I don't agree with this marming over women. Listen, if it takes a little bit of effort to keep them happy, I think it's well worthwhile. Quite right. And if you had anything about you, you'd give me some money. You'd say, here, yeah, Hilda, go and buy yourself a nice blouse or something. That's what any decent husband would do. But you don't care what people say, do you? You shouldn't worry. Nobody will look at you. Oh, that's lovely, that is. That's charming, isn't it? I could save money for clothes if I cut down on your rations. No, if I got the money, I'd get your clothes. But I'm not. I'm skinned, aren't I? And when you're married, you'll be skinned. It's all right, Stanley. You can't spoil it for me today. I'm in love. Marriage will spoil that. Single fellas, you don't know when you're well off. Now, Elizabeth, hope you're not overdoing it. Oh, no, Mrs Walker. Good, cos I'm going to cook a nice little lunch just for the two of us. Halibut with the white sauce, just a hint of lemon. Oh, well, that'll be very nice. <laughs> Is it all right if I just pop next door for a couple of minutes? I want to go and see Ken and thank him for getting the police, you know. Of course, dear. I'll put the hell of a dog. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. uh. Hey. What? You don't like fish. No, well, I'm not madly keen, but... I'm not going to say that to her. It was a very nice thought. Yeah, see you in a minute, love. Yeah. Hello. Hello, 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 Betsy. Hello, Doc. Eh, a bottle of lager for the lady and a pint of bitter for me, Fred. Yeah. I'll make Marion then. Very well, thanks. I was, uh, I was thinking of the bins, the old eyesight, you know. Pardon? Well, I mean, you must be a bit short-sighted. Love to be going out with him. Just for that, I won't be saying one for yourself. 
Well, you weren't going to anyway, Yatesy, were you? That is something you'll never know, Fred. You lie away torturing yourself, wondering whether I was or I wasn't. In view of the fact that I'm such a generous person. You generous get him. How come she hasn't got an engagement ring yet, anyway? Well, we've not had the time yet. Yeah, go on, Yatesy, play the white man. Buy the girl an engagement ring. She'll be getting one, don't worry. Hey, you want to watch him, love, if he keeps pulling it off your finger, you know, when the fuzzer in the distance. You'll know it's falling off the back of someone's finger. Do you mind? <laughs> They're only kidding you, That's though. what you think. Well, oh, you're a general bloke that could probably get us a real bargain in that department, you know. No, and that's definite. Hello, Betty. Oh. We were just talking about you. Come oh. on. Say, we were just talking about Betty. Oh, hello, Betty. Hello, lovely. <laughs> How are you feeling? Well, not so bad, you know, considering. I've just been looking at your picture in the law clear. By gum, you're lucky they didn't make a right mess of you. Well, they had a good trial, but... Mm. <laughs> anyway, sit down, love. Do you want a cup oh, of tea? Yeah. There's one in the pot. Oh, no, thanks. Look, I'm not interfering with your lunch, am I? No, no, we just finished. In fact, I should be getting back to the centre. Oh, well, that's why... I'm glad I've caught you, because that's why I came in. I just want to say uh, thank you, lovey. Thank me? Uh, what for? Well, from what the police said, I understood that it, it was you that gave them the idea about these two lads that jumped out on me. Well, now the court, you know, I... I feel a bit safer and a bit better, so, uh, well, I want to say thanks ever so, Ken. I'm afraid you've got things slightly wrong, Betty. You've got them all lot wrong. It weren't Ken what told the police it was Deirdre. Well, I'm sure I heard them say something about Ken's detective work. Detective work me foot. It was Deirdre. Ken was just dithering. Now, that's enough, Uncle Albert. The point is, they've caught him, and that's mm. the main thing. Yes, but if, please, if Ken had shaped up... The police said they'd have caught him before they bashed you. But give it a rest, Uncle Albert. As a matter of fact, Betty, Uncle Albert could be right. If I'd been uh, well, a little less reluctant to call in the police, it's quite true you might not have been attacked. So, far from you owing me any thanks, in fact, I think I owe you an explanation. You own an apology, I reckon. Oh, Deirdre suspected one of the youngsters. This is before the attack on you. And uh, she wanted me to have a word with the police, and I wouldn't. I don't understand. Why wouldn't you? Well, I didn't think that having a new cassette player was sufficient evidence of a mugging. And I have to try to keep the confidence of the kids at the centre. And if they thought that I was in league with the police, well, I would certainly lose it. Well, I mean, surely the decent kids want these muggers to be caught. Well, yes, but... Well, a lot of them, rightly or wrongly, think that the adult world is hostile to them. And they're right to be hostile if the kids go around bashing them. Yes, well, the majority don't go around bashing people. Anyway, if they thought that I was some sort of copper's narc, well, I would lose what trust they have in me. So that's why I was slow to take any action. And I'm sorry, Betty. At least hope you understand why. Well, I'd better get back to work. Thank you, lovely. Afternoon. Mrs. Fairclough told me I might find you here. Calmed down a bit since yesterday, have we? I will admit I'll grant you I was a bit annoyed. You're what I call blazing. I had reason. Look, I've got a job to do. That house just does not conform to the standards required. That house is perfectly all right. It's a damn sight better than some of the houses going up around here lately. Joyce just won't do. Well, you've used 38 million. You should have used 50 mil. That's what I mean. It's a godsend to bureaucracy's metrication. All right. If you want me to talk in inches, you've used one and a half inch, and you should have used two inch. It won't do. Well, look, we've been through all this before. I just want to know what you're going to do about it. Is that Mr. S phone? Oh. Hello again. Mr. Love. Well, what are you going to do about it? If you'll replace those joints so well and good. If not, I shall have to serve a notice on you. I've got no choice, have I? I still think it's a lot of unnecessary bureaucracy. Right, well, give me a ring as soon as you've replaced those joints. I'll come down as soon as I can. Don't want to hold you up longer than necessary. Mr. Love. Afternoon. Just a waste of my time and money. Oh, don't blame him, Len. If you're going to cut corners, he's the sort of thing you're going to run into. Hey, have you seen what he's doing? Yes, I have, Stanley. It's what we call cleaning our shoes, is that? I know what he's doing. If I was doing, he'd be screaming your head off 
for me to get in the backyard of the kettle the kitchen. Well, it's not so much as crop supper, lot, is it? Your shoes are a disgrace. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't treat him like me. He gets away with anything, doesn't he? Well, that's because he tips his money up regular. Look, do you mind not talking about me as if I didn't exist? Hello. Oh, a uh, telephone call for Mr Edward Yates, Esquire. That is you, isn't it? Preferably. Yeah, well, the telephone call said... Now, let me, let me see, let me get this right. That Mr Wesley McGregor was coming tonight and bringing Cyril with him. Oh, great. Hey, you love these lads, Stan. Who are my mates, the McGregor brothers? Mm, it sounds Scottish to me. No, but the Scousers, aren't they? Legends in their own lunchtime over there. I think their mum's Scotch. Their dads are... Uh, well, anyway, you'll see him tonight, won't you? You did say their dads, did you? Yeah, well, uh, they're only half-brothers, you know. Uh, their dads, uh, well, one half... Oh, you'll see him tonight. You are coming, aren't you? Oh, try and stop me. See ya. <laughs> She's got a phone. We could have a phone, you know. Why haven't we got a phone, Stanley? Phones cost money. Well, why don't you get out there and earn some, you great idle lump? I work hard. You want to try that flipping ladder? You never set foot on that ladder from one week's end to the next. For all you know, there could be birds nesting in them upper rungs. Ilza, is it all right if I take this year so I want to get changed? Well, what for? It's ages till your party. Yeah, well, I said I'd meet Marion. She's getting an hour off. We're going to go round the jewellery shops looking for an engagement ring, you know. Ah. Yeah. Just think, me going round jewellery shops with me fiancé looking for a ring. At one time, I'd have been going round with a brick in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> If you're feeling tired, it is going to be hectic in here tonight, but Fred and I can cope. So if it's going to be too much for you, you know. Oh, no, I think I'll be all right for tonight, Mrs. Walker. But uh, I have been thinking about my job, and, well, to tell you the truth, I might have to pack it in. Oh, I don't want to because I really love my work, but, well, it's that walk home, you know, and there are no buses that time of night, and, well, you never know who's lurking, and, well, after what happened. I understand perfectly, dear, but I don't want to lose you. I think I've got the solution. Fred? Oh. Yes, Mrs. Walker? Quite understandably, Mrs. Turpin doesn't feel that she can face that walk home alone at night in the dark. I don't blame her. I knew you'd understand. Now, in future, dear, Fred will take you home in the Rover, won't you, Fred? Yeah, certainly, of course I will. Now, does that solve your problem? It does, Mrs. Walker. Thank you <laughs> very much. But, of course, Fred, you must realise that this means no drinking and driving on your part. On the nights that Mrs. Turpin is working, you must stay scrupulously sober. <coughs> Lovely, Nick. There's always a catch to that woman. She could invent a great mousetrap if you set her mind to it. Oh. Give us a packet of fags, will you, Alf? What's it with you? You've got a face like a wet, wet walk. Hey, I've been thinking. One day is very much like another when you're stuck behind this counter day after day. Give over. You're one of nature's counter standing behind as you are. Uh, maybe I'm most of the time. You're going to Eddie and Marion's party tonight, are you? Oh, I don't know. I don't feel much like party going. Of course you do, when you set your mind to it, that's all. You're moping again, aren't you? I know the signs. It's really isn't it? Yeah. Why don't you shut the shop for a bit? Oh, it's a bit early for shutting the shop. Oh, give over. It's your shop, isn't it? You know, enough today to pay for tomorrow's breakfast, don't you? Look, I'm taking you out. Only took Rovers, mind you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yes, of course you do. You're going, and that's set There, see? You have remembered how to do a smile, haven't you? Right, you get yourself mopped and stoned and call round for me. And then if you're not round in half an hour, I'll be back. <laughs> see ya. Oh, God, no. I'll tell you what, if I've knackered my matrimonial prospects, I'm holding you responsible, Fred. Don't worry, Eddie. If you want a hand out, just give us a shout. I'll nick it out to your house and give you a hand out, eh? <laughs> 
have a truce with you and Stan, eh? Like uh, Christmas in the trenches, 1914. Eddie! Eddie, this is my boss, Miss Dunlop, Maggie. Oh, very chuffed to meet you. Heard a lot about you. Oh, nothing too terrible, I hope. <laughs> Introduce me, then. Um, oh, this is a sort of friend of Eddie's, Mr Baldwin. Mike, what are you drinking, Maggie? Oh, it's all right, Eddie will get the drink. Yeah, uh, I'm getting them, because the first one's uh, free, you know. Every drink's free when you're with me, darling. Come over here, Maggie. Aye, aye. Who's this lot? Up the pool, lady. Hey, yakka do ready, lad. Hey, Cyril, where's great to see you. Hey, glad you could come. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, a couple of friends of mine, uh, leading members of Liverpool's business community. <laughs> uh, Wes and uh, Cyril McGregor and their ladies. Uh, sorry, I don't know the girls' names. Oh, don't worry. Neither do we. Hey, what's all this about you getting married? Where's the beer? It's nice. I'll introduce you to it. Oh, she's great. You like it? Hey, you're getting a good lad here. And you take care of her. Hey, watch it. That's my missus. Uh, Cyril, Cyril, this is me Judy here. Marry him. Uh, this is uh, Cyril. Don't mind him, Len. It's, uh, he's very friendly, you know. Oh, it's a nice quality. Now you're dead right, missus. There's not enough of it about these days. He's dead friendly, our Cyril, but he gets uh, upset if people aren't friendly right back. Know what I mean, like? He gets uh, grumpy. Come on, Cyril, I'm waiting to kiss the bride here. What's wrong? Thought I heard Tracy. Must have been mistaken. I'll go and have a look at her. Ah, it's all right. She'll let us know if she needs us. Betty didn't understand, did she? What about you and the kids at the youth club? I don't know, love. I mean, she's a policeman's widow, isn't she? The way she looks at it, if something's wrong, you tell the police about it, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, she just couldn't grasp why I hesitated. I understand, you know. Do you? I think so. As far as those kids go, they've got to know there's at least one grown-up who's on their side. I mean, I, I understand that. I don't say I agree with it, but I understand why you did what you did. Or oh, didn't do what I didn't do. <laughs> Ten o'clock. You going to Eddie Yates' party for the last half hour? No, I don't think so. I'm not in the mood. You go if you like. I'll keep an ear open for Tracy. Ah, it's all right. I'm not in the mood either. Tell you what I am in the mood for, though. What? An early night. You're tired. Now, whatever gave you that idea? Thank you, Mrs. Fred! 
Yes, love. Yes, love. Are you drunk? No, love, no, no. I'm just uh, a bit tired, that's all. <laughs> yes, I'll talk to you in the morning. Yeah. In the meantime, break up that gang at the piano. I want this bar closed. It is well after time. Roger will go and out. <laughs> Can't possibly drive. I'll send you home in the taxi. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> On account of the 13 pink never bought me one, but that is beautiful, isn't it, Elsie? Yeah, it's lovely, Chuck. And Elsie knows what she's talking about, you know, cos she's been engaged a lot, hundreds of times, haven't you, Elsie? I come over here for some, I can't think what it was, though. Fred, get around him, come on. Oh, shut up, I'm busy. Hey, Hilda, come over here. Where are we going? Never mind, over here. Excuse me, Tom, just a minute. I say, hello. do you know that one, if you were the only girl in the world, you know that one? Oh, yeah. If you were the only girl in the world, and I was the only girl in the world, and I was the only girl in the world, and I was the only girl in the world, and I was What do you think you are doing? Where did you get that bottle? I always carry a couple of these down with me, shove it in the ale. Makes the party go with a bit of a swing, you know what I mean? Like... It is well past closing time. And I must insist on you leaving these premises right away. You know, I've taken a right fancy to you, girl. If anybody gives you any trouble, you give us a shout and come over and sort it out for you. It doesn't take long down the hour motorway, and there's always a motor hanging about. I'll tell you what, you don't have to put me in mind of me, how bad you do. Once again, uh, I suppose this is too sophisticated for you, is it? Just a bit. What it needs is jelly deals. Ah, <laughs> now you're talking. Hey, Wes. Hey, Eddie. How are you getting home tonight? Why are we coming a motor? Nice one. One of them Audis. Not left it too close, mind you, in case the scuppers get stroppy when they find it. We'll just look around for another one when we're ready for the up. Hey, look, don't take a Rover, will you? Why not? There's nothing wrong with Rover's nice motor. Oh, yeah, I know, but um, don't take one from round here. Do as a favour. It, it could be a bit embarrassing, you know. You know something? You're turning all respectable. Yeah, I am getting respectable, I suppose. Well, respectable compared to you, lot. <laughs> Time, please! Eddie! Eddie! She doesn't really mean it, love. Tell you what, she's a look about her at me, our ma'am, she does. Weatherfield Police Station. I want to speak to the officer in charge. I'm sorry, I'm afraid we're going to have to break it up rather yeah. off the start of the pause. Oh. Here, here, oh. let me. Well, I'm about taking the party round to my house. Oh, I mean, it's only down the street. Hey, great. Yeah. You're a smashing lady. Hey, you want to know something? No, no, your brothers just tell me. Look, on the second thought, I have to be up for work in the morning and. Uh, Apart from that, I haven't got a piano. Soup with that right, love. Where's Eddie? Come here. What are you doing? We only want to borrow it, love. Don't worry. Find the piano back immediately. Fred, or we do something. Hello, Mrs. Walker. Give us that stool. Hey, I'll find it out. Oh, that'll do, lads. Lots of class here. Ah, oh, yeah, great. Ah, uh, you're right, Cyril. We've gone far enough. Tarakid. Right, I'll give you a tune now. See you, lads. Nice to meet you, don't know. Here, then. We've been having a celebration. It's our engagement party. Oh, aye. Where's the piano from? No, it, it, it's all right, Sarge. It belongs to the boozer. I work there, see. Hey, hey, pal. I've got a riddle for you. <laughs> you like this one. <laughs> What's the difference between a, a, a hedgehog and a panda cat? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard that one. Uh, right, now we'll have no more messing about. Get this piano back inside. Who says so? That'll do, Eddie. Do as he says. Oh, all right. 
you've got a good in there, sunshine. I hope you know it. Come on, Fred. We're shifting again. Uh, well, it just shows the reason, Eddie. There's a lot to be said for a mouth organ. <laughs> Go on. Oh! oh! <laughs> Should have put that Liverpool lot behind bars. Hey, I heard about that. What happened to her? Oh, they scarfed before the police arrived. Leaving Eddie and Fred holding the baby. Or at least leaving them with a piano. <laughs> Did they get run in then, Eddie oh, and Fred? No, they were very lucky. They found a policeman with a sense of humour. Which, for more than I've got this morning, my head's still ringing. Good morning. Oh, do you have to look so flaming radiant? Hey, my mum's give me some new tea bags for us to try. We have them at home and they're nicer than them we're getting. Oh, says so. Well, well come on, let's have a look then. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's coming my way. Flipping heck. Hey, that was from Oklahoma, that, you know. It should have stopped where it was. Howard Keely runs on stage, jumps over a five-barred gate and lets rip. Mind you, they called him Harold then. You'll be Harold if you don't get cracking soon. Twelve-year-old old my Uncle Fred told me to offer house. There I was, front row circle, new frock on, box of chocolates on me naked. Do you know my Uncle Fred? He had two tickets for every show. He'd plenty of brass, you know. Nobody knew where he got it from, but he'd more money than the rest of our family put together. And we're a big family, I can tell you. What's brought this up? Just the way I feel. Oh, what a beautiful... Oh, well, sure, Vera. Oh. Well, that's how it started. Oh, yes, and I reckon that's how it finished and all of it started out like that. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, though, you can tell, can't you, when you wake up, if you're going to have a good day. If you wake up at all, Vera, that's the start. Of course you're right, kid. And rest the bonus. For I knew as soon as I woke up, kid. I sent his harness off with a flea in his ear, and he's not coming back while late, so the world's in front of me. Well, go easy on it, won't you? Of course I will. You know me, I love everybody, mate. Ooh. Hey, talking about loving everybody, I hear that uh, Mark Baldwin took a shine to that florist woman at his engagement party. You know, that I shot with Marion Works. Who told you that? Hey, never mind who told you. Let's have a bit of scandal. Yeah, of course. Well, you can't blame him if he does fancy her. She knows her way around. She's a very smart girl. Hmm? Girl! I heard she were knocking on a bit. She's a good few years younger than you, Vera, and chance it. Well, blimey, it must be cradle snatching. Mm. Oh, and uh, then there's that yeah. order from Mull Allen's, and uh, oh. then we... Uh, morning, Mr Baldwin. Good morning, ladies. Oh, don't you look happy, look. Is it your love life? Well, it wouldn't be my business life, would it? Not with you, lot. All arts and flowers, is it? Hey, do you get that? All arts and flowers. Oh. All right, come on. Who's been talking? Hey, that's what you get for being famous. We're just as nosy about Robert Redford, you know. Hey, listen, I'm nosy. I can get my hands on him. God forbid. Listen, he can talk, but it could do a lot worse, you know. Oh. Leathers. Where did you put them? Out in the yard. Well, that's where they'll be then. I hadn't touched your flipping leathers. Look, Stanley, the sum total of your working equipment is a couple of chamois, a ladder, a bucket, and a change of water every Preston Guild. Now, if you can't keep an eye on that little lass, I'd help you. Had them two minutes ago. What's them? Oh, I. Oh, I. Mind they don't bite you. And come here. I'm in a rush. You've never been in a rush to get to work all your life, and you never will be. Come here when you're told. Just look at the state of that paintwork. What about it? What about... I'll tell you what about it. The last time you decorated this place, Mabel Curry brought her youngest round and he couldn't even say paint. Do you know where he is now? Second year at the Comprehensive. That's what about it. I can't decorate when I come home. I'm tired from the windows. Well, you could try earning a bit more money and then we could let Ernie Conran do it. That wouldn't hurt you. Yeah? I'll do my best. Oh, if I didn't believe that, Stan, I'd have left you years since. I just wish it was a better best, that's all. Go on, get gone. Here you go. Hey, Ilse, have you ever clapped eyes on the Serrara Desert? Get a basin full of that. Oh. Do you know, I could make it a cup of tea just to uh, irrigate oh. the parched areas. Oh, it's not very warm, this. Well, a tea bag and a slosh of boiling water, it'll be a pot of next to that. Are you brewing up? Yeah, for him I am, cos he's been working. You haven't even started yet. Oh, I see you. See you, Stanley. Uh, hey, no peeping through bathroom windows. Uh, hey, Ilse, 
Do you ever get that uncontrollable urge? You are. You know, every spring when the sap's rising, to chuck out the old, you know, uh, old ornaments and furniture and husbands, you know. Oh, don't tempt me. It may not be obvious to the layman, but this time of the year, every husband is an absolute treasure house. I mean, look at that. Genuine Capo di Monte, that is. Bit shipped here and there, but stick it behind something and you'd never know the difference. What is all this lot? Well, bits and pieces. Money for me bottom drawer, you know. Who's gonna buy that rubbish? One Judy's rubbish is another Judy's pride and joy. You'd be surprised. Sponge over with a zamp rag and the use of me silver tongue and that is like money in the bank. These are the antiques of tomorrow, then. Oh, yeah, 100 years tomorrow. Time passes, Hilda. Tempus fugitus. Oh, come in, it's a shark. Hello, hello, love. I was just passing on my way to the cabin. And you couldn't, could you? Because you were drawn to me like iron filings to a magnet. Mm. Oh, what a nice way to start the day. Hey, am I seeing you tonight? You definitely are. I'll pop round about seven. Fine. Here, better than that. Now, why don't you come round here about five and make the tea for them? Yeah, OK. Why, well, where are you going? Well, I'm going into town to meet a friend of mine. No, it's not a fella, just a girl I used to be at school with. Meeting her about five and we're going to have a look round the shops. And then I thought we'd treat ourselves to a spot of tea at that milk bar by Piccadilly bus station and then off to bingo, make a day of it like. What are you going so late for? The shops will be closed. There's not much point in them being open, is there? We're only going window shopping. <laughs> Listen, I'll see you when I've finished work. Are you going to be in the pub at dinner time? There is definitely a chance. Well, I'll try and make it. I'm not sure, but I'll try. Ta da, then. Ta da, Hey, come here, you. I haven't finished with you yet. Oh, aren't I doing well? Two in one morning. Mm. What about Haddon Hall? I've never been to Haddon Hall, and I believe it's lovely. Neither have I. Yes, all right, then. There's something about a stately home, isn't there? Well, you can come and look round ours for 25 pence each. Mind you, bank holidays, there might be queues, especially if Lord Len's showing off his vintage vans. <laughs> no, I think, on balance, I prefer Haddon Hall. <laughs> Thought you might. Hello, love. Hello. Yes, love. Now, take um, the notice of these, they're only nattering. Oh, well, uh, three packs of chewing gum, please. Trying to give up smoking? Oh, yeah, how did you guess? I'm trying to persuade Eddie to give up, too. Why, uh, you're losing no time, are you, getting him under the thumb? Well, start if you mean to carry on. <laughs> That sounded a very nice party you had last night. Oh, dear, did we keep you awake? No, I don't sleep very well anyway. Just as well with the crowd she had. <laughs> we won't be having another for a long time, promise. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. Well, uh, congratulations on your engagement. Oh, yes, yes. Hand to Eddie. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You wanted him, didn't you? I did not. Go on, tell us about him. There's no wrong with having a boyfriend, you know. I haven't got a boyfriend. Well, not a proper one. Well, tell us about improper one, then. Oh, we're not all like you, thank God. Oh, leave the lass alone. Take my advice, love. You play the field. You've plenty of time before you settle down with one particular boyfriend. Don't be like Elsie and tight with a slip knot. You're not exactly chained hand and foot, are you, Vera? No, I am, and I've no intentions of being either, shift. Hey, um, were your wage packets all right last week? <laughs> uh, how do you mean, love? Well, there were four pound extra in mine. Well, uh, now you come to mention it, there were four pound over odds in mine and all. <laughs> yeah, well, there were four, four quid over in mine as well. Only I'd have kept it in myself, I wouldn't have said no. I was only... Same, same with you two. Yeah, me too. I was only thinking perhaps we ought to tell Mr Baldwin. Well, why? If he wants to give us a bonus, let him. Hey, yeah, but supposing it into bonus? Well, can you see Mike Baldwin giving us a bonus and not saying out about it? Well, it's not like him, is it? Oh, look, stop ruining him down. Let's give him benefit of doubt. Yeah, well, he's not here now, so we can't ask him, can we? Well, uh, nobody says out to him till we all agree then, right? Yeah. I think I'd better go tell all of us. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was only thinking perhaps it'd be best if we mentioned it to him. Where's Annie gone, then? She's gone to Darley to their journeys to a more refined atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't at this party last night, were you? I think I was. Oh, talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> oh, pack it in, will you? It wasn't me shouting the odds, you know. No, but it was them scouse mates of yours, wasn't it? Well, he didn't do so bad, did he? Eh? On his bended knees, asking to be nicked. Yeah, I didn't think you needed to ask. <laughs> oh, give it a rest, will you? <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad you're here. Take the pressure off. Can I have a Campari and soda for the lady? We were talking about the party. Mind you, there was one bright spot. How's that boss of yours? Oh, 
she's fine. Asking about me, is she? No. I give it a ding. She might be lonely. Yeah. Always let the woman make the first move. Baldwin's Lord, eh? You might wait a long time for Maggie. She plays hard to get. They generally do, especially the good looking ones. <laughs> Did you see Marion dinner time? Yeah, she was in the pub, yeah. Well, is she coming for a tea? It's a quarter to five now. Yeah, she said she'd be here about five after she knocks off work, you know. Oh. What are you going out this time for? I've told you I'm meeting a friend in town. What friend? Never you mind what friend. It's out to do with you. I'm thinking you two wash up after your tea. I don't want you treating that girl the way you treat me, like a flipping pack horse. Right, I'll see you after bingo. And I want this place spotless when I get back. Spotless. Clean off the spots, there'll be nothing left. Do you think she's got another fella? Hey? Do you think she's got another fella? Stanley, you might find this hard to believe, but you're the only fella in her life, God help her. Now, if you want to make yourself really useful, go in there and put a brew on while I work a bit of magic on my coupon. <coughs> oh! Oh! Hey, you know that chair since we were married. Well, it owes you nothing then, does it, Stanley? Oh, she'll kill you. Stanley, it was an accident. It'll be another one once he gets back. And that won't be the only broken leg either. Oh, my. I don't know, Stanley. If I was any good at woodwork, I'd be earning me living at it, wouldn't I, instead of on the bins? I thought you could do everything. Yeah, but there's gaps in my education. Still, it's better than having nothing but gaps like some I couldn't mention. She'll kill you. Stanley, it was an accident. It's years of you sitting on it. And will you stop standing there saying she'll kill me? She will. Don't throw bouquets at me. Don't please my folks too much. Don't laugh at my jokes too much. Oh, hey, Mike, wouldn't you know, kid? People will say we're in love. Are you gone mad or something? Mad about you, because you're warm and generous, boss. You think I'm generous? <laughs> now I know you're fussy. What do you reckon? He knows not about it. Should I ask him? You stay where you are. Look, work it out for yourselves. If he didn't know about it, he'd have told us. Yeah, now that seems reasonable enough. Yeah. Is that Dunlop, Florence? Oh, uh, well, could I speak to Miss Maggie Dunlop, please? Oh, uh, isn't she? Uh... No, no, no. I'll uh, I'll call back later. It wasn't important. It was personal. That's all. Okay. Thanks a lot. Come on. Hey, Rita. What's this with Charlie Ashurst? He hasn't paid his paper bill for seven weeks. Well, he's been out of work for over a year. So he can't afford to buy paper, then, can he? Well, maybe he needs a paper to find a job. Well, so what are we? Social Security, all of a sudden. Have a word with him next time he comes in, will you? Just tell him he's got two more weeks, and then he's at it. Go on, go and build your house. I can't. I'm waiting for timber, aren't I? And don't change the subject. If you want to get stroppy, get stroppy with Charlie Ashurst. I'll let her do it. She's down face. Oh, I am not. Oh, I've been looking for you. Well, we're not all as big as you, Stan. What can I do for you, Stanley? Have you got two of those going cheap? No, I haven't, and neither has anybody else. I'm afraid you'll have to buy all four of them, mate. And they'll have to be threaded and all. Where will I get them? Harrison's. And get a move on, too, because they're closing in five minutes. Oh, heck. I'm sorry! He looked in trouble, didn't he? Mm. And you can bet it's some of Ilda knows now to bat. <laughs> oh, come on, Stanley. When can I get this table laid? Oh, I'm sorry to hold you up, love. I mean, there aren't many unforeseen circumstances that take priority over grub, but this is one of them. Oh, thank the Lord for that. Where the Halifax have you been? Spending me money. Two sixty five off for them. Well, never mind the finances. We'll sort it out later. Did you get the stain? No. Have you got a saw? No. Oh, great. There's nothing like being properly equipped, is there? Isn't there? I saw some dark stain in Elsie's. Sort of mahogany it was. Right, well, you get a lender that, and you go and get a saw. Where will I get the saw from? Where will he get it? From Weatherfield General, Stanley. They're using him every day, nipping the operating theatre and take one out. Lem Fairclough, you bake. I've just left him. Stanley, on your marks, get set, Ilda. Oh, flipping it. Well, do I sound dead? <laughs> yeah, I know I haven't phoned you for six months, but like I told you, I've been out the country. But that doesn't mean to say I haven't been thinking about you, does it? 
You got yourself a wife? Oh, well, that's a loyalty for you, isn't it? I don't phone you for six months and you go and get yourself a boyfriend. Well, I'll tell you what to do. Yeah, I know. I get lonely as well. Look, tell you what, just give him the elbow for one night, eh? Yeah, all right. Yeah, OK, OK. Yeah. I'll phone you some other time, then. Yeah. See ya. Hello. A delivery of flowers for Mr. Baldwin. Oh, uh. Oh, well, uh, yeah, all right. Uh, bring them up. Well, well, well. Are they for me? Well, I thought I'd strike a blow for women's lip. Why shouldn't a woman give a man flowers? Yeah, especially when they haven't cost you anything. I could have put them back in the fridge and sold them. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. I'm being ungrateful, anyway. You know, I think they look absolutely beautiful. I don't suppose you've got such a thing as a vase? Uh, yeah, I've got one in the kitchen. Oh, I'll see to it. Tell me, to what do I owe this honour? Well, I heard you were trying to get in touch. Me? Nah. Oh, really? Janice thought it was you. Who's Janice? Well, she works in the shop with me. She said you rang about five. At least somebody rang. And she heard sewing machines clattering away in the background. Oh, no, it must be the sound of someone sewing mailbags. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you know in strange ways? No one yet. Still, nice to know you've been talking about me. Have I? Well, you must have, mustn't you? I mean, otherwise, how would this Janice connect me with sewing machines? Janice didn't do the connecting eye, did she? just mention the machines. Ah. Well, does this crosstalk go on all night or do I get a drink? You get a drink. Uh, what, gin and tonic? Please. <coughs> there you go. Now, who says flowers don't transform a room? Thanks. You don't need flowers. Oh, the man can say nice things, after all. Especially when I've got someone nice to say them to. Well, I bought the flowers. Do I invite you to dinner as well? Yeah, why not? I'll tell you what, just for this once, why don't you let the man do the pain? Oh, I'll drink to that. Mud in your eye. Right. Now, don't you start to get enough from that flaming building, Inspector. Oh, give up. He's only doing his job. Doing his job? He's costing me a flaming fortune, him doing his job. He's only looking at the safety side. Listen, if you sell that little place to some old age pensioner and they fall through the bedroom floor, how are you going to feel about it? If I was a big developer sunning myself in the south of France, I wouldn't feel a thing, would yes. I? Well, you're not. You're living next door, aren't you? That's right. That's why I'm doing as I'm told. But at least I can have a gripe, can't I? It's all I'm entitled to. God knows it's all I get. Giving you a hard time, is it? Does he ever do all tell? You behave yourself, you or I'll have you chucked out. Yes, ladies. It said eight o'clock. Oh, yes, here we are. Look. Uh, Bank holiday Monday, Hatton Hall. Leave Weatherfield Precinct, 8 a.m. Return, 10 p.m. It's very reasonable. Oh, yes, all right then. Oh, God. Do we deserve a break? I never have anything else. <laughs> I wish I could say that. You wouldn't. Not if you were sitting at home all day, twiddling your thumbs. Oh, you're still looking for a job? Without much success, I'm afraid. There aren't many going at the moment. Yeah, I don't suppose there are. Still, we've got Haddon Hall to look forward to. Yeah. Would you credit it? Listen, where's my oyster tonight and I finish up with something like you? I would just think of trouble I've saved you from. Ah, uh, well, trouble like that I like. Anyway, have it to go to the bingo. Yeah, I'm good. Right then, stop up. With any luck, we might meet a couple of old-age pensioners with more money than sense. Don't you think about hotels but fellas? No, not allowed. Oh, me belly feels me throat's cut. We've already had 400 sandwiches. Not the same as proper food. Listen, will you stop worrying about your innards and swivel that leg like I told you? I bet they do it like that at G-Plan. And no funny remarks from you either. Nice. Should do. Let's have a look. Yeah. Great. Right, come on, let's get these old legs off. Right. Well, hold 
bit steady. Go on. Hey, oh, oh. Do you have to do that? Don't worry your pissy little head. When Hilda comes back, it'll be as good as new. Oh, it must have been a car. Just as well. Two killers, if she finds out. Stanley, Hilda is a reasonable woman. And what's better is she's a reasonable woman that won't be back till the bingo's finished. Are you sure that's the only way to mend it? Of course I'm sure. A man has got to do what a man has got to do. Eddie. See? Said nothing. I never knew the place existed. Yeah. I'm not taking you there again. That head waiter fancied you. Head waiters have good taste. So am I. Before you do anything else, are you sure you want to? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, when you're ready, bet same again, love. Where are your mates tonight, then, the lovely Ogdens? Oh, they're having a bargy bargy at home. We got out the way. Oh, just like the home life of our own dear sweet queen. Listen, I bet she has her ups and downs and all. Get off with you. The half servants have their rows for them. <laughs> I still don't know why we have to go and see that. I don't like war films. That want a war film. It were doing more harm to that girl than it were Germans. Well, I still didn't like it. Look, it's not my fault the bingo were closed. What was that about the bingo? It's closed for alterations. And it's all my fault, according to her. You see? The cruel and the fickle fate. Anyway, come on, get your purse out, seeing you've four pounds uh, more than you thought you had. Uh, two ladders, bet, love. Hey, I've been thinking about that. Well, suppose it weren't a mistake and it goes on for a few weeks. Do you think he might try to make money back? Oh, he'll be lucky. Do you think we ought to go back? Give Stan a better model support. Well, she won't still be at it, surely. You want to bet? Only decent stick of furniture I've got in the house, and you ruin it like you ruin everything else. Oh, sure, though, will you? I want to go sleep. You sleep when I finish with you, not before. And you do it, shut up and all. Listen to him. Just listen to him, you great love. You're not fit to live in a decent neighbourhood, you. And that fat love up to the right of yours. Come on, just wait till he gets home. Put a sock in it, will you? Ah, dear, I should have listened to my mother. She said you were a no good bladder allowed, and by gum, she were right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, you decided to come back, have you? Go to send a search party out for you. Do I happen to bump into Mrs. Wainwright? You'll have to loop where you're going, you, you know. <laughs> I mean to talk to you. Anyway, it turns out that she went to Haddon Hall last spring bank holiday. Fancy. Oh, do you think the weather will be nice? If I could tell you that, I wouldn't be behind this counter selling papers, would I? I'm looking forward to it. So am I. You? Yes, cos while you're in Derbyshire, you won't be bending my ear about it, will you? Hey. I bet you wouldn't say no to a cup of tea, would you? Oh, I'd love one. Go on, then. Put kettle on. Good morning. Morning. Nice to see somebody happy. What else? I laddered my tights, put it on. There was no hot water and the bus was 20 minutes late. You've got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I love you. I did that. <laughs> oh, ta. Now, uh, can you let me have it back about dinner? Because Betty's after it. Dinner time, I promise. Ta. Was it out special you wanted? No, just summer for me holidays. I know what you mean. Six foot three, 14 stone and blue eyes. <laughs> no, it was some new frock. Now you mention it, no, that's not a bad idea. Oh, it's funny. Len never said out about it. You don't need any new frocks, love. About holidays. We were talking about them in Rovers just today. That's because he knows now about it. I see. Well, you know what Len's like about holidays. I have to choose my moments. So, not a word to him about it, right? Right. right. Your guilty secret is safe with me, kid. Dinner time, then. Promise. See ya. Draw. I could do with. Oh, a catalogue. No, something new for summer. Oh, where are you going? 
I'm not going anywhere, am I? I just fancy something new, that's oh. all. Just think where you might have been. Sunning yourself on the sports deck, cocktailed by moonlight. I'd rather not discuss it if you don't mind. Well, you've got to admit, cruising around the Mediterranean beats delivering papers into a cocktail any day. Well, it just depends who you've got for company. And if it happens to be Derek Wilton, well, I'd rather be delivering papers, thank you very much. I'm very glad to hear that, cos young Kevin's mum's just phoned and he's not coming in this afternoon either. Who's a lucky girl, then? Hello. Oh. Hello, Maggie. Hi. Yeah, I was, uh, I was going to phone you later. Hey? Me? Well, you know, uh, just to uh, thank you for last night. <laughs> yeah, I know I paid for the meal, but I mean, uh, what would it have been like without such attractive company? Yeah. Yeah, we will have to do it again, and, and soon, eh? Lunch time. Um, yeah, yeah, of course I eat at lunch time. No, no. Well, I've got nothing on that I can't get out of. Yeah, yeah, OK, then what time shall I pick you up? Oh, well, look, if you're going to be near the factory at that time, yeah, OK, pop in, that'd be great. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you then, then. Be good. OK, bye-bye. Oh, uh, I wasn't listening, Mr Baldwin, if that's what you're thinking. No, I was just waiting for you to finish on the telephone, like. I didn't want to come busted in, did I? Hilda, if you weren't here, Wiggin, how did you know I was on the phone? Ah, well, I could hear you talking to somebody, you see, and, uh, well, I didn't reckon you'd be talking to yourself. Not yet, any road. <laughs> Will you come in or not? Yeah. You still here, then? Well, what does it look like? No, I mean, you're not usually here this time of the morning. I happen to have had a very late night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Businessmen sometimes do, you know. Oh, business. Hilda, hmm? that nose of yours is twitching again. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do, and I'll tell you something else. One day you're going to get it chopped off poking it into other people's business. And especially mine, OK? Come on, Stanley. Only want a wetted tea, not an Abbey's breakfast. Well, can't make the kettle boil any faster. Well, try switching it on, then. Ah, oh, funny. Well, come on. I've had the cart out there for ten minutes already. If you don't like the service, you know what you can do. Is that any way to speak to a mucker who's just saved your life? Who broke it in the first place? Stanley, it was an accident. Anyway, it's all fixed now. Saved your packet, that has, you know. Not bad. Not bad? When them posh magazines get wind of this, it could start a whole new fashion. Hello there, Mrs. Holt. Well, what are you two doing here at this time? Eleven's is great British tradition, you know. For your information, it's only a quarter past ten. Eleven's is quarter past ten's is who's counting? You don't have to uh, bottle up your undying admiration for the work of the British craftsman, you know. Mm. Still standing, then, eh? Still standing? It's as solid as the rock as you've built it. Well, it'll need to be if it's to put up with him, if it ever does. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm noticing you're not in much of a hurry to sit in it, are you? Neither of you. Yeah, well, you can't look at it and uh, sit in it at the same time, can you? Eddie, for your information, chairs are for sitting on, not for gawping at. All right, Hilda, point taken. Stanley, chair. Hey. <laughs> well, you heard the lady do the opening ceremony. Why me? Well, it's your chair, isn't it? Well, it's your idea of the legs, wasn't it? Yeah, but Stanley, it's your chair. Look, if you want to christen that chair, you can do. I don't mind, honest. I thought as much. Oh, hang on a second. Don't be hasty, Hilda. Well, are you going to sit in it or aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, right. Right, then. Right. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah. Steady as a rock. Go on, you have a go. Right, come out the road. Mm. 
What did I tell you? English craftsmanship at its best. Well, you can see the difference blindfold, can't you? I mean, anyone would think that Vera had been here five minutes, not Cathy. All right, I'll tell her, Mr Baldwin. Yeah, well, make sure she gets a message this time, will you? And tell her if she spent as much time working as she does exercising her tongue, we'd be up for the Queen's Award for Industry. You must have something lined up. Nobody does know on a bank holiday. No, nothing. Do you know kids today, they don't know how to enjoy themselves, do they? Yeah, it's not what paper says. According to them, they never do no tells. Oh, when I was her age, I can't remember a bank holiday without a shower trip. Yeah, I can remember, kid. I've had my moments on a shower, I'll tell you. Hey, them were the days, weren't they? Them were, kid. <laughs> I want to worry you. What's that? Look at them. What's that with Not them? Not them. Them. Now, do you call that straight? Did I do that? Yes, you flaming well did, Vera. Well, it must have been that zigzag cotton we had last week. Well, I'll tell you what, he will zigzag you if he catches you yet again. Now, watch it, will you? Oh, I will. Hey, hey, oh, who's she when she's at home? Well, I don't know, do I? Hey, you don't think ladies been up to her tricks again, do you? Don't be so daft. She's so classy for any fella that else they'd go out with. Well, one of those these days, Bear, your tongue will cut your throat for you. Excuse me. Um, can I help you? I was looking for Mr Baldwin. Oh, business, is it? I think that's my business, don't you? He's in there. Thank you. Why, Kyrie, she might your card for you, didn't she? Hey, what do you reckon? She is any road. <laughs> Search me. I've never seen her before. Oh, didn't you? Very, you surprised me. I thought you knew everything. <sighs> you know some adults, don't you? Hey, come on, don't keep it to yourself. <laughs> All right. She's Marion's boss. Marion's boss? Well, what's she doing in here? Well, use your common sense, kids. She ain't coming here to order six dozen pairs of jeans, has she? So this is where it all happens. Well, it did. Till you came. Oh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I, I am earlier than I said. No, that's right. Right then, now you're here, do you want to look around? Yeah. Tours are the speciality oh. of the house. I think I'd rather eat. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. Right then, where should we go? What do you fancy? Oh, up to you. Well, I know where they do a good businessman's lunch, the station hotel. So I've heard. <clears throat> you don't sound very impressed. I don't think I can face all that this time of day. All right, then what about something light? Uh, pate and wine? Sounds perfect. Good. I know just the place. Not too crowded? Well, it wasn't when I left it this morning. What wasn't? My flight. There's a delicatessen around the corner. We can pick something up. I might even go as far as buying a bottle of plonk. What do you say? Suits me. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> When are you ready, love? How? Turn up for me, Tom. You're not going up the town hall again, are you? I'm just coming back, and if I don't get back soon, dear, I'll forget what I look like. I don't reign really gust at town hall at all. You know, I think he's got a part-time job studying co-op window. Oh, you've blown it now. What do you have to tell him for? Because there are times, councillor, when you are too modest for your own good. Oh, that's true. I can't twist your arm, then. Uh, no, Tom, I'll see you later. Tell I don't know. Right, now you're here. What are you having? Ah, uh, I think I'll stick to tomato juice, love. Tomato juice? Have a proper drink. It is a proper drink. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Tomato juice is fine, honest. Lou, Lou, would you two like me to come back a bit later when you've had time to make your minds up? I mean, it is a big decision, this, isn't it? Well, it's all right, Lynch. I'll have a pint of bitter for me and a tomato juice for the lady. Yeah, that's right, love. You start as you mean to go on. Don't let him go making all the decisions for you. Don't worry, I won't. You see, the secret is to let him oh. think they're making all the decisions. Thanks for the warning, Lynch. Oh, you're early, aren't you? Why well, the cat's away. You mean Maggie May's out skiving and all? Yeah. Gone to miss Mr Baldwin, haven't you? Oh, can't. Mr Baldwin? All right. Yeah. For lunch. And it was dinner last night. Was well, it now? He doesn't waste much time at Mike Baldwin, does he? Neither does Maggie. Oh, thanks, oh. love. Uh, Money. That's Tarlow. Tarlow. Right. Well, go on, then open it. I mean, it's not going to bite you, you know. Well, I know, but if you open it now, I'll only spend half at dinner time. Well, that's what it's for, isn't it? Listen, how are you going to if you've got extra money if you don't open it? Hey, up! Who says lightning doesn't strike twice? Hey, it's not going to happen again, has it? It does, you know. Hey, she's right. Listen, I've got an extra four quid and all. Have me. Hey, you're right, you know. Yeah, you are. Hey, well, it must be right. We've had a rice kid. I mean, it, it wouldn't happen two weeks on trot, would it? Come on, Vera. It's Mike Baldwin working for, not Father Christmas. <laughs> well, how do you explain it, then? Well, I can't, can ever. I do know that the first time Mike Baldwin gives us anything without shouting it from rooftops, it'd be first time. Yeah, she has got a point. 
You're in this in a state, though. Well, I don't know, do I? Shall we tell him, then? Oh, yes, here you are, Mr Bunnybags. You'll take the money back. You'll need it more than we do. But if it's a mistake... Well, it's his funeral, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going for a drink. Oh, How about it? Yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, hey, what are we going to do? Well, listen, kid. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through that door. I'm going to celebrate. Look, love, will you leave it and we'll talk about it after, all right? Listen, Kit, first rule in any industrial relations is never doing your own time what you can do at firms. Right? Well, come on, are you coming? Yes. Uh, Stan was answering, in fact. Oh, he's not in. Oh, well, I don't suppose it matters. I've just got a couple of leaflets for him. Leaflets? What leaflets? It's about grants for home improvement. Home improvement? Are you sure you've got the right fella? Well, I think he overheard me telling Mr Henshaw about grants for uh, insulation. No, I think he thought he w was missing out on something. <laughs> missing out on something? Uh, yeah, well, anyway, there's the bump. Uh, get him to read it, and if he needs any help, give me a shout. Let you hang on a minute. If we're missing out on something, he's not the only one that wants to know about it. Uh, yeah, well, I think you'd be best reading them first, Hilda. Well, you might as well explain them to me while you're here. Yeah, well, I'd love to, yeah, but uh, I've got to get back, you see, honest. I mean, I've been out all morning. Well, another five minutes won't make any difference, will it? Look, you couldn't have timed it better as it happens. I've just made a fresh pot of tea. Oh, well, don't bother for no, me. No, don't be daft. Just make yourself comfortable. I'll get the cups. <sighs> I think so. I know somebody who flaming well won't be when I get my hands on him. Shall I uh, top you up? Oh, I should be getting back. That wasn't the question. <laughs> Go on. Now, this is uh, a good idea of yours, this. Whose idea? Well, yours. It was yours to have a light lunch. Well, it wasn't my idea to come to your flat. True. But after last night, I thought you enjoyed it here. I do. But I also have work to do, and it's not going to be easy, not after this. Oh, come on. What's the rush? Now, that's not the attitude that built the Baldwin Empire. I know, but now it's built, I think I'm entitled to lean back and just enjoy it now and then, don't you? No, I wouldn't argue with that. You've got a place in London as well, did you say? Yeah. Mind you, it's not as modern and profitable as that one over there. But, I mean, that's where it all started. Mm. You must have had to have worked very hard. Well, I'm not a stranger to the wood. Mm. But then again, neither are you, are you? I mean, that business of yours doesn't exactly run itself, does it? No business does. No successful business does. Oh, right. You just got the one shop, have you? For now. <laughs> what do you mean, for now? Oh, I don't intend to stand still, Mike. I believe you. Oh. Mind you, uh, I don't suppose it was easy, was it? Well, being a woman on your own, like, you know. I'm a free agent, if that's what you're getting at. It helps. Well, now you've got the advantage of me. I don't think I like that. Well, uh, as it's confession time, so am I. <sighs> so, uh, now we both know where we stand. Right. That you, Stanley? Who are you expecting the milkman? Don't go raising me hopes. It's flaming horse that have more about it than you've got, you great fat useless pudding. What have I done now? What have you done? What have you ever done except grind my face into the muck? Hey. Well, you've done it good and proper this time, haven't you? How I'm never going to be able to hold my head up in that corner shop again, I'll never know. What are you talking about? Come here. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, you've broken my chair again. You thank your lucky stars it's not the only thing what's broke. How did it happen? Well, somebody sat on it, didn't they? But not just anybody. Oh, no. Alf Roberts. Councillor Alf Roberts. Well, I tell you this, Stanley. You've shown me up for the very last time. I'm not having that pile of firewood cluttering up this house one minute longer. So you can just shape yourself and get it where it should have been years ago. I'm a flaming tip. And think yourself lucky you're not going with it. Oh, hello, hello, Emily. Hello, Emily. What can we do for you? Just wondered if you had any of those little cake cases left, the ones with the flowers on. Oh, I'm sorry, love. We've only got these white ones. 
promise you cakes won't taste any different. Oh, those will do. 37p. <laughs> Oh, right. thank you. Oh, have you had any luck yet finding a job? No, not yet. Oh, you're looking for a job? Oh, just something to keep my mind ticking over, really. Anything in yeah. particular? Well, anything in the secretarial line, I suppose, or bookkeeping. I've had experience of that as well. So, if you hear of anything... Yeah, well, I'll let you know. Oh, thank you. It's just that I feel as if my life's just slipping away, really. It doesn't seem right somehow, being cooped up all day when... I could be being useful. Yeah, well, I know the feeling. <laughs> well, I still reckon we should keep us trapped. Ah, me and all. She working you or something? Oh, you're a cheeky monkey. Now, listen, you lot. Any minute now, his lordship is going to walk through that door. So if we're going to decide something, we'd better be sharp about it, aren't we? Yeah, well, I reckon we ought to take a vote on it. Well, you yeah. can do what you like, love, but I know what I'm doing. What do you reckon we ought to do then, Elsie? Well, I reckon that Mike Baldwin wouldn't give us a bonus, not without wanting blood in return, and that's for sure. Oh, you yeah. could say that again. But I'm thinking it's not forced to be that, is it? I mean, it could be a, it could be something else. It could be a tax change or something we know not about. So what are you saying? Well, I'm saying that we could be perfectly entitled to that money. Mind you, could be a mistake, couldn't it? Oh, we know that. Oh, come on, Vera, the horrid tie in that tongue of yours. I was going to say it could be a mistake, but then again, if it is a mistake, it's not our mistake, is it? So why should we do all to out it? But supposing it is a mistake? Supposing he finds out? Supposing you'll shut your face? I'm entitled to my say, same as you. Well, that's right, kid. You stick up for yourself. Oh, come on, come on. All right, suppose it is a mistake. I'll tell you something. I don't know if it's a mistake, but I'll tell you one thing. If he walks through that door and finds we haven't done a tap since lunchtime, he's going to use me as a floor cloth and you lot and all. Hey, what do you reckon, then? Well, I reckon we shouldn't say out until somebody tells us different, all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll care by me. Well, that suits me. Oh, thank goodness for that. Now, can we get these machines moving before they rust up? <laughs> no chance. What do you mean, no chance? Oh, it's sea break, isn't it? Right, lasses! I didn't bother any of Oh, what do you reckon, Elsie? Do you reckon it's a mistake? Well, once I say yes, but twice, no. Not Mike Baldwin. He's too smart for that, and that's for sure. He hadn't thought of that. What are you doing out till this time? Worried, were you? I'll tell you what I've been doing, Stanley. I've been doing what I should have been doing years ago, looking at new furniture. Oh, we're looking all right. Ah, but I've not just been looking, not anymore. We'll only get new furniture to winning a raffle. Well, that's just where you're wrong, you see, cos we're going to do what everybody else does for a change. We're not going to beg for it. We're not going to wait for it to fall off a lorry. We're going to buy it. Oh. Easy terms, that's how. On the drip? That's sounding a death warrant. Easy terms. You don't get classy stuff like that on the drip. Classy? What do you mean, classy? You'll find out in the morning. In the morning? Yeah, that's where we're going to get it fixed up. So you can just put a clean shirt and tie on and try and look like a fully paid up member of the human race for a change. He was all right then, was he, Alf? Oh, it was only his pride that was hurt, that's all. And Stan's chair. Oh, well, seeing as he got it out of the ark, I don't think it owes him anything, do you? Do you know, Len, I would have given my best vest to have seen Alf's face when he hit the deck. You've got a cruel streak, you have, Lynch. You know that. Oh, but... I do. Tom, cheers, love. Don't put him away. Your wish is my commando, master. You know you don't mean that. Try me. <laughs> oh, by heck, Hildred, it makes you that happy. Perhaps we all ought to try it. Hey, well, you didn't have a smile that would melt an iceberg before you kicked that chair from under Alf Roberts. But I, yeah, news travels faster than the grease whip it round here. For your information, Lynch, it was an accident. Ildred, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about the chair. I thought I'd done a good job. I mean, I even tried testing it myself, didn't I? Yeah, well, what's done's done. Hey? It might just have happened for the best. Alf's very words, Ilda. Oh, no, I don't mean that. No, I mean, if it hadn't happened, we might never have got a new suite. You got a new suite? We're getting one, aren't we, Chuck? Did you notice how Stan went the colour of putty when she said that? He's going to get it fixed up in the morning. Well, they say everything comes to them that waits, Hilda. Does that mean I'm going to drink? Yes, Stanley. A pint of bitter? Half. Half? I don't drink halves. Well, you're going to have to learn, cos that's the first thing you'll be cutting down on. And the second thing is that great spare tie you carry around with you. 
Because if you think I'm having a great fat bag of rubble like you, lolloping all over my new furniture, you've got another thing coming. Aye, aye. What are you doing here, propping the bar up at this time of night? You should be at home getting the meal ready. Rules of the house. I've just this minute walked in. I'm to love. It's true and I'm skinning this goat's house. All right, well, forget it, this one's. Jane tea, please. Right, up. How dare you? Oh, you could say that. Which is more than can be said for our bosses. Yeah, they had lunch together, didn't they? Yes, and when he came back, he had a smile as broad as the M6. I hope she knows what she's doing. Oh, she does. Yeah, he's a very smooth customer, is Mike Baldwin. Good night, Mr Baldwin. Oh, good night, Kathy. Thanks for the rise. Right. Hang on a minute. Rise? Oh, what rise? The one you gave us last week. I gave you a rise last week? Is there um, anything wrong, Mr Baldwin? <laughs> no, of course it's not, love. Just uh, come in the office a minute, will you? Something I'm not quite clear about. missed your vocation, Mrs. Ogden. Sorry, Mrs. Hawker, what was that you said? I said you've missed your vocation. You would have made a very good one-man band. <laughs> one-man band. Hey, you can be right comic sometimes, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> well, then, I hope you'll find this comical. Start your cleaning all over again, doing each operation separately. Ah, oh, Mrs. Walker, I'm pushing this morning. Separately, if you don't mind. Because, you see, if you can halve your work, then I can halve your wages, can't I? Separately, Mrs. Ogden! Hey, hang on. Hang on a minute. I want to hear what is Saint Francis in there. <laughs> well, I can't hear her. You must be going deaf. I can hear every single word they say. Are you pulling my leg, Elsie? <laughs> hey, well, I reckon he's giving it all Devo, kid. Mind you, what her fault we're overpaid, wasn't it? I mean, she's supposed to be wages clerk, isn't she? Hey, hang on, she's here. <coughs> hey, um, what did they say, Cock? I'm only back in packing, aren't I? Mm. Anybody want to buy a calculator? <laughs> well, I never understood why you put her in opposite first place. She was that thick when she was at school, she thought, oh, kings of England were named after pubs. <laughs> well, wasn't there? <laughs> Can any of you lot numerate? Oh, I'm sorry, love. I think we're all perfectly normal. Hey, I definitely am. I mean, is anyone good at figures? Because if you are, there's a job going in the office. It's a staff job, luncheon vouchers, staff cars. Yeah, well, I thought you'd been doing wages yourself, Mr Baldwin. Just to make sure we don't get any more unofficial bonuses. I will be until I can find someone who can do simple arithmetic, and I'll also be finding a way how you lot can pay me back the money you owe me. Ah, well, is that that, kid? Once that money's in that packet, it's mine. But if it were a genuine mistake, Vera, I mean, if you paid too much for something in a shop, you'd expect to get it back, wouldn't you? Now, listen here, kid. You're always on his side. I've noticed that. How much do you reckon he's had out of our I'd say? Not just a few measly quid. Thousands. Have you seen carry runs? Have you seen the place he lives in? And you're asking us to hand over a few bob that he's paid us over. Oh, do us a favour. We're not entitled to it. Entitled to it? We're entitled to shares in this factory, love, if everybody had their own. All right, all right, Arthur Scargill. This is not a flaming socialist paradise yet. Let's get some production moving, all right? Hmm. Well, it just makes you wonder who your friends are, that's all. Thank you, Mrs Alroy. Right, you. You're always going on about how miserable you are and how empty your life is. What about mine? Well, your life isn't empty. How can it be you're married? God, I think I'll pay somebody to whip you into church and stay married to you for just one week, just to prove to you it's not the eighth wonder of the world like you seem to think it is. Well, it's better than being on your own, it must be. I am on my own. When it comes to things like moving to a better class of house, which Len doesn't want to do, like going on holiday, which Len doesn't want to do. Like finding a pub other than the Grotty Rovers, which Len doesn't want to do. But that's just the trivia of marriage. The what? The trivia. Trivia? Yeah. Is that Barbara Cartland, the Sunday Times? I do not read Barbara Cartland. I want to go to Greece for my holidays. I dream of going to Greece. I've got a dozen brochures on it. I've even been to the library and got books on it. Now, that's not trivia. That's a matter of life and death to me. Rubbish. What? I said rubbish. 
compared to the companionship and and the sharing and, and the natural aspects oh, of marriage. Oh, I thought we'd get round to that sooner or later. You're wanting to go to Greece is of no importance. It's all these other things that make marriage the ideal state. How do you know? You're not even married. No, it's because I'm single that I do know. That's like saying you know what a peach tastes like while you're eating apple. Exactly, yeah. God, I'll find you a fella, Mavis Riley. I really will. If only to wipe that smug look off your face. And this might be him now. Are you married? Yeah. Forget it. You say so. Have you got this month's motorsport? Yeah, I think so. Here we are. Right. I thought you might have been here on business. No, I do have some private life, you know. Not always carting kids to and from foster homes, though. It may seem like it sometimes. Sharon all right, is she? Fine. You don't sound so sure. She's fine. She's got a very nice place, very comfortable. Nice family, daughter her own age. But? No buts. Well, you know Sharon. Not easy to please, is she? Grass off her mind. Doesn't always know what's best for her. Bye now. Bye. Bye. He's not telling the whole truth. He's right about one thing, though. Sharon isn't easy to please. No, but if she's unhappy, I'd like to know about it. I know Len would. Oh, see. What? A problem crops up and your first instinct is to fly to Len with it. Well, that's exactly what I was saying about marriage. You've got somebody to share your problems with. Oh, you are a pain in the nose when you're right. Which I very often am. Right, are you ready? I've been ready for hours. Oh, that makes a change. Let's have a look at you. Hmm. Yeah, you're not so bad. Mind you, that cap's on a bit too much of a slant. Don't want you looking like a bookie's runner. We're only going for a bit of furniture, not an old with a pulp. Put it straighter. Do you know, Stanley, you could make the Cohen or diamond sound like a glass marble, you. This furniture is a bit of class. It's going to transform this room, looking like the foyer of the Midland Hotel. Isn't that right, Hilda? Oh, it'll be like there's a rainbow in the room, Edda. <laughs> and it'll go lovely with the muriel. <laughs> well, that do. Yeah, well, it'll have to. But you still don't look like Mark Phillips does in a flat cap. Let's have a look at your socks. They're all right. Stanley, where did you get them socks from? Off the clothes line in Belacrava Street. They hardly be worn. I think they're very smart. Well, they might be on a clown. Go and take them off and burn them. I wouldn't touch disinfectant what had been in Balaclava Street, let alone a pair of socks. Go on, put your brown ones on. I'll try and punch myself up when I get in trouble. Straight away, don't I? I can't do right for doing wrong. Everything I do is wrong. It's like trying to get a child ready. It is, really. Mrs. O? Yeah? Have you got the deposit for that sweet? Well, just about. I've had to cop her up like mad. Mind you, there'll be one or two final demands dropping through that letterbox in the next week or so. <laughs> Look, here. Take that as my contribution. Oh, £25? Ah, oh, thanks very much, Eddie. Well, I mean, I'll be sitting on it, won't I? Well, not in your muck. Oh, no. No, I was thinking of going through the car wash before I sat me. <laughs> <laughs> you can take Stan with you. <laughs> I think we'd have to put him through the sheep tip. <laughs> hey, it's not a bad idea. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, but thanks very much for that, Eddie. Do you know, it's not the only new thing I'm going to have for this house. Oh, no. There's going to be quite a few changes round here. It's time I started getting some materials from this material world I keep hearing about. Come on, let me have a yet, Coco! It's not a day goes past that there's not any anchor. I thought you thrived on it. I do normally, but sometimes I can do without it, thank you very much. Yeah, I like the quiet life. I think I'll take up fishing. I'll be a postman at my very own bike. You'll be bored stiff. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Well, go on. What? Get it off your chest, whatever it is that's upset you. I'm a good listener. Ah, it's factory business. Not very interesting. You feel better? Well, it's something of nothing, really. It's a Barney over the wages. This wages clerk I had, she got it all wrong, didn't she? Got me thinking about her love life. You see, that's a problem. You can't trust anyone to do a proper job. No, no. Oh, that's it. Definitely. It's beautiful. I can't fault Madam's choice, that's a fact. Oh. <clears throat> what do you think, Stanley? No, it's all right. <laughs> that's, um, that's praise from my husband, you know. He's, uh, he's not very domestic. <laughs> a bit dear, though, isn't it? Oh, it might be dear, sir, if you're just going by the price alone. What else can you go by? Value for money. And that suite is probably the best value for money in this shop. 
Oh, yes. Well, yes, yes, of course. I mean, you can see it is. I mean, it's not only the uh, the quality, it's got, um, well, it's got style. I'm supposed to be the salesman round here. You're not trying to do me out of a job, are you, madam? <laughs> <laughs> no, but even I could sell that sweet. No danger. We'll have it. It's a funny as a full hour for 300 quid. Where's your husband been during these last ten years of rampant <laughs> inflation? Ignoring it. Apart from when it affects his hobby. Oh, and what's his hobby? Subby nail. Really? <laughs> oh, he will have his little joke. No, uh, no, actually, he plays quite a lot of golf, don't you, Stanley? <laughs> when can we take delivery? Oh, immediately. Well, depending upon how you propose to pay for it, cash, credit... Uh, well, HP, if you don't mind. Uh, I've got the deposit. <laughs> In that case, there's just a little paperwork to complete. Just a formality, oh. if you'll step over to the table. Yes. Right, it'll have to be Mr Ogden's name, being the householder. You are the householder, aren't you, Mr. Ogden? Of course I am. Could I have your full name, please? Stanley, S-T-A-N-L-E-Y, Ogden. And address? 13 Coronation Street. I don't think I know that. Oh, it's, uh, it's a lovely little street. Uh, yes, the older type of property, you know, but uh, very select. And you own the house? Oh, yes, we're owner-occupied. Could I have the name and address of your employer? I work for myself. Really? Oh, yes. He's self-employed. Doing? Window cleaning. I see. And which bank do you use, Mr Ogden? Bank? I haven't got a bank. Uh, we're, we're not really what you might call savers. We, uh, we tend to live very well instead. <laughs> the form does require a bank account. Well, I haven't got one. Hmm. Well, I, I wonder if you could give me some idea of your income, then. Oh, it varies. From what to what? Uh, from good day to, to bad day, you know. Well, what would a good day be? Well, it depends. On what? On the weather. Well, let's assume it's fine. Oh, well, not round here. It can be sunshine in the morning and chucking it down at the time. So you can't give me even a very rough estimate? Impossible. Uh, I, I work as well. Oh, do you, Mrs Ogden? And what do you do? I, I'm a cleaner. I see. I, I don't suppose you have a bank account. Yes, well, then, um, I think I'll just have a word with the manager. If you'll just excuse me. No, the beggar. What's it got to do with him while I earn? What, indeed? I mean, you don't even tell me what you earn, so you're not likely to tell him, are you? What a man earns is his own business. <sighs> yes, sir. Now, every morning as he's leaving for work, a Japanese wife bows to her husband and she says, please go and come back, honourable gentleman. It's true, I heard it on the radio, isn't it lovely? I hardly think it's likely to catch on here, Mavis. Well, it's a nice way to send your husband off to work, though, don't you think? I think it's rather demeaning, actually, in these days of equality. Oh, not women's lib again, that rubbish. I thought you were a disciple. <sighs> not anymore. I've nobody to be liberated from anyway, have I? No. Very well, count, please, miss. Oh, Mr Baldwin, I was going to send you a bill because I'm afraid it's, it's got to be £28.60. Sorry. Can you cut an arm off twice? Oh, no. Anyway, don't feel sorry for me. Used to pain in my life. Oh dear! What's happened to our ebullient Mr. Baldwin? What? Sparkling. Oh, uh, I've been paying the girls too much money. Me? Well, not me exactly, but I mean, in the end, it all boils down to me, doesn't it? Word gets round, my mates think I've become a soft touch. My life, Emily, is a black hole. Confusion over the PAYE tables, mixing up the H codes and the L codes. Hey, hang on a minute. You sound as if you know what you're talking about. Well, yes, Emily used to be a bookkeeper, not to mention office manager, didn't you, Emily? Oh, yes, but it's uh, some time ago now. Well, why don't you come and see me this afternoon? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Come and see me this afternoon. Don't worry, I won't bite you. I might even give you a cup of tea. Emily, I think he's going to offer you a job. A job there where Ernest... Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. Still, you have been married again since then, haven't you? Sort of. 
Thank you, Mavis. Do you know, there's the one word that's guaranteed to crop up in any conversation with you. It's that word marriage. You're becoming obsessed with it. Sit down, please, Stanley. I'm not sitting down. I'm not stopping. It's nearly closing time. Sit down. Don't talk to me like a flipping schoolboy. If you've got something to say, say it. Do you know what that was, Stan? That was a very humiliating experience. Well, it wasn't my fault. They don't ask me if I've got a banking account when I go in the room with her pint, do they? Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Come on, I'm waiting. Luke, we didn't get HP because you hadn't got a bank account. No, he said it was required. You heard him. No. We didn't get it because you wouldn't say how much you earned. Well, it was none of his business. But it lost me that sweet stamp. Didn't you realise that's what would happen? I realised he was being nosy. Well, you could have... you could have made so much up. Told a lie. If it were that important, I shouldn't know. Well, I said it varies, and it does. That's what hurt, you know. You knew how much I wanted that sweet. You knew how much I'd set me out on it. There were no question of trying to say I got it. And it's been like that all my life, Stan. You don't seem to realise that I want things as well. Just the way you want your pint. Seems to be beyond your comprehension. But the difference between me going in the row as her pint and you want a three-piece sweet costing 300 quid. No, there isn't. It's just the same. It's what I want out of life. And it's not as though I'm always asking for so much, is it? Now, how many three-piece sweets have I had in our married life, Stanley? How many new, new carpets, new coats, new shoes? Go on, how many? Not many. No. And what you don't understand is... That sweet would have made up for all the things I'd never had. But it never occurred to you, did it? No. Well, I think I'm ready. Here's your £25 back. We'll not be needing it now. Don't tell me, Stanley, you've done it again. She doesn't think what a fellow earns in private. Stanley, that's a very old-fashioned attitude. Well, I don't think it is. What else have we got left? Us fellas. Well, you're too late for a cup of tea. Pardon? Oh, sorry, I, I have some errands. The job's still open. Job? Now, don't you tease me, Emily Bishop. You know why I asked you to come here. I want someone to help me with the wages. Someone good at figures. His mind doesn't go blank when they run out of fingers. So what do you say, eh? You come across here, what? Three days a week and go back with 50 quid in your pocket? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Baldwin. I, I am actually looking for a job, but I'm not sure... I know I'm... exactly what you're going to say. You're not sure that you want to work in the same place as Ernie. I can understand that. After it happened, I wanted to burn the place down. I hated it, really. But that would have been a stupid thing to do, wouldn't it? Because it wasn't the building that killed him, it was those two villains. And I still had to make a living for everybody else. But I'll tell you once, I wouldn't ask you to work in the same office. I could never do that. Well, why don't you think about it and let me in? Just think about the good times that Ernie had here. And there was some, I tell you. Hold the line, will you? All right. I'll think about it. Yeah, but do me a great favour. I have nightmares about those wages. I keep seeing Vera running down the road, clutching a fistful of fibres. <laughs> hey, hello, Baldwin. It's ridiculous. How did you expect to say? Hey, uh, that didn't take long, whatever it was. Take no notes, sir, Emily. A conk ain't that long for nothing. <laughs> oh, I've got nothing to hide, Elsie. Mr Baldwin was offering me the job of wages clerk, that's all. Oh, Bye. Well, you know what he's after, don't you? He's after her helping him get his money back. Ain't it been like having a sin? And I bet she went to a grammar school and all, because she talks posh. Oh. But I'd like to know, who'll give him the wink that we'd been overpaid? Don't know what you're looking at me for. <laughs> oh. I don't know who to feel sorry for, most. This is often because she never got a sweet or poor Stan. He does look miserable, doesn't he? Oh, don't feel sorry for Stanley. He's like a big fairy dog. 
I mean, one minute he's nicking the weekend joint, the next minute his head's between his pearls. It's like a routine with him. Well, it's definitely Hilda I feel sorry for. That woman's had more disappointments than a damp match. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. We don't allow unaccompanied females in this public house, especially when the hunting impairs. Oh, that'll be the day when Emily and me are out on the loose. You might be good at it. You never know. Well, we might not. Uh, it's two tomato juices, please. Did Rita ever find Len? Yeah, I don't think she did. Oh, I think he's run off with a lady plumber. <laughs> I think he's quite satisfied with Rita, don't you? Well, he's not uh, smothered her yet and buried her under the floorboard. <laughs> 50 pence, please. Yes, you've got it. It's just right. Thanks, Mel. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, cheers. Here's your new job. Cheers, and uh, by the way, I'm sorry about my little outburst in the shop this afternoon. It's all right. I, I've forgotten about it already. Anyway, I mean, you're right. I, I am obsessed by that unmentionable subject. Do you know, sometimes it's just as if my brain's a stick of rock and it's got marriage written all the way through. Do you honestly think I've done the right thing, Mavis, taking this job? Oh, of course I do. You were vegetating at home. It was obvious. Oh? How was it obvious? Well, if you don't mind me saying so, Emily, you... Well, you were becoming a little neurotic. You calling me neurotic? Well, that's rich, when all you ever think about is men. I do not think about men all the time, Emily Bishop. You could have fooled me. Well, I've got a lot of other interests. Such as? Well, I'm thinking about going on a sailing holiday this summer to learn sailing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mavis, for snapping at you again. I'm certainly neurotic today. It's because I'm not sure I have done the right thing taking this job. Oh! Have you been home yet, Mr. Fairfield? No, I haven't, and I'm dying for a pint. No, it's just that Rita's been looking after for you most of the day. Hey, Fairclough, your missus wants you. What have you been up to? Well, I haven't been flaming boozing. I haven't had time. You see? You try and be of service to the public. What happens? You get a flea in your ear. Have you been embalmed or what? Out of Mongolia? What's the panic? What? I poked my nose in the rovers. Everybody says, get home, Rita wants you. Why can't they mind their own flaming business? So there's no panic? Is there, Eric? What well, would you flipping credit it? I could have murdered a pint and all. Haven't you even been after me? Well, uh, I did want a word with you. What about? What about Sharon? Oh, I. Mm. Uh, Mr. Worthington come in shop today, only to buy a book. Well, well, he mentioned Sharon naturally. He gave me the impression she's not very settled where she is. She's unhappy. Oh, well, that's got now to do with us. It's no longer our responsibility. Thank God. Have we got any pickled onions? I won't be coming home dinner time. Did you hear what I said? What? I said I won't be coming home dinner time. I'm doing a central eating boiler in Whitefield. Oh, right. Hey, tell you what, make us a flask of coffee up, will you? Hey, will you do that? What? Make me a flask of coffee up and then I can take it with me. Oh, right. I don't know what's the matter with you. I'd better say everything twice this morning. Well, I don't think I had more than a couple of hours sleep last night. Thinking about Sharon. Oh, don't start on that again. Oh, I've just got this feeling that... There's something not right with her. It's all kidology, that. That social worker, what's his name, Worthington, he said that he'd got her into a very good home. Yeah, I know he did. Well, then. Well, I can't help thinking that what he thinks is a good home and what she thinks is a good home might be two different things. If by that you mean that Sharon might have to toe the line a bit more than usual, then that won't do with the slightest bit of harm, will it, eh? And it's got nothing to do with us anymore, you know. So get your mind off it. Have we got any bacon? We're not like other people, us. Other people seem to live a different kind of life to what we do. Well, if there's no bacon, can we have two or three slices of fried bread? I sometimes feel I'm walking about with two heads, like someone's off another planet. What are you on about? Us, you and me. 
We must be the only people in the entire country what can't have stuff on the HP. Oh, you're back to the three piece suite, are you? Yeah. Very humiliating, that was. Of course, you wouldn't notice you, you've sunk that low. Are we going to have any breakfast or not? Other people? Huh. Folk are running after them, begging and pleading with them to buy stuff on the HP. But us? Well, of course, they've only got to take one look at you. Me? Yeah, that fell in the shop had you weighed up. And you know what you come to? Now to pound. We're better off off the drip. Otherwise, you've a load of debt on your back. Well, I've had you on my back for the past 30 odd year. I mean, look at this furniture. It's falling to bits. Should have been chucked out years ago. Yeah, and you with it. Aye, aye. What are you doing home at this time? See you late time, Hilda. The wagon's over too in Maudsley Street. And I've got a present for you. A present? Yeah. There you are. Smart, stylish, comfortable. Any home in the land would be proud of that. It's a buffet. It's a puffet, Stanley. And it's for you, Hilda. Token of respect and esteem. Crawling round there because you broke a chair leg. Do you know, you could take the gloss off anything you could. Well, what do you think, Hilda? Great, innit? You got that off the tip, haven't you? No! Yes, you have. You've got it off the tip. Well, nearly. I rescued it. I mean, it's a world of difference, you know. Not to me. Hilda, look, we live in a throwaway society. It's up to the likes of you and me who are shrewd and discerning to snap up these little treasures. I'm having no more cast-offs in this house. So you can get that out of here and shove it back on the tip where it belongs. And you can take him with you. Well, I'm relying on you. I want a new deal on the accounts and the wages. I'm hoping that you will be super efficient. I shall do my best, Mr. Baldwin. I know that. And if I have any problems, I'll have to come back to you. Yeah, you do that. Oh, uh, there is one thing. That uh, overpayment I made to the girls. Start to claw it back within the next two weeks, will you? I well, see you're not letting it go, then. Oh, too hard, I'm not. They think I've gone soft. They'll be after my blood. Like a tiger that's just had his first man for dinner. Can't have that, can we? Not when it's my business on the menu. Here we are, hot and strong like a Turkish wrestler. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you waiting for me? No, no, just shopping, just getting some cigars. Oh, I thought perhaps for a moment. Sharon's all right, is she? Sharon? She's fine, like I told you. She's very well placed. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Oh, you know, when I saw him standing there, give me quite a turn. I thought, perhaps. I didn't show myself up, did I? No, not especially. Anyway, it's, it's been in before, hasn't it? Yeah. I think he calls in hot wait at the office. Well, why did you think he'd come about Sharon, then? Oh, I don't know. No good reason, really. I mean, according to him, this permanent foster home she's in is just a job for her. Would you have liked to have had her permanently? Pointless question. No, but would you? Len wouldn't. That's not what I asked. Oh, give it a rest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honest. Well, I'm only taking an interest, Rita. Yes, I know you all of them. I'm sorry, I shouldn't jump down your throat like that. To tell the truth, I'm a bit on edge about her. I don't know why, I just am. And I know she's not my responsibility anymore. Is it all right, this uh, Bulgarian lad? Hard, huh? The wine, Bulgarian. Only I've noticed before you go in for it. It's just that it's not a vintage that I'm cognizant with, you know. Well, you'd have to ask my husband, Arthur, about that. He's the wine expert, with him travelling a lot. You don't mind me asking, do you? I mean, there's some round here I wouldn't dream of asking, like, uh, here at 29. Not in book bottles in here, just been. Well, I did hear she was... Uh... Oh, we just like to have a little drink at home, with a meal. I'm not a great one for the public house. Oh, no, no, uh, I'm exactly the same. Never set foot in from one week to the next. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll let you get on. Um, I was wondering if you would do me a little favour. Oh, yeah? Yes, well, we've had this new lounge suite, you see, velvet, and I just can't find a place for the old suite. I mean, there just isn't the room. So I wondered if you could take it away for me. Oh, I'm sorry, love. You'll have to ring the Zeppo. I mean, we're not allowed to touch nothing like that. Old suite, you say? Yes. Oh, it's just round the back here. I mean, there wasn't room in the house. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's been a good suite. Th there just isn't the room. Who would I be best speaking to? Pardon? At the depot. Ah, yeah, well, uh, 
little tricky problem there. You see, there's an internal power struggle going on, and it's uh, it's a job to know who to speak to. Uh -huh. I suppose your best bet would be uh, Mr. Constant Juris. Oh, no, hang on, he's off sick, isn't he? No, his calls are all going through accounts. Still, I suppose they'd give you an estimate. Well, not an estimate, an estimated form, you know. Oh, couldn't you take it? Well, I couldn't, love. I mean, I couldn't get it on the vehicle. I mean, I'd love to take it, but I can't. Well, not officially, that is. What do you mean? Well, uh, I mean, I could shift it for you, but I'd have to lay on the transport like uh, a private job, you know. I mean, I'd be out of pocket. I'll give you five pounds. Would that cover it? Well... Why not? Oh, hello, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> hello, dear. Is that my lady? Uh, yes, I was coming for a bite of lunch, so I thought I'd bring it with me. Then you get it a day early. Thank you very much. I'm very much attached to the lady, as you know. It's a calm, civilised voice in the midst of vulgar tumult. <laughs> I feel like that about Terry Wogan. Can I have medium sherry, please? I'd love to spend an hour with you, you know that. Well, what's so important? Well, a bit of business has cropped up. Oh, just a man I'm looking for. Buy your own. Oh, charming. Give us half a lag and the pies are better for me. I would have bought Stan one, but not the way he's spoken to Ah, oh, well, I was only joking, you know. I'm pulling him a pint and all. <laughs> well, it depends. Stanley, I didn't mention it earlier, because Hilda was listening. But you and me are going on a mission this afternoon. Oh, I'm tired of. Forget it. M mind you, I might get out of it, mate. Leave him one in the pump. Do you know, Stanley, you're anybody's for the price of a pint. Would you like people saying that about you? It wouldn't bother me, love. Everybody knows I don't drink pints. <laughs> Three gin and tonics, bet, love. Yeah, in a minute. You can tell when it's payday, can't you? <laughs> Hey, what's up? Well, this isn't right. I'm far with lightning. Hang on. <laughs> hey, I am and all. Hey, oh, look what it says on to payslip here. Deductions due to previous overpayments. Oh, flipping it. Well, that's a dead liberty, that. It's that Emily, innit? Do you know, I had a feeling. The minute she got that job, she was going to be an awkward cow. Oh, come on, Vera, she only does what Baldwin tells us, same as we all do. Well, it was Baldwin's fault we were overpaid. He should stand it. Three G&Ts, Ida. Oh, no, I'm only paying for me own now. They can get theirs. We're more skint than we thought we were. Yeah, well, you'll think what you like. Just wait till I say that Emily Bishop. What are you doing this afternoon? Oh, we're going to bring a bit of joy into Hilda's life. I'd say that was Dan's job. True, but he needs all the help he can get. Hey, we're going to need your cart, mate. What for? I told you it's a surprise for Hilda. Oh, she doesn't like surprises. Not the sort you give her, no. But this is a nice surprise. Don't worry, she'll love it. Hello, beautiful. So, you've had all the dinner you're getting. And very nice it was too. You know, you do wonders with this sausage, Hilda. Look, whatever it is you're after. Nothing, nothing. Are you going out? Why? Just asking, that's all. Just a conversational probe, you know. Yeah, well, I am if you must know. Good, good. Why is it good? For no reason. Oh. Well, it's, uh, it's a nice day to go round the shops, you know. True, it isn't. If I see anything I fancy, I can't afford it. Where are you going, then? Bingo. Bingo? Uh I'm going to Mike Baldwin's flat, that's where I'm going, to get stuck into a pile of his dirty washing. Oh. Cos that's my life, you know. No pleasure. It's all bad and work. Well, cheer up, Hilda. Something nice might happen. Too. Nothing nice ever happens to me. It might. I've got that feeling. Yeah. Well, the last time I had that feeling, and it was a very long time ago, you know what happened? What? I met Stan. OK, Stan. Has he gone? Yeah, come on, get your car, let's get cracking. We're going to make Hilda's day, whether she likes it or not. <laughs> Hello, Marion. What are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd just pop over for some lunch. Good a place as any. And I thought you'd be in here. Oh, uh, you know my boss, Elsie, don't you? Uh, yes, we have met. Would you like a drink? Oh, half a lager, please. Uh, no, thanks. I have to get back across the road. Two halves of lager, please. You work for Mike Baldwin, don't you? Yes, I'm one of his wage slaves. What's he like to work for? I suppose he's as good as anybody else when things are going well and he's earning the money. And are they? Going well? Well, yes, as good as anybody else's place, I should say. Touch wood. Two lagers for a few pence, please. 
He comes in here for dinner sometimes. Who, oh, Matt Baldwin? Oh, does he? I thought you were meeting already for lunch. Oh, he's got something on. Sort of business day, it said. Thank you. All right, come on, Stanley, let's get loaded up. We'll do the uh, couch first. Nice, isn't it? That woman gave you some money, didn't she? Money? No, mate. Yes, she did. That's how you take it. Oh, that money, yeah. Yeah, it was the change, you know. I mean, I paid her for the stuff and she gave me a fiver in the change. Come on, let's get it hang loaded. Hang on, hang on. How much do you reckon you paid for it? Look, Stanley, why don't you leave the high finances to them that understand it? Now, come on, let's get it shifted. Well, I don't know how I'm going to manage for money, you know. Especially with it being holiday weekend. <laughs> Bit your jacked to tip up. Him? If I'd have had to rely on his money, I'd have starved years ago. All right, lasses, come on, let's get cracking, eh? Oh. Here's them samples you're asking for. Oh, good, I could do with that this afternoon. Might be in order for us. Oh, good luck to you, then. Oh, uh, by the way, I went to a little cross-examination about you this dinner time. Oh, yeah. The vet men been round, have they? Not unless he was ever disguised as a size 12 florist. Oh, Maggie Dunlop been looking for me, is she? Well, not exactly. I wouldn't say that, no. But she was in the rovers, and it's quite obvious she was hoping you were going to come in. Well, I've always had his aura with women, you know, like moths around a flame. Do you oh, know what I mean? Yeah, Mr. Wonderful. Anyway, she was asking a lot of questions about you. Like I said, I can't blame the girl, can I? And about your business. So a fascinator. All oh, right, all right. Have it your own way. You know, I like this maternal streak you've got about me. But don't worry, I can handle women. Famous last words. <laughs> oh, uh, Ivy, have you got the order sheets for Robertson's, please? I need them for making out the invoices. Oh, hang on, I want me to take. You were quick to start doing bosses' dirty work, weren't you? I beg your pardon? Your word. Listen, I'm four pounds short in my wage. Yes, I explained that on the pay slip. It's because you've been overpaid in previous weeks. <laughs> that oh. weren't our fault. No, I agree, but all the same, you were paid more than you were entitled to. Yeah, but listen, that's not fair, is it? I mean, we've gone and spent it. Why has it gone quiet? Why has everything stopped? Because I was four pounds short in my wage. That's right. And just be grateful I'm taking it in easy stages and not all in one chunk. Well, I think that's diabolical. Now, you listen, Joe. You've had the money once, right? So you're not missing anything. And when you were getting too much and you knew you were getting too much, you kept stum about it, didn't you? And another thing, if there hadn't been one honest person amongst you, you'd have still been drawing too much and keeping your mouth shut. Oof. Not much fairer now, Stanley. Keep right on oh, tuning shut in. shut up, up oh, jiggers. Keep what right are you lads up to? Don't tell me you're doing a moonlight while it's still daylight. Keep your nose out of it. I am just being neighbourly. What's this? By X, Stan. You're not running away from home, are you, love? Mind your own business, Lynch. You are, aren't you, Stan? You're heading for Inkerman Street, aren't you? Never mind Inkerman Street. I'll throw in a note. We're just good friends. Listen, not that it concerns you, but you've got the wrong end of the stick. We're not moving stuff out, we're moving stuff in. This is new furniture for Hilda. Well, it might be new for Hilda, love, but to anybody else, it'd be a load of old tat. <laughs> I knew it must be you, because there's only you soft enough. Yeah. I couldn't help it. I thought he'd given me a rise. I was only saying thank you. Well, he'd have told you if he were going to give you a rise, wouldn't he? Crawl into him, that's what you were doing. You've cost me four quid this week, and next week, and the week after. Oh, give it a rest, will you, Vera? Stop getting on at last. I'm always saying should have kept the mouth shut, the stupid little cow. Where's your order sheets? <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Oh, what's the matter? What's wrong? Oh, it's only Vera nagging her again. Oh, how, how are you pleased with yourself? Well, I was only telling us to keep her mouth shut about Baldwin paying us so much. I didn't know she were a mad if helps as well. I'm all right. You see, she's all right. I was just saying should have kept her mouth shut. Oh, were you? Well, if ever I heard a case of the pot calling the kettle black, that's it. Because from what little I've seen of you, and it's been quite enough, you're all mouth. Hey, now. You ought to be thoroughly ashamed of yourself picking on the girl. You're old enough to be the girl's mother, hey, so you ought to know better. No, you don't like it. I've noticed your type are better at handing it out than taking it. Well, if I hear of you picking on this girl again, you will have me to deal with. Get her. Well, you asked for that, Vera. I never would have thought it of her. Oh, never underestimate Emily. She can be as hard as rock when she wants. Oh, I'm jiggered. Stanley, get off! What's up with you? Well, I want Hilda to see it, don't I? I don't want you sprawled all over the flaming thing. In the city, you're not looking at... Shut up, she's here. Oh, Stanley, what are you still doing on with this time? Now, just get out on them... 
What's this? Zara! What do you think of that then? Who's is it? Well, yours. Look, I told you this morning I'm not having no stuff off that tip. It's not off the tip. Look at it, Hilda. Examine it. I picked up this suite in the course of my business dealings. I'm just giving you first refusal, that's all. Of course, if you don't want it, well, uh, fair enough. Well, where did you get it? Very high-class neighbourhood. Property of a lady. Widow of a brain surgeon. Mm. Well, it's quite presentable. Oh, yeah, it's what they, uh, it's what they call a near antique, that. I mean, there's people in avenues and crescents and snatch your hand off of that sort of stuff, you know. Do you know they had one somewhat similar in Brideshead River City? Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so too surprised. I mean, that is the very stuff that the knobs sit on. Still, if you don't want it, well, just say so. Well, I'd set me out on you. It's better than you, this, Hilda. It's, it's, got, it's got veneer. It's got class. It's got a stain on this end. That, Stanley, is what we know in the trade as patina. It's the marks of time and Grace's living. Mm. Yeah, well, it's not bad for somebody's cast off. Cast off? Hilda, we're not talking about an outsized pair of ladies' knickers with the elastic gone, you know. Look, when Prince Philip swindles back from the little antique shop with a little whatnot for Her Majesty, she doesn't call it a flaming cast off. Well, how much do you want for it? You can have it for what I paid for it 20 quid. Or we'll call it a week's lodgings in lieu. Right, we'll have it. Stan can make up your lodging money, put a few hours in. Uh, hey? Yes, it's, uh, it's very nice, even if it's not brand new. It's an investment. Hello, what have I found on the cushion? Hey, there might be more where that came from. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You might be telling on a fortune. Oh, forget it, Stanley. I was only kidding. It's my fiver. I just wanted to see your face. <laughs> but that's where people do hide money in chairs and things. Now, look, just get this straight, Stan Ogden. Any damage done to my suite, any marks or tears, I'll do the same to you now. Have you got that? No. Right. So no more broken legs then, eh? Hello. Hello, Nell. What's for tea? How does steak and chips grab you? Great. What are you after? Nothing. Just feel like being nice to you. And anyway, you're not a bad lad. I oh, know. That's what I keep telling you. I don't think you're listening. Oh, sorry I went on at you last night. And this morning. I know, I've been a bit moody. Well, you were mithering on a bit, weren't you? I know. And I've been thinking. I mean, this family that Sharon's with, they sound all right. I mean, Mr Worthington knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Right. And anyway, like I said, even if they're not all right, it's none of our business now, is it? Do I still get steak and chips? Yeah, of course you do. And there's another thing, you know. Well, If Sharon was here, I wouldn't get such big helpings, would I? Is it right you're doing a bit of refurnishing at your house, then? Yeah, it's been delivered this afternoon. Come to think of it, I did see uh, something being trundled on Stan's cart, but I thought it were a load of do-it-yourself firewood. It's a valuable lounge suite, actually. What they call a near antique. Well, from what I saw, antiquated would be more the word. Oh, no. No, they made that suite when they knew how to make proper furniture. It's the genuine article. None of your dangerous foam in Polly Watts's name. How old is it, do you reckon? Well, I wouldn't like to say offhand. As old as you, for instance? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, well, that makes it antique in my book. It's well made and genuine, like me. Not all cheap and dyed and false padding, like you. Hey, Stan. Oh, she likes that sweet. And if it makes her happy, don't knock it. Ah, oh, but how much to pay for it? Never you mind. I think she paid you to take it. Stanley, I didn't want to charge Hilda for that sweet. I had to. Hey? Well, it's human nature, isn't it, Stan? I mean, what you don't pay for, you don't value. It's sad, but that's the way people are. I mean, I'm not like that. If I get something for nothing, I'm very happy. But then, I'm a wise man, am I? Ah, shut up and get them in. Bet, last scotch, vodka and tonic. Right, love. That's twice already I've been in here today. I'm beginning to feel quite a regular. Yeah, heard you're in at lunchtime. Oh, my word, news travels fast. Did your informant suggest I might be chasing you? Wouldn't worry me if you were, darling. Oh, yeah. What do you think I am, chasing you? Well, let's say that uh, you're running so enough for yeah, me to catch up, and I appreciate that. That was great, that love time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Mind you, at them prices, it ought to be good. I think we'll have an hour down the rovers later, if you feel like you. I don't know. Don't feel like going out tonight. Is that our front door? Sharon! Hello. Hello, come 
Mia. Oh, how <laughs> nice to see you. Do you know we're only talking about you this morning? Were you? Yeah. What were you saying? We were just wondering how you were going on at your new place, you know. How are you going on? I hate it. I can't stick it. Oh. Well, Mr Worthington said it was a nice place, that there were nice people. Yeah, well, maybe they are. Maybe it's me that's horrible, but I can't stick it anymore. And that's why I've come here tonight, to ask you. Ask us what? Can I come back? Will you have me? Please, can I stay here? Of course you can, love. Look. All I fancy was a lying lady. Can't take you lot make yourself at home again, has it? What did you look for if you fancied a lying? Because I'm not used to bedroom floorboard vibrating. Continental quilt jumping up and down. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it on too loud? Oh, no. No, it weren't loud, were it, Len? No, it wasn't loud, no. Poor as a cup while you're at it. I think you kids are born deaf nowadays, you know. It hasn't taken you long to settle in, has it? said that, didn't you, Rita? It's great minds, love. I am sorry about radio. I don't notice it. Oh, don't worry. Time we're up anyway. We don't want to miss any of this jolly holiday, do we? Hey? Hey? Where have you got lined up for me for today? Country? Seaside? No. I've got a lot of paperwork to catch up on. See? My own fault for asking. Well, let's mean you've got somewhere, then. There's a fur on Red Wreck. What's wrong? Well, um... Well, we have to tell them where you were, love. Social services, Mr. Worthington. Most people you're living with must be worried sick. So, they're going to come and take me back, are they? Well, Mr. Worthington did say he'd call round to have a little talk with you, see how you are. Yeah, take me back to them, you mean. Well, I'm not going nowhere. I'll run away first. And I really mean run away. you a question. Fire away. What are me and Tracy supposed to do while you sit there all day reading? Watch you? Play Ludo? Well, if you get yourselves a book. Oh, yes. And how did you spend Bank Holiday Monday, Deirdre? Oh, well, we all sat round reading, you know. It was very mind improving. Only one snag. We had to tie Tracy to a chair. Oh, couldn't she play out? Who with? All her friends had gone on family outings. You know, like people do. And there's nobody for it to play with in here. You know, you're about as subtle as an elephant. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Nobody to play with round here. Substitute little brothers and sisters for nobody, and we've got what you really want. Have we? Yes, we have. And I must say, you don't give up easily, do you? No, and I never will. Oh, and just one more thing. What? Uncle Albert wants to go out as well. In fact, he's bought a jar of pickles on the strength of it. Right, well, that's it then, isn't it? I mean, I know when I'm beaten. If he's invested in a jar of pickles... Right, come on, love. Hello, there sweetheart. Are. Oh, are those for me? Oh, well, they're beautiful. Yeah, and it was her own idea, weren't it, Tracy? Yes. They're lovely. You're ever so good, Dan. I'll go and put them in water, shall oh, I? Oh, and you might as well take that lettuce. Oh, lovely. I brought it because I thought it might come in handy for a picnic. Uh, that's if we're going to have a picnic. We are, Uncle Albert. Very definitely. <laughs> we are going to have a picnic, Tracy. Oh, smashing. Yeah, you see how easily we're all pleased? I mean, it's not as if we're asking you for money or anything, is it? Oh. Right, well, I'd better go and put my Kiss Me Quick hat on then, hadn't I? You haven't got a Kiss Me Quick hat. I have so, and Uncle Albert has too, haven't you? I have that. You're wrong, Sharon, we can make you go back. You're in care and we decide what's best, not you. I know what's best for myself, me. I know where I'm happy and where I'm not. And I am not happy with them. Oh, I'm not, Mr Worthington. They're very nice people, Sharon. Have you ever lived there? Obviously I haven't. Well, then you don't know, do you? I know they're good, caring, responsible foster parents. You don't know. This isn't getting anybody anywhere, is it? Well, I'm not going back there. I'm not. Why don't you like it there, Sharon? I mean, if what Mr Worthington says... I told says... him why. Tell us. Is it any of our business, love? She hasn't got a good, sound, solid reason, have you, Sharon? Be honest, there's not one real criticism you can make of the Boltons, is there? They've bent over backwards to make you feel welcome, like they've done with everybody else I've ever placed there. Sharon, 
Oh, I just don't like it there, Rita. I don't fit in. It's too posh. No, not posh. Everything's always clean and tidy. Everything just so, everything in its place. I can't relax. I feel as if I should walk on tiptoe everywhere for chance I might damage something or, or make a mess. Bit too house proud, are they? It's like everything's waiting to have a photo taken. Now, can you imagine me in a place like that? No. I honestly don't think you've given them a fair trial, Sharon. And there's her and all. Who's her? Oh, Pam, the daughter. She doesn't like me. Oh, she pretends to be matey and all that, but I can tell. She thinks I'm a right scrubber. Well, I'll finish up dotting her one, I will. Pam's a very intelligent girl. She could... What? Well, help you find new interests, make new friends. I thought she was teaching you to play the guitar. The guitar? And I don't like her friends neither. And I've told you, I'm not going back. No, I'm... No, that's my last word on the subject. I mean it. What are you going to do now? Well, I think she needs time to cool down a bit. Can she stay here another day? Yes, of course Naturally, she can. Yeah. But I want to make it plain that I think she's being very silly. And I think she should try harder to settle down with the Boltons. It's in her long-term interest. You're the expert. Right. I'll call back tomorrow, then. About lunchtime, OK? Fine. See if we can't knock some sense into her, then. Bye-bye, Mrs. Fackler. Bye. Right, thank you, Mrs. Bacall. Okay. Hope you've had a nice day. Hope the weather keeps fine, eh? Okay. Well, where's she off to, then? Betsy Cohen, Swallow Falls. Oh, Swallow Falls, eh? Do you know, I think Stan's ancestors must have come from round there. Well, he's always swallowing ale and falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> have you got any furniture polish? Uh, yes. Oh, is that any good? Need to put a shine on rust, will that, love? No, I need some new sweet, you see, so I don't want any old rubbish. Yeah, well, it's the only one I stocked of. Well, it's nearly like an antique, that sweet, you know. We only just got in before the dealer. I thought you just said it was a new sweet. Well, it's new to us, me and Stan. Got wooden arms, you see. Very sturdy, not to mention classy. Mm, really? Well, do you want the polisher, don't you? Yeah, it'll see me and Stan out, no mistake. Look, I'm sorry, I don't want to rush you anything, but I'd like to get out myself today, if I can. Well, you shouldn't spend so much time chatting to your customers, should you? Yeah. I'll tell you something else about that sweet and all. You can sit on it without it collapsing under you. Even a big fat lump like you. <laughs> Ta-da! She could be trying it on, you know. Soaking up there in her bedroom. You know, to get our sympathy, she's capable. Well, she wasn't sulky when I went up. She were crying. Well, it were. I wouldn't put it past her to turn the water back on for us, you know. Then. Anyway, it's all down to uh, Worthington now, isn't it? If he reckons she's better off in that other place, well... It might make a difference, though, if he knew she could come back to us on a permanent basis. Who so says she can? Couldn't she? Well, it wasn't a raving success the last time, was it? I mean, she can be an outy little devil, you know. I know she can. But at this moment, she's a very unhappy little devil. And if there's something I can do to change that, I will. Well, don't you think I will at all? What mad is he going, though? Look, Stanley, nobody's taking Eddie Yates to the cleaners. I've got to think this out. If I offer even money on June the 16th, then two to one a day I decide, then five to one the rest. I think that's very fair odds under the circumstances. Look, I'm not daft. How many days in June? Uh, 30 days after September. April, June, and my uncle Tom, yeah. Well, make your point. Well, that's 30 days in June, right? Yeah, so? So President Stan has 30 days in June to produce that kid. So the odds should be 30 to one. I'll have a quid. Do you know, Stanley, if you ever had to tax your brain, you'd get a refund. Fred, have you got a minute? Oh, hang on, Yates, we're not all on holiday, you know. No, it's just that uh, with you being an expert on the mathematics of gambling, we'd like you down here for a minute. All oh, right, uh, how can I help you then? Will you explain to Clothhead that you can't give straight 30 to 1 odds on the date of uh, Charles and Diana's offspring just because there's 30 days in June. Will you tell him? Well, what, what's he want to know for? Well, he's making a book on the date, you see, and I think the odds are wrong. Excuse me. Mr Yates, do I understand that you are inviting people to bet on the day of the royal birth? Yes, Mrs Walker. Good idea, isn't it? And any profits you make will be sent to some charity, I assume? Eh... <laughs> uh, or perhaps a present for the royal baby? Yeah, well, it's sort of charity, Mrs Walker. Uh, me being a poor man, you know. 
Poor man. Single and working for the council. And I've just realised you are probably entitled to an index-linked pension. There will be no betting on the royal birth in this establishment, Mr. Yates. <laughs> Do you know what, Fred? One of these days, I'm going to open another pub round here and I'm going to fill it with customers that have been insulted by Annie Barker. There must be millions of them. I don't think you're right there, Yates. There's loads of people like to be insulted by Annie Walker. I think I'm one of them. Yeah, well, I'm flipping, no? <laughs> hey, Bet, are you rooted to the spot or something? You haven't done any serving all morning. Ain't Monday the day you reckon to do your share, Fred? I don't want to get in the way. Funny. No, I've got a problem, Fred, with my flat. What about your flat? Well, landlord reckons the roof's caving in, so I've got to get out while they do something about it. Well, what about Betty? She could put you up. She's got plenty of room. Oh, she's offered, but it's a bit too far for my liking. I mean, apart from not working at all, my idea of heaven is falling out of bed and landing <laughs> in work like you do. Well, there's two sides to my bed. You could always fall out of one side of that. Mind you, we won't have to let Mrs Walker here. Thanks, Fred. But I wouldn't want to disturb you snoring. Don't worry, I'll find somewhere. Well, if you don't, I sleep on the right. <laughs> I feel sick. I think we'd better be getting back. Ah, it is bank holiday. Yeah. What now? She might have run off. What, you mean back to that other family, the Boltons? Do I, Eric? I mean, run off, run away. What, from our place? Mm. No way. She settled back there like a cat, as if she'd never been away. Yeah, she did, didn't she? Still, if she thinks he's taken her back to the Boltons... Aye. Yeah, she can be a bit headstrong, can't she? Come on. Off on Razzle, then, are you? Something like that. Holidays. Every day's the same to me. Stanley, do you know where I think you'd be very happy? Where? Lying at the bottom of a pond. I was hungry, so I thought, you know, I might as well make some dinner. I've used them chops that were in the fridge and some new potatoes. Have I done right? You might have been reading my mind. Put a knife and fork in my hand and lead me to it. Right, sit yourselves down then, and I'll dish up. She might have run away, Shh. she says. What are you two whispering about behind me back? Nothing important, love. Sharon. Hmm? We'll work some it out, the three of us. Of course we will. Yeah. If Mr Worthington will let us. Right, dig in, then. Well, that looks lovely. Good enough to eat. You know, that were another thing, too, about Bolton's. Grub's terrible. These are right lot of yoghurt. I knew Uncle Albert wanted to be a sailor. Neither did I. Oh, he reckons he did. Says he even ran away to sea once when he was about 15. Only that tram broke down on the way to Salford Docks and he got cold feet waiting for him to fix it. Uncle Albert, before the mass, I don't believe a word of it. He gets seasick in the bath. Honestly, you're a stubborn cuss, aren't you? What? You were determined to read that book today. Yes. Is it, um, sexy or something? Talk about a one-trap mind. <laughs> but nothing filthy. All directed towards the, um, what's the word? Propagation, no doubt. Propagation, that's the one. The propagation of the species. Like, what's going on all around you? Where? Well, I can see, apart from Uncle Albert and Tracy, that jogger over there, and he looks far too exhausted to... You uh... know what I mean. Honestly, if the birds and bees had your point of view, there'd be nothing round here. It'd all be flipping deserts. Yeah, well, then I could have stayed at home, where reading is more comfortable. Right. Well, I really enjoyed that meal, did you, Rita? I did, love. It was lovely. And I know his lordship did. Mind you, he'd have preferred chips. He eats that many chips, it's wondering I ain't got a square gullet. <laughs> when you've finished having a go at me, I could do with a volunteer. What for? Do you know how much I'm owed in unpaid bills? Nearly 200 flaming quid. Why did you let it get to that amount? Because I've been too busy working to chase them up, haven't I? I could do with somebody to write a stiff letter to them to frighten the hell out of them. Hey, well, I'll do that for you. I'm a gabbandit writing business letters. Did it at school. 
I thought you didn't like office work. No, but I like writing nasty letters. <laughs> right, you fit then. Hey. Well, we better get down to office, aren't we? Hey, 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 can't it wait till tomorrow? I might not be here tomorrow, Rita, mightn't I? I'll go and get my jacket. Do you know, she's got guts enough for two, that one. Perhaps if we phoned the Boltons and told them that she preferred it here, they might think it were a good idea that she didn't go back there. And risk upsetting Worthington. That'd be going behind his back, wouldn't it? Mm. Come on, then, Len. Aye. Hey, you're making me feel guilty for ruining your holiday. Oh, don't be daft. Go on, get off with you. Won't be long, though. Right. Hey, and if you wonder what to make for tea, I won't mind having that fresh salmon what's it fridge. <laughs> Come on, let's see if you like butter. Hold your chin up, that's right. By heck, you do like butter. You'll be a real barrel when you grow up. <laughs> Is that why you're like a little barrel, Uncle Albert? No, that's because he likes pickled onions. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that have not gone for worse, pickled onions. Nearly everything's changed for worse in my lifetime. Yes, Uncle Albert. Can we go back to lake, Uncle Albert? Blooming that you'll have me worn out. Come on, then. Good young. I think she just saved us some of the things ain't what they used to be, Lecture. <laughs> I'm sure she has. Peaceful, isn't it? Mmm. I'm glad you came. Oh, bless you, Alf. You saved my life. Do you know, if I kept this shop up until 12 o'clock at night, somebody would be knocking on the door at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry, love. There was nobody else up. Yeah, well, next bank holiday, I'm going to join the club. It's been like Victoria Station in here. I had it all planned out. I was going to have a nice, quiet game of bowls, a pint somewhere. Anyway, what do you want? Only some shampoo. My hair's filthy. Mm. I've only got sachets. Oh, that'll do fine. Are you sure that's not for waxing your car? Come on, 16p. Let's have it before somebody else turns up. <clears throat> there was just one thing, Alf. Oh, yeah. That flat upstairs, is it still vacant? Well, I've not got some woman up there, if that's what you mean. Why? Well, there's a bit of a problem with roof where I live, and I've got to get out while they fix it. Is that a fact? So I thought, who do I know who's got a spare room who'll let me rest my weary head for a couple of weeks? Alf. No. Pardon? Look, that flat is empty, but it's stopping empty. Oh, go on, Alf. It'll only be for a couple of weeks, if that. No, bet. Look, I've got enough on my hands looking after this shop without bothering about tenants. Anyway, that, uh, that room comes in handy as a storeroom from time to time. Well, I don't mind sharing with a few Brussels sprouts. No! Tell me, Alf, am I losing my touch? Has this face, what's launched a thousand pints, lost its fatal charm? And if you tell me the truth, I'll stick your head in the bacon slicer. Look, Pet, you're just as gorgeous as you ever were. Now, can I lock the shop up? You're a big disappointment to me, Alf. I always thought of you as a mate. Mm, I'm sorry. Unless... What? You have got a woman up there. And that's why you're in such a hurry to shut shop. Nothing of the sort, Bet Lynch. Hey, don't you start any of them dash stories of yours, neither. We're shot! Hey, how you your business letters? Yours faithfully or yours sincerely? Faithfully, I suppose. Oh. Faithfully. There. Now, all you have to do is sign it. And you can have as many copies made as you want. There's a machine at library, seeing as though you're still in the last century in this place. <laughs> I can't send this. What's wrong with it? Dear sir, you have not paid the enclosed account for three months now. I would be glad if you would send me the sum indicated forthwith. Failure to do so will force me to take steps which could be very painful for you. I do not like people owing me money. When I do a job for somebody, I expect to get paid or else. Brilliant! <laughs> Although I do say so myself what wrote it. It sounds as if, if they don't pay it, I've got to get around there and thump them. That's right. And I'll come with you if you like. Only there'll be no need to go because as soon as they get this, they'll be paying up like a shot, knowing your reputation. What reputation? Well, there's been a bit of a scrapper like. I mean, you sorted my brother out at my party, didn't you? I'm a respectable businessman, not a one-man heavy mob. Get a bit of paper. Well, I don't see what's wrong with get it. Get a bit of paper. Mm. Dear sir, you will find that the enclosed account is still unpaid. This is no doubt due to an oversight. Oh, fish, don't throw this in waste paper basket. You've got to stick up for yourself. Well, I can't go and do it tomorrow. What are you going to do? Thump Worthington. Hey, hey, that's an idea. <laughs> so, I would be obliged if you could oh, see your fish. way. It's crawling, you know. <laughs> 
your show. How many times have you said that today? Not enough. I've still got the taste for it. Stanley, you still have the taste if Ale was brewed in a welly. Give us two pints, will you, Beth? Bye, Eric. You two have had a great bank holiday. Talk about action facts. Yeah, well, when you've spent it with Stanley, some of his attitudes and personality rubs off on you. You begin to wonder what happened to that fun-loving man about town that got up this morning. Who was that? Me. Oh, sorry. I'll tell you what, if you played your cards right, you could still take me out clubbing it after work. Sorry, Beth. My spirit's broken now. Just a thought. Two pints. So, here yeah, I stand. Rattle his ankles. See if that has any effect. You're all right. Hang on. Got an idea. Stanley! What? What? what, what? I've uh, got a new trick for you. What sort of trick? Look, uh, just put your hands together on the bar like that. <coughs> Won't hurt, will it? No, 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 it's not going to hurt, it's, uh, it's a balancing stick. Now, what I do is keep them tight, that's right. Like that. Right, there. Right, there we are. Get out of that, Stan. Oh, very <laughs> cool. <coughs> Could you give me... What's going off? It stands in what you might call a predicament. All right, you had your joke. Now, Stanley, what you've got to do is you've got to pull your hands away quick. Only if you don't pull your hands away quick enough, you lose your point. He's the lad, kids, aren't the gizzle out here, but... What sort of a bank holiday have you had, then? We've been decorated. Do you know, I'm not sure the working class should get holidays because they don't know what to do with them when they get them. Oh, we've had a lovely time, that's right, then. Decorated? Yeah. But do you think Lady Fiona Muck has spent her bank holiday decorating? No, not really, I don't suppose not. There you are, then. Get this pint off my hands, will you? How much? Oh, come on, you're torturing the poor <laughs> fella. There you are, Stan. You've only spilt a few drops. You can always lick your fingers. I'll get my own back on you, Yates. Don't you worry. Do you know, suddenly I feel a lot happier. Ha, ha. <laughs> They've enjoyed themselves, haven't they? Yeah. They're good pals, aren't they? <laughs> I suppose I'm being greedy, really. Well, we are a nice little family now, aren't we, the four of us? You, me, Tracy and baby Tatlock. <laughs> he acts like one sometimes. Him and his pickle around you. Yeah. So, what? Well, I'm probably suffering from a surfeit of fresh air and a simple life. I'll probably regret what I'm going to say tomorrow. But another child might not be a bad idea at that. And after all, Tracy's growing up now, isn't she? And who's Uncle Albert going to play with then? Who indeed? So we'll have a go, shall we? All right. You'll probably have to put me on a diet of eggs and milk or something. Hang the expense. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, husband. Oh, look at the time. Better go and get the kids. <laughs> I can't come to the yard with you today. I can make myself useful. I know you can make yourself useful, but there's nothing to do down the yard. Oh, there must be something. Just tell us and I'll have a go. All right, you can go to the yard. Great. Can you put a pane of glass in? Hey, you're not going cutting no glass. <laughs> Why not? Because it's dangerous. I bet it's not if you do it right. If you do it right. Well, just show me once. I don't need showing anything more. All wrong. right, you can go. Well, I've got to do some it. Am I going to have to go back? Is that what Worthington says? Well, we've got to wait to find out what he says, haven't we? Let's not build up any hopes, eh, love? Look, are you telling me... Are you saying that because I shouldn't build any hopes? Do you know what I mean? Come on, kid, get your skates on. I say, just take a look at that for a mop head, will you? All oh, right. If I'd mentioned it once, I'd mentioned it a dozen times. It's all right for criticising. They want everything done perfect, but they won't lash out on the tackle, will they? I mean to say, when Michelangelo painted that ceiling, well, it wouldn't have been the same job if he hadn't had no airs in his brush, would it? Just get on with it, will you, Hilda? Nobody's asking you to paint the flipping ceiling. Hey, what was the name of that church when he did that? It's a funny name, isn't it? Hey, what sort of mood's she in? Oh, don't ask. Oh, I won't. I'm just popping down the road then, Cock. Oh, I know. 
Anyway, you'll have to take your chance on mopeds, Hilda. If she's any brass to spare, it's a new car she wants. A new car? What's wrong with that one? What's not wrong with it? Well, it looks all right. Except for that bit of rust around the door where you can see it bubbling up. It's galloping, Hilda. Galloping, that rust. It's as much chance of passing its MOT, that car, than, than the flipping Titanic. I hardly think that Mrs Ogden is an expert on cars, so I fail to see why she should be consulted. Mm, that's as maybe. I'm top of the world when it comes to mopping. I don't hear another word on this subject. That car will last for years yet. It's ready for conking out. It depends how it's driven. If it is driven carefully... It doesn't matter how it's driven, Mrs Walker. It doesn't stop rust from rusting. That car was built to last. A spot of rust, and he wants me to spend I don't know how many thousands of pounds on buying a new one. It's not just a spot. And that rust was probably caused by children kicking up stones or even scratching it deliberately. They do, you know. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hey, Mrs Walker, if you're not lashing out on a new car, how about a new moped? A moped? A moped, Mrs Ogden? I don't know what you do with mopheads. You asked me for a new moped not two weeks ago. I know. And I never got it. <laughs> Alf, you're a lovely fella. I know. I'm that wonderful. I sometimes blush for myself. It still don't mean I've got a room vacant. Alf, I'm desperate. Well, get yourself down to town. All they've got a list of accommodation there. I know they have. Well, go and get one. I'm surprised, really, you've mentioned that, Alf because the most hopeful name on that list was a Mr A Roberts, Coronation Street. Ah, yeah, well, it's out of date, you see. I mean, I'd, I put my name down. It shouldn't still be there. Anyway, the room's full of stuff. Well, so long as it's got a roof, and, I mean, it won't be for long. I know I'm asking you to put yourself out. No, of. it's not that at all. Yes, I am, and I know I am. Miss Lynn, how delightful to see you in the neighbourhood. Perhaps you'll honour us with your presence in the Rovers later. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs Walker, but I'm trying to get a roof over me head. Uh, yes, there's no room at the inn, is there, Annie? I'm afraid I know. Well, don't ask. There is one, but it's a shrine to their Billy. I always keep a bed, Ed, in case it should be required by one of my immediate family. That is all I said. And that doesn't apply to you, Alf. It, well, what exactly are they doing at your place? Well, you see the fix in the roof. It has needed doing for a long time. They've got to have a bucket in the next flat when it rains, honest. So they've got to take this big strip off the roof and then this... I mean, for the time it's going to take it, it's not worth taking all the stuff out of that room. I suppose it's my own fault I've got no friends. You know why I've got no friends, don't you? Because I'm too friendly to everybody. It's true, is that? Oh, hello, look. Oh, I wasn't expecting you yet. It's all right. I've just come to clear my stuff out of your spare room. Well, you've been on me to do it for ages, so will. Yeah, well, it's, it's a right rook, is that room? In a way, it's not that bad. Oh, well, I can always give her a helping hand if Mrs Walker don't mind losing me for an hour. Certainly, dear. Well, tell very much, but it's not that bad, really. Well, it won't take long, then, will it, Al? Oh, go on, then. Hi, all right. Oh, no, Leonard. Oh, not till this afternoon, no. Oh, then I'm ticket. Is it urgent? No, oh, wrong. I mean, ladder out there is pushed, you know. Oh, no, I don't if he fixes ladders. Oh, he can turn his hand to anything. Oh. He's done it before. Oh, well, we'll leave it with us then. Are you in a rush for it? Because, I mean, it's tools of your trade, isn't it? Oh, I'm ticket without my ladder. Yeah. Still, my back's been a bit bad today, so I think oh. uh, I'll have a. I'll lay up. Yeah. Aye, aye. Uh, you'll tell him any road. Oh, yes, you? I'll tell him, yeah. Hello, Sharon. Mr. Fairclough here? No. Oh. Can we have a talk then, just you and me? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Can we go in here? If you like. I've just seen Mrs. Fairclough. Well, what did she tell you? Well, she told me they'd be happy to have you long term. Is it all right then? Is it? It's not as simple as that, Sharon. It never is, is it? Everything's always got to be dead complicated. And if it isn't, you go and make it dead complicated. I'm not making anything complicated, Sharon. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, there is one little complication, yes. Mm -hmm. The one little complication that says we are responsible for your welfare. It's the court that says that. And they're wiser men than me, no doubt. But I'm the one who's got to see that... Yes, Listen to me, Sharon. 
that any arrangement has got to be satisfactory for everybody. Now, that includes you, but it doesn't only include you. But I don't know what you're saying. They want me to stay, and I want to stay. Now, that's satisfactory, in it? And you can't force me to stay anywhere where I don't want to. Force you? Who's forcing you to do anything? Listen to me, Sharon. Now, I listen to you, don't I? Now, I want you to listen to me. Yeah, but I want you that... to listen to me. Because if anybody's doing the forcing, it's you. Don't you think that turning up again the way you did, landing yourself on Mr. and Mrs. Fairclough, don't you think that was a bit like forcing? Puts the pressure on them, doesn't it? Well, where else could I go? To me. But no, you go and plonk yourself on them. And I don't think that was very fair. Don't you think there was a touch of emotional blackmail? You know, affecting any decision they make. I didn't think about all that. I just came round. Think about it now. I know what they've said, but ask yourself, is it a fair way? Is it the proper way to do it? I don't think it is. I think they need some more time to reconsider. And I want you to reconsider. Ta, me a supervisor got me running for biscuits. Yeah, well, I suppose they can't spare anybody what's working. And I don't suppose you'll ever learn truth, Hilda. Yeah, now you're a Catholic, aren't you? Yeah. Well, what's the name of that chapel, you know, where they have that famous ceiling? Oh, you mean Sistine Chapel? That's the one. I knew it was a funny name. Why do they call it that? I've no idea. Why are you asking? Oh, I was just trying to remember. Well, if you're that interested, Elder, I can organise some booklets for you. You never know, I might end up converting you. Oh, no. No, we've always been chapel in the crab trees. If any booklets do come, I'll know who's put my name in. I only asked a question. Oh, blimey. I have no idea there was so much stuff left in there. Hey! You never. What? Oh, no, it's not me, Hilda, it's Bet. Full chance to be a fine thing at her age. I'll forgive you, Hilda, thousands wouldn't. Bet's just been telling me about this trouble with her room. Oh, I... I've, I've left a window open to wear that room, Alf. Because if anybody was to sleep in it, I know you'd want it, Ed. Yeah, well, it, it does get damp, you know. I mean, it's, it's with it being an end terrace. Well, it's all cleared out now. It's just a matter of bedding. Ah, oh, No, lovely. don't try and twist his arm on my behalf, Deirdre. He doesn't have to take in just anybody off the street. Don't worry, love, I'll find somewhere. Here, are you sure you're not? No, I'm not, Hilda. I'm just clearing out, you know, getting shut of things. People do get shut of things, you know, Hilda. Things that other people don't want. Well, they want the space, don't they? They don't want cluttering up with a load of old rubbish, even if it is just for a couple of weeks. Don't worry, Alf. I won't jump in the cot. Oh, all right. Just as long as you know it's pro tem and find your own bedding. Thanks, Alf. Get off! <laughs> <laughs> Put the kettle on me, love. My mouth's like coconut matted. Hey. You've done a good job on that. So. What's the matter? Oh, everything. You and Rita definitely decided I was staying with you, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Mm. Worthington told me. He's seen Rita this morning. Oh. He's been round, has he? Mm. Well, it's right, any road. Well, what would you say if I told you I was having second thoughts like? I don't know you. Well, what would you say? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Is that what you're saying? Would you be glad I left, really? Would you? No. He doesn't think I'm being very fair on you and Rita. He sort of had a bit of a go at me, you know. I suppose he's right, really. I don't think about anybody else. What exactly has he said? Oh, he just thinks I'm pushing into it. Oh, it's rubbish. It's not, though, is it? No, you're right. It's not, is it? Well, that's why he'd like you to reconsider it. <laughs> Suddenly flipping no. I mean, there's some people you can push, but other people will only push the way you want him to go. Come on, let's get him round, eh? Hey, 
Well, I'm glad you've got somewhere to lay your head anyway. Yeah, I want to get off at three, sharpish, so I can shift my stuff. Yes, I suppose you will. I thought it was very good of Alf. Oh, aye, we only had to twist an arm and a leg, didn't we? You have no gratitude, have you? I just hope that while you're a guest under his roof, you will behave accordingly. And just don't forget that he is a former mayor of Weatherfield. Ah, oh, Yates. Oh, Frederick. You want a new car, don't you? Of course you do. Do you? Of course you do. I want one of them uh, Cadillacs with big silver wings and electric astrays in there. Of course I want a new car. Oh, give up, Yates. I'm being serious. So am I. The trouble is I'm skinned, Fred. What you want is that little rover parked outside there. Didn't know it was for sale. Yeah, make a grand little passion wagon for you, that would. Yeah, just my colour to know. Rust. It's not rust, it's just... Well, I scratch where the kids have gone past, that's oh, all. Oh, on your bike, Fred. Well, just, I just thought you might know somebody that, uh, you know, might be interested. Well, what's your interest in it? I'm working on her, aren't I? If I can get rid of that, she might get a new car that I've cracked it. Well, I might be able to help you. I mean, uh, I know one or two people in the trade. What are you looking for? Oh, nothing dodgy, but, uh, hey, you're not one of your Frankenstein jobs either. Front of one or the back of another. Oh, what you want is a genuine car. Well, well there'll be a couple of quid in this for you, Yates. Don't forget that. Well, hey, you're not thinking adding to the family, are you, Ken? Well, uh, <coughs> what gave you that idea? Well, I've just seen David outstate a minute or since we've wrapped my bundle of baby clothes. Oh, uh... oh, don't get excited, Ivy. She was just clearing out some stuff. Oh. Have you never thought it'd be nice to have one of your own, though? Oh, I know, I know. I shouldn't be poking my nose in, should I? But it would, though, wouldn't it? I mean, I know I often wish that Lord had sent us another one. Another half a dozen if it come to that. Isn't it funny the effect a matinee jacket can have on women? Hilda was practically gaga. Oh, look at that. Perfectly good shirt and the collar's going already. Yeah, real contract, this shoulder, collar attached business. You know, in the old days, you'd have had a box full of collars. Nowadays, out wrong with the collar, you've got to throw a good shirt away and buy a new one. No, he's not throwing it away. He can wear it round the house. Really scandalous. No wonder people think country's going to the dogs. Yeah, it's about time I learned how to turn collars. Ivy does. Yeah, and that decimal currency. That's the biggest contract of the lot. You know, it were a sheer bamboozle of that while they put the price of everything up. I'll take it round to her. Oh, well, you want to ask his lordship before you do that? What for? Well, I mean, people don't always want to know you're making do. Especially when you've got a position. Oh, that'll be him now. I'll go round and get ready to give me allotment. Hi. Hello. Oh, and I might have a lettuce or two ready for lifting. Mm. Hello. Hi. Oh, dear. Coincidence, honestly. I had to get all my stuff out of Alps. You know, it's all over the neighbourhood, don't you? The Barlow's having a baby. What? Yeah, Ivy just came into the Rovers and asked me, and Ellie choked. I thought, this is ridiculous. And all because you were seen walking about with these. Oh, honestly. Their imaginations work over time, don't they? They put two and two together and they come up with... Four? <laughs> yeah. Oh, listen, love. There was one thing I thought of. Uncle Albert, I mean... Mm, will he take it? Well, a baby in the house is going to make quite a difference, and it is his house. Well, we'd better break it to him gently. Do you not think he'll be enthusiastic? Well, what do you think, at his age? Hello, Mind Uncle you. Albert. I can't promise about them lettuces, you know. Oh, have you got a clean hanky for me? Oh, yeah. Hang on. What are them for? Oh, well, uh, it's a pity to throw them away. They're a terrible price to buy. It's all bit. Eh, uh, you never know. Might come in for somebody. You know, if you had the right idea, it'd come in for you a lot. Now, there's a thought. Yes, otherwise, why do you want to get wed? <laughs> well, he's for it. Yeah, but I know him. Just wait till he finds it's on the cards. Right, well, let's get something sorted out, then. I'm going upstairs. No, stay and listen, love. Look, if I'm not in the room, at least I know you're all saying what you really think, even though I don't know what it is. For a minute. You know you're really upset her, don't you? She's all churned up. I wish I'd been there when you were talking to her. And I wish I'd been there when you two talked about it as well. Certainly, I wish you'd spoken to me before anything had been said to her. Look, who said what to Sharon? I don't see we said anything out of order. 
Well, she seems to have been given the idea that she can stay here long term. Now, look, we were very careful. We never said anything like that. It must have been you that gave her that idea about what we'd said. We were waiting on you. This comes from departing from practice, you know. We should have all got round a table. The point is... Do you mind if I sit down? Go ahead. The point is, we've never talked about long term. Now, when we made a decision about fostering, and you talked about it. It was always about short-term fostering. Now, there's a great difference. Have you told her you won't allow it? I've told her that a decision like that should be made in the right circumstances, that's all, and I don't think these are the right circumstances. No. Are you afraid we might change his mind, regret it, or what? I don't think this decision should be taken when Sharon happens to turn up on your doorstep. The phrase I used to her, not very original, I'm afraid, was emotional blackmail. You said that to her, did you? I think she got the point. And I think you need shooting. Well, that's frank. I don't think we'd change our minds if we had a month to decide. Perhaps not, Mr. Fairclough. But I have an absolute responsibility for Sharon's welfare, and I have to imagine that you might. You talk as if this shouldn't be an emotional decision. Well... Well, I think that's exactly what it should be. I think it should be emotional. That's what it's all about. Emotion's got to come into it, Mrs. Fairclough. But this decision has been forced on you by Sharon's actions, and that's not right. No. No, you've not got that right way around. It's our feelings that have been brought out by Sharon's actions. Len, ask her to come down. I want her in here. Sharon, will you come down a minute, please, love? Come in, love. I'm just talking to Mr. Worthington, and I want you to hear as well. When Sharon came back, it was a big thing to me, and Len. It meant a lot to me emotionally, and I'm not apologising for that word. She didn't come back because it's Buckingham Palace, and she didn't come back because we're soft with her and let her behave any way she wants, and she didn't come back because she's no one else to turn to, because she's got you, aren't she? The reason she came back was emotional, and it made me feel... Well, I won't even try to describe how it made me feel, but it's a stronger feeling as I've ever had about anything in my life. And if she wants to stop, are you going to say she can't? I think she said it all, don't you? I've left the fire on in the room. We'll come to some arrangement about electricity later. Oh, aye. Is this all your stuff? Yeah. Right. Well, uh, look, we'll, we'll have a chat about things later on. I don't think I'm going to charge any rent, though. Oh? Huh? Well, it's not worth it, as it's only pro tem. Mind you, there's one or two little jobs you can do as they, they come up, you know. What do you say? When they fix your roof, why do they take your window out? Pardon? They've taken all my window out. How do you mean? Well, it's all gone. There's just all and some bricks. Oh, heck. There's a big tarpaulin over it, but it's nowhere near where the roof were bad. I just hope I'm wrong. I do. Have you ever heard of winkling? Do you know what it means? Do you mean they're trying to get me out altogether, eh? Oh, wow. No, no, we're jumping to conclusions. I mean, you've not got a new landlord, have you? Something or other estates. They took over not so long ago. Oh, heck, if they can get rid of the city tenants, they can charge what they like for rents. I bet you've been winkled. That window that's gone, you'll not see that again. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not even going to think about it. Long term, short term, they're just words. I mean, in Sharon's case, you know that she'll be a legal adult a year from now. So how long is long term? It had occurred to me. But this is the exact thing I'm always trying to avoid. When a situation runs away from you, people always think they know what they want. But if you could see my file of case histories, you'd realise... What you mean is you're the one with the say. You've got to tell everybody else. It's all got to be according to you. Now, well, right. you know me, Sharon. I mean, I'm only here to represent an indifferent and unfeeling bureaucracy. I mean, I'm not interested in Sharon, or Daryl, or Jonathan, or Paula, or Clorinda, or Peter, or Paul, or any other whole gang of names on files on my desk. I mean, that's why I do the job. That's why I work all the hours God sends, days, nights, weekends. I do it for the kicks, because there's more kicks than hate in it, you know. And the one reward I get is to stop Sharon being happy, because the social services department don't want her to be happy. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. 
As you say, in Sharon's case, there's not much difference between long term and short term. So, all right, we'll go back to where we were, but this time it's final, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Sharon? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, here you are, and here you'll stay. <laughs> I'm going for a drink. Oh, it's bad luck to stand under this one. Look at look at that lot there. <laughs> what are you worrying about? You'd make a lovely punk rocker, wouldn't you, Sharon? He's not finished yet. Oh, now you mention it, he hasn't. Have you got any blue streaks up there? I have a blue streak. You're a messy flipping painter, you. I can show you a thing or two. Hey, tell him, Elsie. Isn't he putting that paint on upside down? Yeah, now I see Yes, he is. Hey, get on with the work, you. And haven't you got anything better to do? Oh, only hard labour. And I've never rushed to that in my life. Besides, you're the only sideshow in the street and I'm in time to see what's going on. Um? Hmm. You're showing mine up, aren't you? Ooh, I wish all we did were that easy. <laughs> oh, she's a cheeky monkey, isn't she? Say that again. Oh, well, I suppose I better get back to my hard labour. You know, when I was her age, I used to imagine myself as a rich man's plaything, <laughs> sitting in front of the telly all day, stuffing myself with continental chocolates. Who are you kidding? You didn't even have tellies when you were my age. <laughs> Shall I knock her off? Oh. I'll be my guest. I'll get you later, madam. Thank you very much. Do you think I should do it for a living? No, I wouldn't say you were that good. <laughs> Vera's cutting it a bit fine again, isn't she? Oh, she'll be deaf of me yet. Frighten me to death. It's called a guilty conscience, Ida. That's Vera's card you're punching. Oh, is... Do you know I thought it were mine? Well, that's a natural mistake, love, seeing as you've done it right 10,000 times. Put it back. <coughs> oh! Oh, what's it with you? Couldn't you sleep? Well, I was lying in my bed and I was thinking, why should I be here all nice and snug when those girls are down there earning my coppers for me? So I get up, come down here, and what do I find? 25 to 9, not a stitch has been sewn, and one of them hasn't even turned up yet. That's what you've come early for, then, is it? To catch us out. Oh, you got the idea, did you? Well, you're not keep this up every day. I won't come early every day. Just the odd day. Keep you on your toes. Oh, when exactly? Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Wednesdays and Fridays? You've got a license for begging, have you? I'm looking for the cat. Do you mean that man's old heap of fur in the corner there? Ah, oh, there she is. Let's arrest him. <laughs> she always is. I mean, what sort of a cat do you call that, eh? eh? I mean, Vera bought it in, what, a week ago to do a bit of mousing, she said. We got mice, she said. We well, have got mice. Yeah, as far as that cat's concerned, we can keep them. I mean, I've never seen her on her four feet yet, let alone running around catching mice. She's probably keeping a low profile, scared to death of you. But don't worry, she'll get over it. Come on, Cleo, love. Come on, drink your milk, chuck, and get your strength up. Hi, love. Hi, love, sis. Hello, Mr. Baldwin. Good morning, Vera. How lovely to see you. Well, blame me, husband, kid. I mean, it would insist on a cup of breakfast. You know, men. No, I know women. Hey, 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 this isn't a cafe, you know. We sell that stuff to take out. Give us a break, mate. I've had an hour to eat since my supper. Get away. Don't tell us Vera don't make you a good breakfast every morning. You are. She can't even rip the top of a cornflake packet. Hey, to crown it all out to get the car out this morning to bring her to work. She's trying to see you off. Ah, uh, she's after your money. Ah, uh, if she finds any, I'll go halves with her. You know something, if I get a couple of quid in my pocket, I can feel her fingers itching for her share. Times like this, you know, when I'm skinned, she don't want to know. Yeah, well, you're not marrying for the money, you know. Of course you don't. You're marrying for the beauty and the companionship and the good humour and the loving tenderness. 
She always this do lally first thing in the morning. I'm not answering that. Yeah, I'll see you, kid. Ciao. Hi. Oh, devil. Get away. He deserves everything he gets. No, no fella deserves Vera. Oh, listen, don't forget to order them baby foods. Hello, hello. Not for me, you fool. Marilyn Peters came in yesterday. She wanted uh, lamb and haricot beans, chicken casserole and beef and carrots, and we haven't got any of them. I believe it. Thousands wouldn't. Don't worry. If there's any developments, I'll let you know. And don't be such an old woman. I'm only interested in your welfare. Yeah. So am I. I don't know, I can't quite put my finger on it. She just seemed more cheerful. I mean, I always thought of Deirdre as a happy sort of girl, but I don't know. Lately, she seemed a bit down. I understand they may be starting a family. Oh, I could explain it. The patter of tiny feet. It helps, so they tell me. They do say so, don't they? Yeah. Well, this isn't getting the bills paid, is it? Is there anything in there for us? Not that I can see. I'll read it again just to make sure, but I wouldn't say that Acts of Parliament are my favourite literature. Well, what do you think I'm paying your fortune for? Oh, you I haven't noticed. <laughs> oh, no, don't you start. I get enough from hot gossip out there. Any, any problem with the vat? Everything's under control. Right, well, I'll push off. Let you get on with it. Mr Baldwin, I would just like to say thanks again for taking me on. You don't know what a difference it makes doing something useful instead of just wishing your days away. What are you trying to tell me? You want to do it for less money? No, but thanks. Well, what do you think then? Never knew I had such a clever husband. Don't forget your clever foster kid. Oh, sorry. Where is he? Think Rovers, where do you think? Typical. Mm. Well, not bad now it's finished, eh? Well, I wouldn't say they're exactly finished, love. I mean, there's still a few holes in there. Oh, yeah, the old thing or two wants doing, but, well, it's near enough, eh? Mmm, and very nice, too. Listen, if Mavis wants to know where I've been all morning, this is where I was, right? A fine foster mother you are. Getting me to tell your fibs for you. Only little ones, love. Only little ones. Come on, let's have you back at work. Tra, love. Yeah, see you later. Bye, Eck, I must have been wicked. No rest for me. Serves you right. You should have modelled yourself on yours truly. Then I can spend every hour that God sends it rovers like you do, eh? ta -ra. See ya. Oh, oh, it's a Mr. Fred. Oh, hello. <coughs> and uh, one for me friend here. Right. What do you want? I don't want nothing. I'm being my usual congenital self. I think you mean congenial, Mr. Oh. Do I, Mrs. Walker? Well, I'll bow to your superior education. My usual congenial self. Are you? And in spite of your reluctance... Eh, uh, reluctance, Mrs Walker. Perfectly good word. In spite of your reluctance to carry on the conversation, I will persevere. Are you and Rita moving into the new house? What makes you say that? Well, I thought you might be. You know, with it being new and that. No, no, we're not, no. I mean, for one thing, we can't afford it. I need the cash in the hand to pay a few bills, make a bit of profit. Makes the whale go round. But just look. Look at that frayed end. And look at this leg, plucked to glory. Well, that could be nice. Mice don't have claws. They do, you know. We're only licklands, but they have claws, and they'll eat out. Well, rats do, I know. Eh? Listen, I should know. I'm married to one. Yes, but you don't feed him, though, do you? Oh, Look, doesn't... less of the cross talk. Do you know what I think? I think that this was caused by that flaming cat. No. Oh, never. come on. You said she never moved. Well, I've changed my mind. It gets up, ruins my merchandise, and then goes back to sleep. Oh, no, you can't. I don't I... want any more arguments. You just keep your eye on that thing, will you? Because I want no more of that. You never know what's going to happen next Listen. in this place. Come Morning, on, girl. Don't ask me, that's why. Oh, Right. Very professional, love. Such a crafty cock and is only... Uh, I'm looking at this little ring on your digit here, and may I say how delighted I am to see that that little ring is still on your finger. <laughs> I would have thought he'd have opted by now, him. Now, listen, Clogger. <laughs> I'm quite careful of answering for myself, Eddie. For your information, Mr. G, Eddie gave me this ring to keep, and that's what I intend to do forever. He has no intention of asking for it back, and in future, I suggest you don't judge everybody by yourself. 180! Still say you're dead lucky. Listen, there's lots of fellas like that in the world. Just be grateful you've got a good one. I am. <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd be able to say this, including Mr. Gates, as it does, but they really are a well-matched couple. 
and happy with it. Very happy with it. <coughs> yes, Mr. I want half a pound in here. And that last lot were a bit on flat side. In view of the fact that you dallied with it for almost three quarters of an hour, I am amazed that it hasn't reverted to its natural state. And speaking of natural states, isn't it normally about this time that you inundate me with vegetables from your allotment? Aye, but, uh, well, uh, they're not ready for lifting yet. Really? You do surprise me. Give us a smile, Albert. Give us some of the smile about. Shouldn't have bothered. He don't sound all that happy, does he? You're not exactly bubbling over either, are you? Missing him, are you? Well, wouldn't you? Who, oh, you're Brian? No, not for a minute, not for a single minute. I meant you loved one. <laughs> Where? Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Are you on your lonesome, then? No, Ivy's coming in. I just left Nicky with him. She said she was following me down. She's here now. I thought you said you were following me down. Now I had to have a little play, didn't I? Yes, I hope you have been stuffing him full of chocolates. Ooh. What do you want? Uh, I'll have half a lot I'll get that. What about you, love? Oh, thanks very much. I'll have a dry martini and soda. Oh, yeah. Oh, Yes, she's learning some very funny tricks these days. Don't you start. She's watching me like a oh. You need watching. Youngers today, don't they need watching, Len? Don't ask me, but I've got one working for me at the moment. But she keeps her eye on me. The house is looking very nice. Have you sold it yet? Uh, not yet, no, but I soon will. They get married every day, you know. Be a great little place to start life in, that would. <laughs> I could have done with twice as much. Oh, so you liked it then? Not bad. Ooh, don't strain yourself, will you? Eh, the door was open. God, let them all come in. Well, I'm just explaining my unexpected presence, that's all. Eh, I wanted to have a word with you. In private, you know. Well, it's men's talk, love. Swearing, women and football. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Listen, I'll be upstairs if you want any help getting shot of him. Right, love. What's all this men's talk, then? Well, uh, it's not really men's talk. It's just that it's something that I don't want getting around, you know. Uh, have you sorted out a price for the new house yet? Well, I haven't exactly fixed a price on it, no, but I thought about, what, 14,000 quid, give or take a bob or two? 14 grand, eh? Yeah, great. Why? Well, I'm interested, aren't I? I mean, I'm earning a good screw now, and I've got a nice young lady, and... Strange as it may seem with a slob like me, but matrimony isn't exactly out of the question. What does she say? Oh, I haven't sold her. I mean, she doesn't know yet. No, these are preliminary enquiries. I mean, don't run away with the eyes here. I've got the money in my pocket. Have you had a look round? Oh, yeah, the kids showed me round the other day. Right, I'll keep you in mind then. See what other offers I get, eh? That's if you're serious. Oh, yeah, I'm serious. Especially if you knock a grand off in a cause of friendship. Yeah. I thought you might say that. Oh. oh, blimey. This place is beginning to pong to high heaven. Oh, isn't it your aftershave we thought? What can we go? <laughs> no, it is not my aftershave, Vera. It's that flaming cat of yours. Lady cats don't smell. Then perhaps it's no lady. You just don't like her, do you? Correct. I'll go even further than that. I hate the flaming sight of it. But look, you learn to love her once she gets rid of all mice. Vera, not only is she not getting rid of them, it's her that's bringing them in. Before you dragged that cat in here, the mice thought that we had a proper cat on the premises, so they kept their heads down. Then they sent out a patrol, Saw that half eaten old moggy in the corner there and sounded the all clear. Oh, so what you're trying to say then is it could have been nice that did all that damage to them jeans? Well, either way, it's down to Super Cat, isn't it? I mean, if she did it, she goes. If it was the mice, then what are we feeding her for? I mean, someone ought to tell her the facts of life. Everyone in this place earns their keep. Oh, and if can't... I get any more arguments from you, you could take an early bath with her. Setting a note is chalk. Ailes needs from London, M. I don't know any better, you say. <laughs> Well, it's certainly a, a possibility. Oh, I wouldn't mind. But are you sure it wasn't you and not Valerie? I mean, there weren't any twins on her side of the family. Well, not that I ever heard, no. They definitely were on mine. Going back a bit, but uh, they were. 
Oh, maybe we'll get two for the price of one. <laughs> That's assuming we get any at all. I'm not sure I could cope with another set of twins. Get right away, it's only one each. Oi! Are you coming back to work or not? I'm coming! Hang on a minute! Anyway, see you later, love. Bye. And cheer up, you never know. It might be quad. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, I must say, it's a delight to see somebody working. <sighs> you know, if we'd have had as much help as we've had funny remarks, we'd have finished this long since. She's not wrong. OK, I'll leave you alone. Come on, then, if you're coming. Don't stop him from working. Oh, hey, Al, they're very touchy. Oh, I should think so. Huh? He's not going to be touchy about. He's making a fortune, is that lad? Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want? Yeah, oh, just the usual. Look at this. What's the matter? Yeah. Look at that. Three months out of date. Not a surprise, are you? No. Oh, I said it was. I know, I said it. I'm only trying to help, she said. I said, well, mind your old flaming business. <laughs> hey, I don't know if you know, but your tax disc's about three months out of date. See, what I mean is another one of them. No, somebody else told you, have they? Aye, uh, somebody else has told me. An old biddy down on Rosamond Street, a cheeky young copper of Bessie Street lights. Do you realise you're driving an untaxed vehicle, sir, he said. I should have run over him, flaming bike and all. Still in his nappies, he was. Could you tell me what steps you're going to take? Oh, don't tell us. It's been off the road and, and it's in, in the post. post. <laughs> well, what else can you say? Only that it isn't. At 44 quid for six flaming months. What do you think my name is, Rockefeller? How are you fix for 40 quid? Yeah? Ooh, uh, could we have two uh, halves, please, Annie? Don't do me no favours. Hey, what about you, Yatesy? Hang on, I'm adding up. <clears throat> what about me, what? How you fix for lending us 44 quid? Oh, yeah, how would you like it in fives or sevens? Hey, Ken, yeah. you're the lad in the know. What do you think the chances of uh, the income tax coming down next year are? Well, it should, because it's not long to the next election. On the other hand, we've got the French farmers to pay for, not to mention umpteen hairdos for Maggie Thatcher. Well, you don't get that trouble with the Labour Party, do you? I mean, that fella foot, well, he never does his hair cut, does he? <laughs> So you think it's a fair chance, do you? A yeah, fair chance, yeah. We must remember that this country still has its economic problems and this is no time for anybody to think about feathering their own nest. I wasn't thinking about feathering me nest, Mrs Walker. I was thinking about working out my fortune. I wouldn't need a pencil to work mine out. I mean, I'm just trying to see what the financial future holds for me. I mean, somebody must know. Well, everybody knows, don't they? Trouble is, they all know different. Anyway, I'm going to get my skits. I've got a meeting in ten minutes. Do you know, I read somewhere that economics is an inexact science. I mean, you get a couple of experts on the telly. One's telling you to spend, spend, spend. The other one's telling you to save, save, save. What I can't understand is they're both getting 20 grand a year and one of them's got to be talking a load of rubbish. <laughs> Same the whole world over. It's the poor that gets the blame. Oh, shut up, Duckworth. Want a cup of coffee? Oh, I do. <laughs> it's bad as all that, is it? Have you ever tried reading an act of parliament? No, I can't say I have. I don't suppose there's much plot about it, is there? Not a lot, no. There isn't much sense either, or even English. I mean, there's a paragraph here that might just as well be written in Chinese. Just read that. You know, so many government departments and little tin pot Hitlers who think they know better than the experts. It's no wonder times are hard. <laughs> Just think, in this one tiny little factory, Mr Baldwin has to employ someone to decipher these things just to make sure that we're doing everything that they think we should be doing when I could be doing something useful. <laughs> this is Chinese to me, love. Look, you do the wages and you do the what's at the VAT and you take the orders. Now, what more do you want? Yes, I know. I quite like it, really. And, talking of wages, I said I'd explain those deductions to Mary Phillips. She is back, is she? So not ten minutes ago. Oh, well, I'll do it now while I think on. Mm. It's a bit hot for me anyway. I know, it's the same with me. I keep telling that girl, you don't need boiling water to make coffee. But will she listen to me? No, she won't. Well, I've told her once, I've told her half a dozen times. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Have you got any tissues? Yes. Uh, oh, where did she come from? Mm -hmm. uh, heaven knows, but uh, if Mike Bowen finds out about this, I know where she'll go. Oh. Any signs yet? Any signs of what? I'm looking for a girlfriend for Nicky, and Tracy's too old. Oh, not you and all. No, there are no signs yet, but don't worry. As soon as the doctor gives me the word, I'll put an advert in the Gazette. What is this, anyway? You're at it, he's at it. 
interested, aren't we? Well, living nosy, you mean, and that's uh, two pound twenty. Oh, well, we're entitled to our bit of gossip. Well, gossip about something else. Gossip about, I don't know, Len's new house. No, thank you. Why not? That's a subject I prefer to keep well away from, is that new house. Every time I see Ivy, I think, here we go. Why don't you and Brian go in for that new house? It'd be nice and handy. And he's making so much money mm. out there. Can't you just hear it? Oh, heaven preserve us from mothers-in-law. <laughs> Although, from what I hear, I've missed out not seeing mine. Come to think of it, I never saw either of them. Ah, uh, well, you missed out on Ida Barlow, that's a fact. She was a lovely woman, was Ida. One of the salt of the earth. Yeah, else you were saying that? The other night she came round for a chat and she was telling me about all the folk who used to live on the street. Er, uh, Harry Hewitt, was it? No, Harry Hewitt, love. Harry and Conceptor Hewitt. And little Lucille. What am I saying, little? There was another fellow as well. He was one of nature's gentlemen. He didn't live on the street then, but he came in later. What was his name? Roberts. Alf Roberts. Did you talk about him? No, we didn't get round to the villain. Hey. <laughs> he means it, you know. Hey, it's all right, you laughing. Don't blow your own trumpet. Nobody else will. Hey, that's my motto and all. I would notice that. It never gets me anywhere, though. I mean... Did you two look like this when you were 17? Oh, I can't remember that, Val Battle. Hey, have you come in to show us your war paint, or do you want some of it? Yeah, I'll quite a block of fruit and not, please. Have you sold that house yet? Give us a chance. Let's finish it first, eh? <laughs> there are, love. Ken was saying something about Len and Rita having that new house themselves. Look how well I've got him trained. He's always here when I need him. Weren't you saying that Len wants that new house for himself? Marvellous, isn't it? How attentively wives listen to their husbands. I said exactly the opposite. He can't afford to. He needs the cash. Oh, sorry. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> right, you. I'm having the first bath. Get that lot inside and slam the door, will you? Yes, boss. Yes, boss. Hey, put that away. Just spoil your teeth. I'm hungry. You won't be when I finish with you. Hamburger and chips, OK? Oh, great. Hey, have you packed up already? What do you mean, already, you cheeky monkey? I've been at it since first papers this morning. Hey, well, I'll make tea. Hey, I were hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Fancy a bath. Yeah, well, joint cues. Len's in there and I'm next. Right. Wake me up when you get out. Fancy it, dear. I not only fancy it, I'm going to have it. I want to move next door, and so do you. Correct? Correct. It makes me look like a cave. Uh, right. We're agreed. But from all Len said on subject, he wants to sell it. So the next thing we have to do is change his mind. Now, how do you reckon we do that? Well, we tell him, don't we? What's the big flipping idea, Len? Eddie hurts look round our house. And if he makes a fuss, I grab him and you wallop him. <laughs> you have a lot to learn about, fellas, love. Well, I'm a willing scholar. It's Len's fault I don't get no practice. This is practice, the best you can get. Because if you can get round Len, you can get round anybody. So the first thing to learn is you can't beat them at their own game. So cussing, thumping and bully ragging's out. They can murder us at them. Well, if them's out, what's in? Patience, tact and superior intelligence. Ah, right. So what do we do? Wait. Wait? Wait. Shut up. Morning. Morning, love. You up? Sleep well, did you? Sleep? With that flipping jackhammer starting up at half past five. Vera Linear getting ready for the cabin. You with your flipping radio on. The bath running. Sleep? I feel as if I've had ten rounds with giant flaming haystacks. See? Aren't you glad you're not having a row with her? You're not kidding. I thought you might fancy a Hebrew. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Oh, you managed to clear up then. Except for these. <laughs> She's a little devil, isn't she? Oh, she does seem terribly accident prone for such a lazy cat. Well, if I were you, I'd put them in a drawer, because I mean, we don't want Bowie seeing them, do we? Oh, well. Uh... Emily, you're never going to grass on a dumb animal. Oh, well, I, I do think that. Oh, Mr. come Bowie on. Will... I mean, she only knocked a mug of coffee over. It could happen to anybody. I agree, but on a cluttered desk. Top, the effect was rather devastating. I mean, this is, well, it was our quarterly VAT return, and this totally illegible one is the Cuthbertson's order form, and I do think that Mr. Baldwin will have to be told. You've never seen Mr. Baldwin, have you, when he's gone berserk, Emily? Well, I have, and it's awful. He goes charging around like a mad thing, calling everybody, and I mean everybody, fit to burn. Oh, and the least excuse will set him off. I mean, you know from this mice business what he thinks about Cleopatra. He'll go completely dual alley. He will. I mean, he'll have a put-down in two seconds. Put-down? 
Well, you can't be serious. It's sad, Emily, but it's true he hates that cat. At least excuse him will be shut of her. Oh. I mean, we don't want that, do we? Oh, we don't. I'll phone for another VAT return. And we'll just have to hope that Mr. Baldwin doesn't need to refer to this. Oh, thanks, Emily. Don't be so stingy. It's only 20p. I'll give it you back as soon as I get a fare. Look, you've got enough for 10. Why don't you buy 10? Come on, I've not bought 10 since I was at flipping junior school. Well, I can't give you credit. I'll have to get out. Get out, then. All right, but he'll not like it, you know. He's on his 11th, sis. Alf! Yeah? You come here a minute, love. Oh. What's up? Jack don't work. He wants to know if he can owe you 20p till later on. Oh, do me a favour, mate. I'm a friend in need, yeah, I've got to have rules, haven't I, lad? Come on, our Vera's a regular customer here, isn't she? I know. And I'm a mate of bets, aren't I? Yeah, well, your references are rotten for a start, aren't they? I'm sorry, Jack. Give us ten, then, you flaming misery. Hey, and there's no need for that, neither. Yes, there is. You know I'm in mean, bother. Oh, you mean you skink because you've sent for your new tax disc? Oh, tax disc be blowed. I'm not even paying for me flipping MOT yet. Yeah? Well, I thought you told the Bobby it was in the post. I did. That's why I'm in stock, aren't I? What chance have I got of earning the money, eh? If I go out to work, I'm in danger of getting stopped and losing my licence. If I don't go out to work, I'm stuck for the money. I just can't flipping win. But what about your Vera? She's off sick, isn't she? And threatening not to pick her wages up just to taunt me. She's as tight-fisted as you. Alf's just refused him credits. A refusal often offends. Well, he should know better than to ask, shouldn't he? Mm. Anyway, I don't want him round here too much when uh, Bet's living upstairs. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about their little ding-dong. Hey, they've been all ding dong on my premises. Oh. <laughs> right, what can I get you, love? A uh, packet of tea, packet of digestives. Uh... Oh, don't the new house look nice? Now it's all painted up. Mmm. Jar of damson. Yeah, lovely. A uh, quarter of boiled ham. So is it all right if I have another shifting around the house? I mean, I've seen it, but Marion hasn't, you know. Yeah, just go in and have a look around. I'm still interested, but I've got to gauge your feelings like before I proceed any further, you know. Eh, uh, I won't need a key. No, 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 Sharon's gonna be there till about half past. Just go in and say that I've arrived, said it was okay, you know. Hey, by the way, you saw me in town. I'm buying supplies. Looks as good as a wink, mate. She is. So, you land. You're not really flogging it to him, are you? I'll flog it to anybody who can come up with the readies, and the sooner the better. I'm surprised you don't move in yourself and flog your own, you know. Hey, is this a pub or what? If I were you, I'd get over there and serve him before he leaps over the van and belt you one. <laughs> yes, Albert? I want a rum. A rum? A little rum for a little woman. Ah. <laughs> Fifty-five feet. Oh. Blame me not, Albert. They're all apenies. It's quite the realm, isn't it? I've gathered them within the last six months off the local pavements. Folks drop them, don't think they're worth anything, leave them there and I'll pick them up. Well, you're a flipping nuisance, I know that. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Well, aren't you going to count them? Oh, give over, Albert, you'll have me bog idea with all this. You know, I'm really thankful I don't have to have pies every day. You do have pies every day. Yeah, I know, but I don't have to. I mean, that's the difference. My life doesn't depend on it. Because you cut me other things than pies. Do you know, you've really changed my life, Marion. That's why I want to take you round and show you something when we finish here. What is it? Well, it's a surprise. It's a big moment for me, you know. Well, I've never felt this strongly about anybody before. Can you manage that? <laughs> Here's your cash. Oh, you know, every week I find that bank more depressing. It's like watching people draw their last breath. Well, I dare say some of them are. Yeah, I know I am. Everything under control. Yes, I've almost finished the slips and there don't seem to be any problems and I'll get straight onto the packets after lunch. Oh, good. I'll put this in the safe then. Oh, there is one thing. Absentee's wages. Oh, yeah, what about them? Well, I thought with them being such good friends that Ivy or Ida might take Vera's. Oh, that's a bit dodgy, that. Something might happen to him. I'd have to fork out twice. Fair enough forking out once for Vera. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd inquire. Yeah. Well, unless it's an emergency, it's best to leave him in the safe till Monday. Yeah. Right, then. Did you want me to sign that vet form? Well, could leave it a few more days. I mean, we're all right for time, and, uh, well, the longer the money stays in her account, the better. Hey, good thinking, that. <laughs> right, I'll leave you to it. Oh, there was one thing. The uh, cuff that's in order. 
What about it? I'd like to have a look at it. I can't remember if it was one gross or two gross of those slimline shirts. Oh, oh well, wasn't it two? Well, I don't know. Let's have a look and we'll clarify it, won't we? Well, come on, love. I can't wait all day. So... Well, what's that? Well, please don't get too excited, Mr. Baldwin. I, I can explain. Well, I think you better. I can't read a word of this. Well, it, it was Cleopatra. He's just... I might have known it. That flaming cat. It was an accident, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, dear. Bring up Cuthbertson's now. Find out what the hey, order is. What for? Never mind what for. Where's that flaming cat? Oh, no. Uh... Right, where is it? I don't know, and even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You've hidden it, haven't you? Oh. No, she's just vanished, Mr. Baldwin. She was there a few minutes and in a box. She'll be in a flaming box when I find her. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, I've just spoke to Cuthbertson's and the order were three gross. Oh, good, I thought it was two. So, there's no harm done, is there? I mean, you could be selling more than you thought you were. You know where that cat is, don't you? No, no. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, look, it's 22 minutes past 12 and you've got to meet in Centre of Manchester in half us. Oh, blimey, I forgot, yeah. Uh, Botham's buyer. Yeah. Hey, are you see that flaming cat making me forget things now? Where's my jacket? What's up? Get off, you mocking gun! Oh, he's found her. Look at that. Look at that. It's ruined. 50 quid jacket, that was. She was asleep on top of it. I tried to move her gently. Gently, and... my fault. We yeah. heard you. That is brutal damage. I mean, look. Yeah, but she was provoked, wasn't she? I mean, it's covered in hairs and, and, and it's ripped. Right, that's it. That cat goes now. I don't care what you do with it, but if, if that cat's here when I get back, I'll, I'll, I'll close the flaming place down. Ooh, he's a bad-tempered so-and-so. Yeah. Well, it seems to me we better get our heads together over this little matter, don't you? Yes, we are. It's victimisation. Yeah. Where are you taking me? You'll see. It's not far, is it? Only I've got about 20 calls this afternoon. We've got sums this time. We'll even get a drink in after. Morning, Mr Baldwin. Big mate of mine, that, you know. It's very rude not answering. Yeah, well, it's... Uh, that's in a big business, you know. Hey, to think you thought I was a bloke like that in the beginning. Not really. You were always ordinary to me. Was I? Of course you were. We're here. Where? What do you think of this, then? What? Well, the house. I mean, we are engaged. We're going to be needing a house before long, aren't we? Oh, Eddie. Sharon! Sharon! Len said we could have another shifty round, you know. OK. Right, go on, grab hold. Well, you are going to carry me over the threshold, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> We've had it, Eddie Yates is looking right in your house again. He's fooling himself. No, he's gonna brought his girlfriend with him this time. He says he's a uh, prospective violation or a miwak. He keeps going just the ticket and she keeps going, oh, lovely. Is Len with him? No, he popped into town. Oh, what shall I do? Shall I tell him it's ours and shoo him out? No, leave it. Leave it? Oh, Rita, we can't just leave, leave it. Leave it and calm down. It takes more than looking around a place before they can buy it. Yeah, I know that, but you won't hear him. Honestly, he's dead serious. Mm. Hey, do I smell bangers and mash? You do that. Great. Got a good day? Yeah, we got on very well, didn't we, Sharon, eh? And then I popped into town. Oh? I got a bit of a shock there, you know. The bank manager patted me on the back. <laughs> a bad sign, that. Anyway, I've advertised next door in the Gazette, so things should start getting better now. Oh. Sharon tells me that uh, Eddie has been looking round it. Yeah, I've just bumped into him. He seems very interested. Good. Two bottles of lager, a one with lime, and I'll have a light tail. Oh, that's Vera, Jack. Rotten. I don't know where she got to last night, but when I got in, she was snoring a flaming head on. <laughs> oh, my heck. Shall we see her later on? Very much doubt it, love. Oh, weekend will be on you, then. You must be joking. Hey, uh, how are you fixed for getting us out? Get lost. <laughs> what are you having, Emily, love? Oh, that's very nice of you, Ida. Have a tonic and lemon, please. And a tonic and lemon. Uh, Who's Emily? She's new wages clerk. Looks a bit dizzy for that job, doesn't she? She's got out of gold. Uh, 
when her husband died, he left her £2,000 and she bought a trampoline for youth club and a bed for General Hospital. Give it soft in the head, then. I didn't expect you to appreciate that. Still, you don't know what it is to be generous, do you? Neither the flipping you. There you go, cop. Come on. Some meeting started. Oh, thank you. Won't be second. Don't you find them a little coarse, dear? Cock, indeed. It's a small price to pay for my renewed sense of usefulness, Mrs Walker. Well, you know, I can't take her in. My old man's allergic to cats. Oh, that's not the point. First things first. We must be assured that Cleo remains a member of the workforce. And he doesn't have too much of his own way, Baldwin. Because if he does, none of us are safe after this. She has been terribly naughty, though. Oh, Perhaps anyway. if we put her on a diet, she'd show more interest in catching no, mice. No, The point is, are we all agreed that Cleo stays, right? Oh, yeah. Cleo stays. Cleo stays? Sounds like a pair of courses, that. <laughs> Hello, love. What are you having? I like lager and lime, please. Lager and lime, dear Fred. I don't know. What would you think? Well, it's just the kind of place I'd like, eventually. Right, well, uh, I suppose I'd better think about one of them 100% uh, mortgage jobs, eh? Oh, no. I, I meant a bit more eventually than that, love. Well, we don't want to rush things, do we? What? I, I thought you were keen. I am, but... Yeah, all right. Well, uh, well, you uh, you think it over, eh? And I'll see you tonight, eh? Uh, oh. Jack Dawes, love. Fear is Oh yes, uh, I'm hello. I'm sorry, did I find you? You did actually, but um. What can I do for you? Uh, Fever's sick and I've called for a wage, is love. Oh. I've done it before. You know, when she'd been too sick to move. That's how I knew where to come, you see. Well, oddly enough, I did discuss this with Mr Baldwin this morning. What about me and Vera? Well, no, but it was about Vera's wages indirectly, and he said that unless it was an emergency... Ah, well, it is an emergency, you see. I'm cabbing. And due to circumstances beyond my control, my cab has broke down. And I'm skint, you see, and we're relying on Vera's wages. Now, we're not going to have a very nice weekend if I go home empty-handed out. And she will not make a quick recovery if I can't cook her a decent meal, will she? No. Well, if it was the girls that Mr Baldwin warned me about... Uh, quite right and all. But I'm her husband love, and that's different, is it? Yes, I'm sure it'll be all right. Um, would you just sign there? Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, would you put, on behalf of V. Duckworth? There you are. Yes, that's it. There you are, Mr. Duckworth. Ah, look. And do tell her to get well soon. Eh? Hey. Oh, aye, right. I will. Is this right? Is what right? Is what she says right? That you want to move into next door? You. I couldn't help it, it just popped out. He kept going on about how much money. I said, is it right? Yes, it is right. I want us to move in next door. Flipping heck, Rita. And if anybody else moves in, it'll be over my dead body. It's always the flipping same, isn't it? Do you know, for one thing, we can't afford to move into next door. You what? Eddie Yates can and we can't. Don't talk daft. Is it because it's Eddie, is that it? No, it isn't. Anyway, Eddie's pulled out. That's the first I've heard of it. Well, Marion come in cabin today and And you was... managed to talk her out of it, did no, you? No, she just doesn't think the time's right, that's all. Well, if I don't sell it to them, I've got to sell it to somebody. I've got to. Why? Because I need to repay the money I borrowed to build that flaming place, that's why. Sell this? Well, yes, if I just wanted to break even, I could do, yeah. Well, you'd be breaking even with a new house, wouldn't you? Rita, I wanted to get some money together to put it in the bank for you and me. Is that more important than providing a nice home for your family? What family? Her. She's family, isn't she? And me? You don't see, do you? If we were to do that, if we were to sell up here and move next door, that'd be us in Coronation Street for good. I mean, I wouldn't have the patience, the energy or the clout at the bank to build that kind of place again. I'd rather be stuck in there than stuck in here. You're not listening, are you? I wanted to use the money from that place as a deposit on something else, somewhere out of town, somewhere nice. Somewhere with a bit of fresh air for a change. And for me to build it. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's all there is to it. Rita. 
least he knows now, doesn't he? Oh, he knows now, all right. But what about what he said? What, about moving to the country? Yes. Len? He gets a fever just eating salad. He'll say anything when he's Ryle, Sharon, and so will I, and that's what I was trying to avoid. By playing that daft game? Yes. Well, it would drive me crackers. Look, the way we carry on may seem daft to you, but it's the way we carry on. And in future, madam, I'll thank you not to interfere. And don't sulk. A gob like yours, you should be able to take a bit of criticism. What do you mean you couldn't find a home for it? I mean, what's wrong with the RSPCA? You're heartless, you are. I'm not heartless. I am realistic. You're cruel. I am not cruel. I mean, that cat is a walking disaster area, right? I mean, one day it's going to wander somewhere where it shouldn't be and wallop. I'm just trying to protect it from itself. Look at its little face. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know you're fond of it. I mean, I'm fond of it myself. Oh, oh. But what good is it? Look, you said we had mice. We needed a cat. Yeah, but not that one. That is a fat, dumb, totally useless muggy. I mean, it's only been here a week, and since then it's caused chaos, hasn't it, eh? It's gone all over the place. It's, uh, it's ruined everything, it's infested the place with vermin, and messed up my 60-quid jacket. 50-quid jacket. And anyway, it is not staying another night under this roof. And if you don't get rid of it, I will. Oh. Oh. Hello, Mr Baldwin. Have you just can got... shut up for a start. Oh, what's up with him? He says clear off Tory's cold. Cool. Vera! Just the woman I wanted to see. Hey, okay. Hey, what's to do in here? Well, I'm surprised to see you up and about. Surprised? What are you on about, kid? I'm raring to go. Give me my wages and the weekend starts safe. Well, haven't you got your wages? What do you mean? Well, your husband picked them up soon after lunch. They what? Well, he came in and told me that you were at death's door and that he... I'll kill him! I will! I'll flame his skid him alive! Hey! Come on, I'm not missing this. Well, uh, where will we find him now? Jack, at half past five, with a pocket full of money, I'll give you two guesses. Oh, come, come on. on. <laughs> Here, Emily. Oh. Oh. Evening, Fred. What's up with you? You look chuffed. Had a little windfall, kid, didn't I? Eh? What have you done? Buried Grandma? No, oh, I did a couple of mad dashes down the ringway. Exact types, you know, big tippers. Oh. Was that what pay off your old tax? A couple of each ways on the doggies. Oh, make me sick, you do. What are you having in it, old? It was a pint of bitter and a dull scotch. Shorts at half five? Um, hey, and don't forget you owe me one from dinner. Now get yourself half. Thanks very much. It's nice and quiet in here early on, isn't it? You're still mad at me, aren't you? No, I'm just a bit disappointed, that's all. I mean, I thought you were as keen as me. Just thought it was all systems go, you know. It is all systems go, on it? Just because I want us to take our time doesn't mean I've gone off the idea. It means I'm very serious. So serious that I want to be absolutely certain. There'll be other houses, Eddie. Do you know what, Marion? You're great, you are. You miserable little creep! <laughs> Hello, love. Hello? Hello, is that all you've got to say? Do you want a drink? Scraggy beer, a lump in one on. Sure. Give me that, eh, hey, you, you thieving lump. Oh, get over it. Give it a gin and tonic, Fred. And what do you think you're doing with this, eh? I went to pick it up for you, didn't I? All right. And now have you managed to go through 40 quid in an hour and a half? Well, I have to pay me road tax, otherwise I'd be off the road, love. You'll be off at road for a good bit time I finish with you, I tell you. Oh, give over my drink. Look, I can work me weekend now and pay you back, can't I? Work? Yo, I've seen more work in a sick note. He told me it were tips. You... Tips, did he? I'll tip him. We don't want any argue with him, do you? I'm not his flaming block one. I will. Don't hit me. It's him if you're going to hit somebody. Hey, come on, Vera. Mr Baldwin, I'm afraid I've made a rather silly mistake. I gave Vera's wages to her husband. Yeah, well, not now, Emily. I've got things on my mind. I'm moaning about that Monday morning, all right? It's always been a problem with me. I'm too trusting. Yeah, me. You, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, I was relying on that lot to get rid of this. And there's me doing it myself. Oh, where are you taking her? RSPCA. Oh. And I don't want any arguments. Get her off, Jeff. There you are. There's your caring humans for you. Don't forget about the cat when the fight starts. And that really is a case of cruelty to a dumb animal.
another packet of sardines and tomato. That's third this week, you know. Hey, it's not what you call a, a pregnancy fad, is it, Vera? What a tear is. Come on, that bit joke at Mum. Hey, listen, I'm not that flaming old. Anyway, it's not for me, cloth head, it's for Cleo. Oh, well, that explains everything. For Cleo, can't factory. Do you know she loves sardines? Her little eyes light up every time she sees me opening that tin. So would man and all, Vera. Come on, she lives life a riley, that cat does, and you spoil her rotten. I know, but she's lovely, isn't she? She's very affectionate, you know, which is something I'm sure of in my life. Oh, hey, oh, Susie, well, in a blonde way. Thank you, Vera. Were you born with a mouth that size, or did you have to have an operation? Ooh. I'm just taking a packet of fags, Alf. I'll pay you later, lovey. I'll she pay you in kind, Alf. Buy it, you're a rum and aren't you, for a grocer. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friend. She's got a lot of gold, really, you know. Wrong sort. It's no wonder I still get a red miss when I see Vera. Hey, Bet, can you do me a favour? You name it, cock. Well, will you not come wandering into the shop in, in, in your dressing gown? I mean, folk get wrong idea, you know. Right, I won't in future. Yeah, and, and there's one other thing and all. Yes, love. How long's this flat of yours going to be? You've been here a fortnight already. I'll check up. Yeah, well, I'll be obliged. Anything else? No. Hey, Alf, I've just thought of something. If I hadn't have wandered in here in my dressing gown, Vera's eyes would have popped out like champagne corks. Oh, why? Because all I've got on underneath here, love, is my birthday suit. Oh. Morning, Emily. Morning. Emily. But where could it have got to, though? Well, all sorts of places. Come on, it's like a rabbit warren, this factory, isn't it? Oh. Well, nobody's seen her downstairs. Oh. Yeah, but what I can't understand this. She hasn't touched the grub, has she? Or drunk her milk. I mean, she's never done that before. Vera, she's a cat. Cats like to roam, you know, like... Uh, Go out on tails. Reminds me a bit of you when I come to think about it. Oh, and I love you old so. Hey, don't worry, she'll have gone courting. Well, do you think we could think about something else now, like starting to work or something? Hey, but listen, kid. I mean, she's usually here to greet us on a morning, ain't she? Have you ever known to miss? Cos I haven't. Vera, you never know. She could have took it into red to do a job properly, like catching mice, instead of sitting there yawning. Do you know you're dead hard, you are? Be a different sailor if it were your brown that had gone missing. I should hope so. Oh, uh... Ivy, have you got the production sheets, please? No. Yes, they're in the office, Emily. Oh, right. Um, hey, Emily, have you seen old Cleo this morning? Cleo? Yeah, Cleo, cat, you know. No, I uh, haven't seen her. Sorry. She'll come back, kid. You know, we had a cat once. It only came home on a Friday when we had fish. Just as if it knew what day at week it was. I sometimes wonder if it went to church on a Sunday. Hey, did you notice Emily's face when I mentioned Cleo? What about it? Well, she flushed up, didn't she? Oh, I never noticed. Oh, you're not trying to tell me you think Emily's took Cleo. Well, she wanted for any road. Not unless she's one of them cat thieves that catch them and skin them and make their gloves. Ah, but she could be one of them vivid sexists, couldn't she? Right, I'm off. I'll catch you up. Ta-ra, then. I said ta-ra. Ta-ra. It won't make the slightest difference, you know. What won't? You pulling your face about next door. Not pulling my face. You could have fooled me. There's no way we're going to move into next door. I can't afford it, for one thing. So I'm selling it. Ta-da. That's what he thinks. If you ask me, I think he will sell it. Nobody's asking you. Because you'll lose it by default, won't you? You will? By default. Hey, what did your generation do at school, eh? You definitely didn't learn very much. One thing we did learn, our clout across the year old shuts up, cheeky kids. Well, I don't think you'll get anywhere by just patiently hoping that Len will change his mind. Well, what do you suggest I do? Go round in a slinky night if feeding him strawberries? Oh, that's an idea. I think I've gone crackers. No, what you've got to do is sell him the idea. Make him see you've got to move next door and there's no alternative. What do you think I've been trying to do? But gently, not like a bull at a gate. Amateurishly, you mean? Perhaps you could do better. Of course I could. I'd like to see you try. Right, I will. First chance I get. Don't worry. I'll have us in there by next week. Yeah, I'd like a better out and all. I want to improve myself. I mean, this place is getting a bit grotty now, isn't it? Eh? Here. I'm sorry, it's not up to your usual standard. I'd forgotten your last address with Claridge's. You're not very good at sarcasm either, are you? She could have been run over. You what? Cleo, she could have been run over. And you're Jack's late, don't you? What do you think he's got run over? <laughs> Him, I hope he has. 
The next holiday I have, I'm going to Capri. It sounds so, well, romantic. I mean, even the name. Blackpool sounds romantic to me, but I don't expect we'll get there this year. <laughs> Are you sure you've not seen Cleo, Emily Bishop? Pardon? She's told you she hasn't, Vera. Why do you keep going on about that cat? It's getting to be an obsession with you. I'm talking to her. Can't she speak for herself for some of No, I haven't seen Cleo today. Right, you've got your answer. Well, when did you see her then? When did you see her last? Flaming Harry Vera talk about third degree. She probably saw her yesterday tea time when we all did. Why do you keep going on at Emily? Well, what at yesterday tea time? Come on, Emily. Why don't you ask me? Good. Ask me when I saw it last year. Well, I will. When did you last see her? Last night when I got rid of it like I said I would. Because it was lazy and useless. Now, that is not uncommon around here. But unfortunately for cats, they can't go spawning off to some industrial tribunal, can they? Right, I will see you now, Emily. Yes, Mr Baldwin. But where have you taken her then? What have you done with Cleo? She has gone to that great big creamery in the sky, Vera. Well, the cruel, rat-faced little... You were right. You were right, Vera. Emily did know some of it. Of course, they were flaming well right. It were written all over her face. But that's not the point, is it? The point is, where's he taking Cleo? Well, yeah. is that poor thing put down? That's obvious. But where, though? Is there a vet round here? Oh, come on. I can't see Mazza Baldwin paying somebody to do it. No way. You don't think he's chucked her in canal, do you? Well, I won't put it past him. That poor little cat. She come to us cos she got nowhere else to go. Yeah, she trusted us to look after her. Yeah, and we've let her down. Yeah, and I never got to give her them sardines. Oh, she... Hang on a minute. What about RSPCA? Eh? RSPCA. Happen he's took her there. I mean, they take cats, don't they, that nobody wants? Perhaps even Bowie couldn't face, you know. Hey, you're right. Well, come on, let's ring and find out. It's worth a chance. Well, I still think he's chucked her in canal. He'll have put her in a satin tied of brick to her neck. I wish you'd shut up, Vera. Here we are, our RSPCA. It'll be under Royal Society to stop cruelty to animals. I do know what RSPCA means, I don't think it means quite that. Hang on. Oh, here we are. 7361231. Does anybody else want to ring? Not oh. me. You know, just in case. No. Oh, give us it here. Right. 73. Six. One, two, three. What's that number? One. One. Oh, come on, Elsa. Hello? Oh, hello, love. Uh, I was just wondering if you could get help us. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I wonder if you, you know, uh, we, you see, we've lost our cat. Yeah. Cleo, her name is. Yeah, well, I just wondered if somebody had found her and brought her in, like. Well, uh, it was last night. Well, it could have been this morning, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, this morning. Yeah. Uh, well, what's that? Well, uh, she's just a cat, you know. She's black, Vera. Black or white? Right. Uh, she's black, love. Yeah. Oh, all right, love, thanks. Hey, she's going to check. She sounds very nice. Oh, I do hope she's there. Don't we all? Oh, come on. Are you sure? Oh, thanks, love. Hey, you'll try stopping us, kid. We'll be round like a shot. Hey, the founder. Oh. <laughs> well, who's a clever little girl, then? You are, kid. Hey, who's going to fetch her? Hey, I'll fetch her, kid. I'm going to taxi. Oh, except... What? I'm skinned. Well, we'll have to have a whip round. Hey, you want yeah. something for them and all for looking after her? Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's Baldwin going to say? As we've got Cleo Hey, back. listen, I don't care what he says, as long as he keeps his hands off her, or else he'll end up in the cut with a brick round his neck. Here we are then, darling. Don't forget to hang on for me, will you? Yeah. Uh, that'll be uh, 80 pence, Emily, love. Without mine, of course. <laughs> oh, well, uh, is there an 
Oh, just. I'll get those, Emily. Put your money away. The two drinks, Fred, mate, and uh, a large scotch for me. Thanks, mate. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Baldwin. It's all right. And may I take this opportunity of saying what a splendid job you're doing, Emily? You are, really. You have lifted a burden off my shoulders, which is unusual for me. People are generally trying to do the opposite. Oh, thank you very much. Keep it well in with bosses, I see. <coughs> That one's called for us. Well, she obviously knew wet cat. Well, why couldn't she tell us? Because he probably told her to keep her mouth shut. Well, then she wants to decide whose side she's on over there. It's turned out very well, don't you think? Yes, it's lovely. Oh, I'm sure Princess Di will be pleased with it. Well, I mean, she couldn't get anything much better than that evening in a boutique, could she? Emily? Hmm? Oh, no, no, she couldn't. You don't like it, do you? Of course I like it. Well, you've been very lukewarm about it, I must say. Oh, I'm sorry, Mavis. And I've had a rather trying morning. Work losing its savour, is it? Oh, it's not the actual work. I enjoy that. It's the two camps that's the trouble. What two camps? Management and workers. I don't quite realise the depth of the divide. And so far, I've found myself being a bit of a piggy in the middle, if you see what I mean. Like this morning, all about a cat, would you believe? A cat? Yes, a cat. Any excuse for an argument in the world of industry, it seems. Of course, that's just the symptom. Pardon? I said that's just the symptom. The cat. Quite. Oh, give us a swift part, will you, Fred? <laughs> Just been stopped taking. I think I've got a tin of fruit lodge in my throat. <laughs> uh, Bubbles, your uh, landlord's here. <laughs> Hi, Alf. Whoops, sorry. Good stroke you pulled there, Alf. You know, keeping it on the premises and charging it for it as well. well <laughs> it's only a temporary arrangement, you know, because oh. you're not even paying any rent. You know, you could wear coloured socks round here, some people put wrong construction on it, the wood, honest. Yeah, I know, but let him bet move in with you. I mean, that's like going around beating your bare chest. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, the patient pet. Hey, I'll soon have you home. I charge double for carrying lions, darling. Well, so long as you don't charge for your jokes. Oh, good little darling. Oh. Well, it's taking her long enough, innit? Oh, well, you know, Vera, she'll be having a look round. I tell you what, I bet she brings back three stray cats as well as Cleo. <laughs> I won't put it faster. He Baldwin's face if she do. <laughs> Baldwin's face if she just brings Cleo back. Hey, hold on, look. This milk's been here since yesterday. I'll go and get her a bit of fresh. Ah. Yeah. So she brings oh, her Hey, I've got her last face. Where have you been? Well, I had to have a look round, didn't I? What did I tell you? You get the right one. You have just brought one cat back, haven't you? Eh? Oh, no, man, come on, let's have a look. Hey, where you get this box oh. from? Hey! I borrowed it from RSPCA. Oh. I said one of us would take it back, you know, after. Hey, it's handy, this. We could do with one of these yeah. for her. There oh. she is. Oh, oh. oh. who's a little darling? Who's a oh, yeah. mammy's little low? Oh, come on, don't have a do it, Vera. <laughs> hey, did she recognise you, kid? Of course she did. Her little eyes lit up when she saw me. You make it sound like a flashlight. <laughs> Hey, what's your mummy got for an home present? Homecoming present. Hey, get that to the side. Is that my shopping bag, Ida? Hey, Vera. What? Did uh, Baldwin take her himself? Did RSPCA say? Of course they did. And you know what the liar said? He said he found it up a tree and rescued it. He never. He did. And you know what he said then? He said he couldn't have it put down because it was so grateful. And he had a, a rabbit, a dog, and a cat as well. Well, the lying blue. Hey, visitor. Cool. How did that thing get back in here? Oh, do you know, Mr Baldwin? It's an homing pigeon. You could take it to Timbuktu and it found its way home. Yeah, she just walked in this minute. A miracle, don't you think, Mr Baldwin? You got it back from the RSPCA, didn't you? Yes, I did. And the thing about summons in you for catnapping. Yes, and all lies you've been telling, Mr Baldwin. I wouldn't have thought it of you. No, yeah. me neither. Well, lie after lie. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I know what I should have done. I should have... I should have drowned it. <gasps> Well, I said you had. Well, the thought did occur to me, and I tell you what, I will drown it if it's not out of here, because that cat is useless and it's ugly. Oh, oh shut your ears, Cleo. Oh. Do you know she can understand every word you'll say? She has also got the instincts of a soccer hooligan. So either she goes or else... <laughs> Finito. Oh, real thing. Hey, oh. do you think he means it? Well, he usually means most things, it says, doesn't he? Oh, look at her, kid. She's all trembling. Did that nasty man upset you, love? Well, don't you worry. We look, won't let any harm come to you. Hey, I've just been looking in that fridge of ours. Oh, yeah? 
What's them lumps of pineapple and cheese with on that dish of lettuce? Well, I thought we'd have a nice cheese and pineapple salad, you know, pretend it's summer. Pineapple, cheese and lettuce? Yes. Really before? Yeah, of course I have. Well, I haven't. And I don't intend having it for my tea either. I'll get some at the chip shop. All right, please yourself. I intend doing. I don't know what else to daft in my life. Pineapple and lettuce. Enough to put a rabbit off lettuce for life. And don't you talk to me either. What's he mushing about now? Is grub. Honestly, I try and coax his palate into the 1980s every now and again, but it's no use. If it's not been looking over a gate or swimming in the sea, it's muck to him. Do you know, I'm a bit like that myself. I must be one of the few folk in this country what don't like Chinese food. I always think to myself, where's the mashed spuds then? <laughs> See it. Right. Hey, listen, I should uh, steer a bit clear of Alf if I were you. Caught him writing your notice out earlier on, in blood. Yeah, I know, they're having a go at him in pub. Fred with his ruptured quips. You don't think my intentions are dishonourable, do you? Well, I... Oh, you do, don't you? Honestly, I'm only here till my own place is ready. What is it about me that makes folk think I'm always up to summer? I don't know. Could be your earrings. I mean, anybody who wears earrings that size. I mean, you don't see nuns wearing earrings that size, do you? I shall prove to you I'm on the level. I'll check up how my flat's getting on this afternoon. You never know, I could be out of here by tomorrow. All right, Alfred, darling. And I'll tell you something else, Deirdre Barlow. It's not easy wearing earrings this size. They could break my neck. I'll believe it when I see it. And not before. And in the meantime, don't worry, Alf. I'll protect you. Oh, don't you start. <laughs> Where's Len? Washing his hands. Oh. Shouldn't you be doing the same? No, oh, they're all right. They're not that dirty. Any road, he always locks bathroom door. I don't know what he's frightened of. <laughs> he always has, love. I don't. I don't either. Perhaps that says something about us, you know. We're secret exhibitionists. You speak for yourself. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I didn't get a chance to bring the subject up of uh, you-know-what. He didn't come back to the yard this aft. Oh, forget it. I'll keep digging at him. Usually wears him down. Oh, where am I going to forget it? Anything happened at the yard today? No. no. Sit down, will you? Hey? Uh, please. What's all this about? About next door. What about it? Well, it's great. You've done a great job there. I know I have. It's probably the best little house like that in the entire world. Probably. And you like living in these type of houses, don't you? I think they're ideal. So, why not live in the best, eh? Nice try. I'll put it another way. No, there's no need to bother. Who's your most very favourite person? When she's not glaring at me, that is. Right, and who's your second best? Go on, I'll not blush. All right, then you are. Right. So just imagine, if you lived in the perfect house, with the two people you like best, and both of them good looking at that mind. Well, be like living in paradise, wouldn't it? Any fella would jump at the chance. Well, they'd be a fool not to, wouldn't they, eh? Eh? Don't you think, Len? Lovely, Len. Lovely, kind, cuddly, curly hair. Don't look a day over 50, Len. Yeah, you're dead right. It'd be marvellous. Of course it would. I mean, no fella could wish for anything better. He'd be happy for life, wouldn't he? Absolutely. What have I just said? I only wish I could afford it, but I can't, so I've got to sell it. What's for tea, love? Taking kidney pie. Just the job. You're a pig, you are. A selfish, rotten pig. And I bet you've left wash basin a mess as usual, haven't you? You're not fit to have anything new. You can wipe that smile off your face. I'm having that out. All right. Give us a check and it's yours. Ah! It's a waste of good grub. What are we going to do with Cleo tonight? I don't know, but can't leave her here for Bluebeard to get his hands on her, can we? No, I'll take her home with me. Come on, she can go with me if you like. No, you can take her tomorrow. We'll, we'll have a road, sir. Hey, uh, have we decided what we're doing with, with Cleo tonight? It's all sorted out, kid. I'm going to take her. I'll borrow that box from RSPC. Oh. Hey, you know what I think? I think it'll all blow over if we keep an eye on her during the day and take her home three or four nights before we're going to forget all about her. Oh, I won't put money on it, kid. No, he'll just bide his time in. He is a shifter. But we can't keep taking her home every night. I mean, poor cat's not going to know whether she's coming or going. I suppose one of us could adopt her permanently, couldn't we? Oh, I couldn't. I, I, I mean, I don't mind odd night, but I couldn't stand the cat right house. All them airs and tomcats howling in the backyard. Oh, no, thank you very much, no. I thought you were supposed to be a flaming cat, love you. Oh, what about am. you then, Vera? 
Well, I'd have a like a shock, but it's the same. No, price of a tin of cat folds a pint, so uh, no, I'd have a net. Hey, well, what about you? Oh, oh no, uh, unfortunately, my Bert is, is like Ida's husband. He's allergic to cats. Make his nose run, you know. Otherwise, well... Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Right, Cleo. Flaming liar. He's no more allergic to cats than a wheelbarrow. I wonder if I could have a word about this morning. Oh, I what about this morning? Well, I was in rather an invidious position. Huh? Caught between two stools regarding Cleo. Oh, were you? You know, you could have told us what he'd done with her, Emily. Yeah, you could have saved us a lot of worry and a lot of upset. Yes, I, I know how upset you must have been when you couldn't find her, and I'm very sorry, but Mr Baldwin had asked me not to... Anyway, I, I might be able to make up for my rather cowardly silence. Oh, I... Ow. Well... I've had this rather whimsical thought. Oh, what it painful. What's the best protection you could possibly give Cleo against Mr Baldwin, against anybody? Me. And me. A trade union. <laughs> what? You make Cleo a member of a trade union, your own union. <laughs> Isn't it brilliant? I mean, would even Mr Baldwin dare to harm a member of the union? I doubt it. There'd be a general strike at the very least. Anyway... I'll leave you with the thought. I think if you did, it'd be quite a coup. Not to mention amusing. Good night. Hey, right. I think she's cracked it. <laughs> the boring couldn't touch her, she'd be like, putting Len Murray down, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, how does that song go? You don't get me on I'm part of the union. <laughs> hey, you safe, brother. You are, sister. Oh, why? Sister. <laughs> Sure, hey. No, let him drain, love. Well, he's got a nice day for it. Whoever said the sun shines on the right just got that bit wrong. Yeah, he's dead mean, isn't he? Battle's not over yet, Flower. I'm talking about me. Ooh, it's all right when it comes to plastering and navvying and undercoating. As soon as it comes to top coating, it's shower and get lost. Well... You'd think he'd trust me by now. <laughs> Labour of love, as far as he's concerned. Who for? You're right, who for? Did he say anything in bed? Eh? You know what I mean. Don't embarrass the child. About Faust. No. Keeping a low profile while he considers his position. And, uh, what is his position? He's lost. Oh, tell me I was dreaming last night. You didn't say, did you, at the full of your flat down? I did, love. Don't you go to bed soon, now? It's you what comes in late. Hey, off. Only two o'clock. No, I thought it was some nightmare. This disembodied voice floating through the door saying that Victoria Street looked like a bomb site. Yeah, well, it were a bit of an exaggeration. I'd had one or two, but my place has definitely gone for a burden. Well, they can't do it. Who can't? Whoever's done it. They have. They told me not about it. Well, they had permission. I asked this bloke with a big hammer. Well, why wasn't I told? I'm supposed to be on the council. You don't think they were trying to tell you something, dear? Yeah, well, I suppose I could have missed it. I mean, I get a lot of bump through. Anyway, we're not taking it lying down, are we? Aren't we? Well, no, he's obviously conned you, this landlord of yours. I mean, he told you he wanted to fix the roof to get you out. He couldn't pull it down with you inside, could he? Knowing him, he might have tried. Yeah, well, he's got to find alternative accommodation, I'm sure. Ha uh ha. -huh. What's funny? Do you know where my landlord runs his business from? Where? Barbados. Still, I'm not as badly off as some of the other tenants must be. At least I've got alternative accommodation. You're a prince, Alf. What are you? Nice bit of toast, this. It'll do my mouth a power of good. It felt like the inside of a corduroy cap when I got up. Oh, come on. Do I look as if I've just fell off a bus? April 1st, long since been and gone, you know. But we're serious, cock. Honestly, guide's on her. Well, she is. And you are. Well, we're doing it for cat's sake, aren't we? I mean, poor dumb thing can't stand up for itself. If we're talking about being dumb, you two are dumber than flaming cats. Make it a member at union, indeed. 
Listen. Who's bar me idea where that is if I couldn't guess? It was Emily Bishops. Oh, come on now, you're having me on. I'm not having you on. Listen, ask her. She were there. She were there, large as life and twice as flabby. Well, we were talking about Baldwin getting rid of poor thing and Emily said if it were a member at Union that he won't be able to touch it. But I think she were only joking, really. I'm damn sure she were only joking. But we're not joking, honestly. I mean, look, Leo. She's past a member of family, aren't you, kid? All cast together, like you mean, Vera. Well, I'd have thought you'd have understood you being a Red Dot Union woman. I am, for people. Them with fur coats and four legs, they can look after themselves. Oh, but she can't, though, can she? I mean, look, it's the principle of the thing, anyway. Solidarity. I mean, how would you feel if you got chucked out of your job and nobody stood up for you? She's serious, isn't she? Oh, flaming heck. Mind you, my husband read somewhere that a garage at Midlands did it. What, make cats a member at Union? Well, then, bosses couldn't get rid of it. And what happened then? They got away with it. You see, that proves it. All it proves, Vera, is the North has not got the monopoly on nutters. <sighs> oh, OK. I suppose it'd be a laugh. I'll tell you what, it'd be worth it to see Mike Baldwin's face <laughs> when we tell him. <laughs> hey, fantastic, kid. What did I say? I said my mate won't let you down. Uh, just one condition. Not a word to my birds about this, because if he gets dear of this, he'll divorce me on grounds of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it nice? Mavis has made it for Princess Di's baby. Oh, aye. <laughs> what team's he playing for? <laughs> well, I saw it more as a loyal gesture myself. Oh, you're right, yeah. Me, I thought of sending some nappies at Broadway by Union Jack. Well, at least I've bothered. Yes, you have, love, and there's a lot of work gone into that, and I'm sure they'll realise it. Oh, I suppose it'll just get lost along with all the other thousands of presents they'll get. Oh, not that, love. That'll stand out. No danger. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's it's just me knowing that I've done something for the royal baby, you know, my own little tribute. I mean, I know a lot of people think I'm silly. Rita does. Well, I don't, and neither will anybody else love you. You can say that from me. Phew, she's demented her. She's lonely, Elder, and you've got something she hasn't, so you might be a bit more understanding. What, Stan, you mean? Huh, she can have him and welcome if that's what she's missing. Hey, she could knit him a giant-sized red, white and blue egg cosy and keep him under it permanent. <laughs> He'd not mind as long as there was hole in it to suck his ale through. No, I don't mean Stan. I mean kids. Oh. Yeah, well, we all miss out on somewhat in this life. Do you know, if I was to give you a list of all the things I've missed out on, we'd be so dear till sound the last trump. Cheering everybody up as usual, Elder? Well, it's not my fault I've had a hard life. I never set out to have. I was always bright and cheerful as a child. Weren't we all, love? You've got your problems as well, I hear. So, what's new? What problems is then? They've knocked me digs down, Elder. Go on, have a good laugh. Had you no idea at all they were going to do it? Not a one. I walked round the corner into Victoria Street yesterday. You could have knocked me down with a feather. Alf didn't know either, did you, Alf? No. Oh, come on. Can't have been all that much of a surprise to you. Believe it or not, Hilda, unlike you, there are some things what don't reach my shell-like ears. Ooh. She deserves an Oscar, that one. Hilda? Hilda what? Now, you're not telling me Lizzie Mint never knew about it all along. Well, why would she pretend if she did? Well, use your loaf. Would he have let her move in upstairs if he'd known it was going to be permanent? Yeah, said John, who said out about permanent? Oh, I Found somewhere else already, then, has she? Come on. She only found out about the house yesterday. She said she only found out yesterday. I'm mean. sorry, Hilda. I just think you're rotten. I mean, why do you always have to think the worst about everybody? I don't. It's just that I happen to be a very good judge of human nature, that's all. Ah, well, to be fair, she didn't seem too bothered when she told me this morning, you know. Mind you, that's best, isn't it? You know, she always has to put an act on. Mm. Is it for two or three? Two. He'll go to the pub. He never said he was. Don't have to. He knows I'm making salad. <sighs> you know, that's just another example of how we're brighter than them, isn't it? I mean, we like lettuce and watercress and veg. And all they want is stuffing themselves with chips. That's why we stay young and beautiful and they pop off with heart attacks. Oh, don't say that. Why? Lynn's all right, isn't he? As fit as a fiddle. Yeah, I did funny do once, a few years back. Doctor said it went out to worry about. But it did worry me. Is that why you're playing it cool about those? Is what why? Well, funny do he had. Why are you sort of trying to manoeuvre him rather than just say, this is what I want and this is what's happening, mate, or else? 
No, I happen to think you win more battles with diplomacy than uh, hitting people over its head with hammer. Yes, but what if it ain't getting anywhere? It will, as long as you don't keep putting your two pennies in, like you did this morning. I was only trying to help. Yeah, well, there's such a thing as going too far. I still... Nagging is a subtle art. It takes years to learn. But you don't have to. I mean, if you want to move next door, then why can't he just say yes? Well, in all fairness, Len does have a point. Mainly to do with money. I mean, we would make more by selling next door and staying put, and that's a fact. But that's not so important to you, is it? No. No. I suppose that's another difference between them and us. They look at things dead practical. Mm. They call it logic. They reckon it's something we have none of. I know. But we're still better than them, though, aren't we, eh? <laughs> hey, funny colour you're painting that house. What sort of colour do you call it? White, Albert. And listen, I get enough aggro on the home front. I came in here for a quiet pie and a pint. More aggro I do not need. Oh, a little fairy sunbeam here will cheer you up, won't you, Hilda? Do you know, I don't know how you can stand there cracking jokes when you haven't got a roof over your head. Still, they always say, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Who hasn't got a roof over their head? Whoever buys your new house. <laughs> Me, Cork, they knocked it flat as a pancake. Yesterday a home, today a bomb site. Well, not that place in Victoria Street. You see, I'm not the only one it took by surprise. Well, you played your cards right there, I'll give you that. Hilda, I did not play no cards. I thought I was moving out for two weeks while they fixed my roof. Now, do you want that in blood, preferably yours? Well, it's not me you've got to convince, is it? It's Alf Roberts. Not that it's any of your business, Flossie, but Alf knows when I'm telling the truth. Oh, does he? Mm. It's not what he said in the shop this morning. No, he's beginning to think that you've led him up the garden path good and proper. According to him, you win a gold medal for putting on an act. Alf never said that. Go and ask him, then. Too right, I flame him, Will. <laughs> Right, what's wrong? What do you mean, what's wrong? Why, why should there be? You mean no one's died? Well, that's not a very nice thing to say. Well, I'm just trying to account for the unaccustomed and no very welcome hush. For a minute, I thought I'd walked into the wrong factory. That's just us working, Mr Baldwin, all happy and contented, like your own hive of busy little bees. Yeah, little bees, all right. Ooh. Right then, Emily, if you'd like to bring those... What the hell's that thing doing here? She is sleeping, Mr. Ball. I know it's sleeping. It's always flaming while sleeping. I thought I told you to get rid of it. Yes, but you didn't say when. Oh, didn't I? I'm sorry. I'll say when then. Now. Oh, it can't go now, Mr. Baldwin. I don't mean now. I'm not going to give you a chance to skive off for a couple of hours. I mean tonight when we are finished. Out. O-U-T. Out. But it can't go tonight either or tomorrow. Not unless we all go. Ivy. Do you know what she's talking about? Oh, they've made the cat a member of the union, Mr. Baldwin. You what? Emily, you're the same one. Now, I'm Mike Baldwin of Mike Baldwin's Casuals, am I not? I mean, uh, not flaming Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> You're all right asking her, Mr. Baldwin. It were her idea. Well, I only said it as a joke. And Ivy, I didn't just think... run it past me again, will you? Only this time, slowly. Well, what it is, Mr. Baldwin? Well, Baldwin, it's very it? simple, Mr. Baldwin. We have made Cleo a full member of the union. She's one of the girls now, you know. If she goes, we all go. One out, all out. Hey, you. I wish you'd stop interrupting. I'm quite capable of answering for myself, you know. And you've got all this trouble for a flaming cat. Well, here's a union form, if you don't believe me. It's all signed, proper and official. Proposed by V. Duckworth, seconded by Ida Clough. All right. That's fair enough. Right. Come on, Emily. We've wasted enough time. I'll have a look at those now. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, hang on, mate. Uh, does that mean, then, that Cleo can stay? Oh, Vera. If it means that much to you, who am I to stand in the way of such dedicated animal lovers? He go with one body, I tell you. Do you know, it'll just teach you to be sceptical. I still am, Vera, sceptical. Give it in a damn sight too easy, if you ask me. Oh, give it here. You've no idea how thirsty you get watching Len Fairclough work. Oh, I've been fancy one of them. Do you think I'd uh, drink it through here or should I take it through back? Oh, have it out here, Alf. You don't want to become a secret lolly eater. You never know where it'll end. <laughs> right. 
What's all this about me telling you a load of lies? You are. And in front of a shop full of customers as well, I wouldn't care. Betty didn't love. I've been here all day. Just a minute, just a minute. Uh, would you mind telling me exactly what you're going on about? Well, according to what I've heard, you think I've conned you rotten, you can't trust a word I say, and I'm always putting on an act. Hey, it's getting good, this. Haven't you got to go back to work? Oh, I'm not working. I'm just learning. Just a minute. Was it by any chance Hilda Ogden who passed these glad tidings on? You see, you did say it. Yeah, well, not in so many words, I did. Of course he didn't. What did he say, then? Oh, heck, I can't remember. If you want the truth, Betty, I didn't know what to think. I mean, it all seemed a bit funny. It's not funny to me, cock. It's flaming tragic. Boris, what's tragic? Is it a fella? Is he married? Is that what it is? Blimey, we've got an Ilder Ogden train here. Look, push off. OK. I expect I'll find out any home. No, it's ever a secret for longer owned here. Listen, I didn't say anything about telling lies. But you do put on a bit of an act, you know. I mean, no matter how upset you are, you don't make a habit of showing it. Well, what for? Gets you no sympathy. Yeah, right, but it leaves me wondering how much warning you'd had that place was coming down. None! I had flaming none! Bet, don't get worked up, love. You'll do yourself no good. Well, how do I convince him? Do you believe me? They leave me out of it. I'm only the umpire. All right, let me put it this way. Nobody likes being made a fool of, but I am prepared to give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, thanks a bundle, But cut. having said that, that place is only a quarter of a mile away when all's said and done. It does seem a bit strange you knew nothing about it. Well, if it's a quarter of a mile away from me, Alf, then it's a quarter of a mile away from you. And you, lady, for that matter. And did either of you two know anything about it? No, you flaming didn't. Good old Hilda. Looks as if she's done it again. Would a nice little surprise revive that mid-afternoon droop? Don't tell me. We want Queen's the Wall for export. We don't export, you great big nana. I know, that's quite a bit of a surprise. Oh. Hey, I'm on form today, aren't I? There's no like getting one over on the boss to get your fizz in. Well, it's nothing very stupendous, I'm afraid, but I'm sure it'll be welcome. I've just worked out the monthly sewing room bonus. Oh. And? Oh, get on with it. Hey, let her have a moment. I've had mine. Ninety pounds. Oh. Nine girls in here, so that means... Ten quid each. Oh, hey, I said over on four, didn't I? Um, I think there's something wrong with your arithmetic, Vera. Why? Listen, I might not have an, an academical uh, mind, but even I can divide nine into ninety. Ten into ninety. Well, there are ten of you union girls working here now. I mean, you told me this morning with your own sweet lips. Oh, of course come it's on. it's right. You're not going to get out to cap. You can't be serious. Well, you were serious about it joining the union. Now, how can I, as a fair-minded boss, exclude it from its rightful benefits? Nine quid each, Emily. Make a note of that. Hey, hang on a minute. Uh, so what happens to the other nine quid? Well, I thought that was obvious, Vera. It goes in the kitty. Oh. It wouldn't have been so bad if she'd been honest with me. I mean, if she'd just come and told me what was happening. You don't believe her, then, that she didn't know? Well, I don't know what to believe. I've had that many versions of up to here. Look, if Bet had come to you and said that they were knocking her house down, would you have let her come here? Oh, I don't know. I might have known short term until she found some way. She's not a bad sort of a lass, you know. Well, what's the difference? I mean, isn't that the situation now? <laughs> I suppose so. It's just the feeling that you can't trust her, is that it? I like people to be straight with me, dear. I don't like to feel I'm being manipulated. Well, nobody does, Alf. Anyway, better get back inside. Left the shop empty long enough as it is. I see. What's all this, then? What? Hold my case. I'm shifting myself out your road, Chuck. You know me, always ready to oblige. Do we have to have this song and dance? No, not really. I suppose you're right. Being homeless is fairly trivial. I suppose if it had been somewhat serious, like losing one of my earrings... Look, will you cut the cracks? Now, I know we've had words, but there's no need to go rushing off like this. I mean, have you got somewhere to stay for a start? Bush Shelter, Sally Army, Red Wreck. They always keep a welcome in the hillside for an international jet setter like me. All right, Alf. No cracks. I'm just going. Where to is my problem. Have you got somewhere fixed to stay? Incredible, as it may sound, Alf. I've still got a few friends. Friends who don't think I'm lying every time I open my gob. I didn't. It was just I didn't know what to... Be. It all seemed a bit... Well, unlikely, you know. Anyway... Happen you're doing the right thing. How do you mean? Well, you know, if you've got somewhere to stay, it's going to be best for everybody, isn't it? Why will it? Well, I mean, things have been said, haven't they? And, and then there's other snags, like sharing the bathroom, for one. 
And, uh... You mean it can't go on indefinitely? Well, of course it can't. <laughs> well, I've managed to look not too embarrassed every time I've seen your wife fronts when I've opened her in cupboard. Yeah, well, you want a bit of privacy then, don't you? Hey, listen, is it very far? I'll take you around in the cup. Hey, what have you got in here? Not a lot. Not a lot? Suppose I'd better go upstairs and put some in it now, eh? By <laughs> gum, madam. When they were handed cheek out, you were at the front of the queue. Look, Alf, I gambled and I lost. I suppose I reckon when it come to it, you won't really let me walk out. It shows you how wrong even a super brain like me can be, eh? Ah, it does, doesn't it? Go on. Get yourself upstairs. To pack or to stop? To stop. Only for the time being, though. Of course. Hey, get on. You won't regret it, Petal. You're a champ. I know, spell M-U-G. Hey, 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 just you tell me something. All that talk about having somewhere to stay, was that like the suitcase, full of air? Isn't that what you love about me most, Alfie? The way I always manage to keep you guessing? Right, I'm off to Stephanie's. She's dead brave, that girl. Why is that? Well, she's letting me perm her own. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the child out at road, you two can have a nice, cosy evening in together, can't you? And talk. You know, about things what you have to discuss, like. What things? Oh, I don't know. You must have some things. Husbands and wives do, don't they? I'm going, I'm going. See ya. She's a live wire, that one. Yeah. Do you know, it's funny, sometimes I can hardly remember what it was like before she came here. Rita, sit down. I know what you've been getting at over tea and what the kid's been on about. I'm not daft, you know. Look, I've told you my reasons, haven't I? I don't think it'd make the slightest difference about you, whether you lived in this house or the one next door, but it would make one hell of a difference to our bank balance. Well, this way we can have the best of both worlds. A new house and stay put. I mean, it's the obvious answer, isn't it, then? You wouldn't really want to move next door, would you? Yeah, if it were the only way I could get a new house. I'm trying to think long term. You're talking about years ahead. Not that long. Your old man's no spring chicken, you know. Anyway, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll keep that ad in the paper. We'll flog next door, put the loot in a building society. That'll be a nice little nest egg for us, won't it? That's what we'll do, is it? It's the best plan. Hey, I tell you what, you've been saying how fed up you are with that uh, colour scheme in the bedroom. I finished over there, so why don't I redo it, eh? And get Sharon to help me. Have a look round some wallpaper shops. See what you fancy. Think about it. I don't know how you've got the nerve. He's the one that's got the nerve, copping for our flame in nine quid. Well, sir, you're right. <laughs> Never had out so daft in my life. Making a muggy a member of a trade union. Well, I don't know about that, Albert. Give it six months, it'll be the shop steward, that cat. He got the best of the bunch there, you know. Oh. Hey, good on you, mate. I'm just saying he got the best of the bunch there. No, he didn't. Cleo, stop in, isn't she? Oh, it'll cost you, though, won't it? I mean, nine quid bonus for the muggy. I like it. Don't like make a it. meal of it. I want peas, <laughs> not more. Now, <laughs> what are you ladies having? Oh, that's pretty kind. Have you missed a hold of it? Is it Eckers kind? Yeah. It's paying for it out of our money. Oh. Don't you want to drink them, Vera? Ah, go on then. I'm not one to hold a grudge. I'll send it all to a free drink. Right, I'll have a large scotch, Fred. Uh, I'll have a large scotch. You've no call to go giving me the cold shoulder out, Fred. I only spoke the truth as I saw it. The truth? You're a stranger to it, Hilda. So do us both a favour, Hilda, and let it drop. We've managed to sort it out, despite your unflagging assistance. Oh, you've shifted her then? No, we have not shifted, me, Hilda. I am stopping on. Me and Mr. Roberts is very good friends, and you can quote me on that. Oh, you've got yourself a permanent house guest then, Squire, eh? It's a business arrangement. Well, I think it's very touching. All these kind-hearted people taking in waifs and strays. Rather like my girls and that moth-eating old moggy. No, I salute you. Here's to the landlord and lodger. And may the best man win. <laughs> Morning, Hilda. Morning. Hey, just come outside and have a look at this. I thought you were the rovers cleaning. 
I was just about to, Stanley, till I got outside and saw the state of our front. What's up, Bill? There's somebody been spraying paint or something. It'd be an improvement if they had. Do you know, it looks like paint's gone out of fashion in this street. Once you get past that new house of Fairclough's, that shows us all up. Fairclough's? Only because it's new. I mean, some people prefer the weathered look. Gives an house character. Character? Listen, there's paint coming off them sills like they've got dandruff, never mind character. Only needs a strong wind, we'll be down to the bare wood. Scandinavian, now. Scandinavian, me foot. Now, come on outside the fair of you. I'll show you what I'm on about. <sighs> this applies to you and all, you know. It's your house. Ah, it's all right with Fairclough. He can bung a new house up. I remember what effect it has. Come on. All right, I'm coming. Just look at the state of it. Yeah, I've got to admit, Hilda, it could do with a spot of gloss here and there. Thank you. Stanley? I go on. Oh, well. No, if you want the house painting, you get it painted. I'm not stopping you. I trust that was just your little joke, Stan Ogden. No, no. If you want the house painting, you paint it. Oh, yeah. I haven't got enough to fill me time with, have I? Just what I need is that shinning up and down a ladder with a pot of paint in my hand. Oh, no, no. You're going to paint it, Stanley. And what's more, you're going to paint it today, else I'll know the reason why. What about him? He's on holiday. Eddie is a paying guest. Yeah, actually, I was going to put a complaint in about the state of the paintwork. Ha, ha. <laughs> now, look, I've got to get off. But think on. I want this house a different colour by the time I get back. All right. And really point it to while I'm at it. No, it's just a temporary arrangement until she finds somewhere, you know. And that's Bet's view of things as well, is it? It's a better be. Hey, up, I think I can hear her. Are you decent? Yes. Great. Oh. Would you have such a thing as a bottle of milk, sir, please? I'll get you one. Do you know, I've forgotten how handy it was looking over a shop. You don't have to go out, you know. We could be old up here for weeks and still live like kings, don't we? Here, Sibber. Pay me later. Here, I'll have to have what I've got on under here once even all my small change. Hey, then balm cakes look good. So you could sneak me one while he's not looking. Oh, he's always looking, love. He's got eyes in the back of his head. Well, you do surprise me. Has he got any other physical peculiarities that you know of? Well, no. Oh, Bet, do you think you better, uh... Oh, don't tell me I'm against the Food and Drugs Act. Not fit to be seen behind the food counter. OK. But do you think I could have a balm cake to take with me, please? Yeah. There you are, love. Cheers, kid. You're very kind, sir, Your Highness. May heaven bless you and may your early closing be ever earlier. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what was it you wanted, love? Hey, she's coming, she's coming. Give over. Well, don't tell me you don't fancy her. Smithy, I don't even know her. What's that got to do with it? Uh, do I take you to the certain party didn't ring last night when he said he was going to? He rang. Seven o'clock on the dot. Oh, well, it's not that then. Only forgive me for sticking my nose in, but you don't seem your usual happy self. I mean, I thought you were going to lay one on that chap just now when he asked you where his toes were. Alma, I'm not paid to be happy, am I? To wash up, to serve on, but not to be happy. Well, very few of us are, love. Unless, of course, we're Ken Dodd. Right, your turn, me old son. I know. Ah, right. Two main sarnies and two teas. Yes, love. Five, just a pound, then. Uh, not against you personally, love. But I think my mate would rather deal with your mate. Shut up, will ya? Here, love, take the notice. Uh, what, Gail? Oh, Gail, is it? Come on. Uh, Gail, love. What? Can I introduce my mate here? I'll see you in the wagon, right? Les is called. That's him, just gone out of that door. He seems frightened to death. Not only seems. No, you'd like him, Gail, you would, honest. Would I? He's kind to animals, loves his mum, very clean in his habits. Smith, eh? Hey, come here. Are we going or what? Come here. What? Now that is Gail. Say hello to Gail. Hello, Gail. Hello. Now, can we go if we're going? Terrific conversationalist as well, you know, once he gets going. <laughs> hello, Hilda. Paint shop's gone on strike then, have they? Not that I know of. Then why aren't you out there with a brush in your hand making this place look somewhat like? Because this house is mine as much as yours. And I haven't made my mind up yet whether it wants to do it, have I? 
Oh, have you not? Uh, what he means, Hilda, is that uh, well, you haven't decided on what colour or anything yet. I haven't decided whether I think it wants doing. There's worse round here, you know, I've seen them. I know there's worse round here, Stanley. What bothers me is there's better round here and all. There's better than this in this very street. Exactly. Yeah, and one or two others as well. Have you any idea how much paint costs, have you? Oh, yeah. There now. And if that's not enough, we'll just have to save up till we've got what's needed. Come on, Stanley, do your stuff. Where'd you get that all of a sudden? Never you mind. Now, that money is to make our house look decent. They don't bother round here. They don't bother whether the house is painted or whitewashed. I bother. Look, here. Uh, I'll give you a hand, will you, between us? Oh, thank you, Eddie. You're a fine mate, aren't you? Listen, if I'm prepared to give up my holidays, you can give up your so-called working days, can yeah. you? Come on, stay yourself. Can't you find something to do? Don't you worry, Hilda. A couple of days, you won't recognise this place. Well, I'm not expecting miracles. Good job. Hey, and listen, but I've got an idea how it'll cost us nothing. That way, Hilda will be double chuffed when she gets her money back. Oh, but we'd better hang on to it for now, haven't we? Hey, get something nice and bright now, Eddie. Will you, Mrs O? Uh -huh. Are you going anywhere for your holidays, you, this year? <laughs> no. Why, fancy coming with me, dear? <laughs> Not so you'd notice, love, no. Huh? Half a bit, at least. Oh, are you, uh, are you going anywhere, you? Might get as far as chemist, buy a bottle of that instant suntan stuff. Uh, 26 cops. Thank you. I wonder if you could help me. I'm looking for somebody who I think might work here. Well, there's only me and him and a couple of others, so you don't have a right lot to choose from. Well, it was Mrs... Um, well, I mean, what was her married name? Anyway, Elizabeth Preston, not what? Well, we've only got a Betty. Hey, what Betty called Preston? Well, how the hell should I know? Betty Turpin? Turpin? Yeah? Yeah. Is she working here today, or...? No, she's not on this dinner, pal. Not unless she's in the sink having a bath. <laughs> Mrs Walker? Yes, sir. There's a gentleman here looking for Betty. Really? That's old friend, you might say. Oh, well, she's at the dentist, as much as that. But she might be in later. I told her to see how she felt. Well, later this dinner time. Mm. Oh, well, I'll slip back before you close. See if I can catch her then. Cheers. Cheers, love. Did he give a name? No. He weren't too sure about hers, either. Really? Yes. Egg and chips twice, one apple pie. I'm still waiting for them sausages. Yeah, well, I'm still waiting for them and all. Oh, still keeping busy, I see. Yep. Yeah. Is Nicky all right? Fine. Right, there's your sausages. I suppose you've heard about your son's latest plans, have you? What, Brian? Yes, Brian. What's that all about, do you know? What, me, love? No, no, I haven't a clue. Gail? They've asked him if he wants to spend another couple of months out there. So, he thinks he might as well. I mean, I won't mind, will I? I've spent six months on my own. I can manage another two. Well, what's Ron Sykes doing, did he say? No, Ivy, and I didn't ask. I'm not bothered about what Ron Sykes is doing. I'm only worried about your precious son who'd obviously spend the rest of his time out there than come back to his wife and child. Egg and chips. Well, it must be for money, Gail. Come on, if it's too good to turn down. I don't care about the money. I don't care how much it is. I don't think that's the reason anyway. Well, what then? It's obvious, isn't it? He likes it out there. He doesn't want to come back. I mean, why should he? Ah, uh, the meat and potato pie's off. If you were thinking of it. Two pints for two grand lads. My nice out. There you are, love. Ta. Stanley, the idea was to give Hilda their money back. Ah, when we're done, there's no rush though now, is there? I mean, not now we've got this cap full of paint for an out. Pretty good job, that, you know. Yeah, well, most days. I mean, we must pick up a dozen or so half full cans. Mitch, him down at the tip, put it on one side for any of the lads that want it, you know. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you know where to look, you can find most things down that tip. Oh, aye. Right. Scavenging again, are you? Oh, you're here, are you? What is it? Perk of the job. See how much rubbish you can carry. This isn't rubbish. Lee said, Stanley. Uh, between you and the rats, is it? <laughs> See who can kick the most on. Uh, <laughs> well, have you had them all out, love? Go on, here's the gummy green. They don't look a lot different to me. Well, I only have one little fill in. Oh, do you know, he's that gentle. He treats you like you're a little kid, you know, scared to death. Which you were. I was, yes. Betty, what? there's a fella in early doors looking for you. Who? Oh. I don't know, just a fella. 
Who was it? Well, it was a fellow with a very long memory. He started off by asking for a Miss Elizabeth Preston. Blimey, that pulled back a bit, didn't he? Okay. Well, we said we can't do you one of them. How about a Betty Turpin instead? Go on, then, he said, if that's all you've got. <laughs> Elizabeth, oh, you have had a visitor during your absence. I've told her. Oh. Well, I don't know who it can be. Did Bert tell you he's coming back? Well, no. No, I didn't want to spoil it all for you, Mrs. Walker. He distinctly said, dear, he'd be calling back later to see if you had returned. Oh, might wish you hadn't when you find out who he is, eh? I might, mightn't I? Let's see what we got then, eh? Uh, magnolia, yellow, burnt sienna, eh? Hey. Sort of brown, Stanley. Oh. Uh, Grey undercoat and a sort of blue. It's the only trouble we get them off the tip. No two cans are the same. Well, why not mix them all together? It'll be all right. Yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll put uh, some of this uh, yucky blue with the burnt sienna, eh? Hey? All right. You know, you need the eye of an artist for this. That uh, Vincent van Gogh would have been nice. Right. There we are. <clears throat> right then, Gogan, my old mate. Give that a stir and uh, see what we get. Oh, yeah. Subtle shade of uh, black. It won't show them up, though, will it? Yeah, uh, let's see if this magnolia will lighten it a bit. Because... Right. Uh, she did say that she wanted it nice and bright, and I don't think what we've got there is exactly what she had no. in mind. Right, go on, try that. Now, quick, who is it? Is that him? Yeah. Hello again. Hello. Elizabeth Preston that was. Was it me you were looking for? It was, and it's lovely to see you again. Uh, you don't recognise me, do you? Well, no, no. The last time we met was on Piccadilly Station in Manchester. London Road, it was then. It was 1947 and you were waving me off. I said I'd be back on the Monday morning, only I'm afraid I'm about 35 years too late. Ted. That's it. Ted Farrell? Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, are you OK? Well, I've, I've had a bit of a shock, love. Well, I'm sure it must hey, be a bit of a shock. Fingers of brandy. Oh, oh, I'll be all right, love. Oh, I say, I hope I haven't upset you. No, it's just you and the dentist in the same day, love. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't need You should do. Get it down your neck. Well, I can see. I must be a bit of a surprise. Oh, Ted Farrell. I never thought I'd see you again. Hi. How did you get on? Oh, it's all right, well. It's just getting on and off. Bus is all right, couple full, isn't it? This is Alma. Oh, hello, hello. This is Jill, who's looking after Nicky while Jackie's mum's Oh, home. yeah. Oh, and who's looking more like his daddy every day, then? Although I probably shouldn't say that right now, should I, Mummy? No. <laughs> and who wants an orange juice, then? <gasps> Do you want an orange juice? Nice. Do you? Do you want an orange juice? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, be nice, yeah. Oh, yes. You take your break while you've got the chance. OK. It'll be a break for me and all not having to listen to her going on. I'm not being that bad. Oh. Why, well, what's up? Oh, Brian rang last night. You know, me husband. Uh, He's thinking of spending a couple of months longer out in the Middle East than we thought he would. Oh, no wonder you chased off. Mm, reckons he's been made an offer he can't refuse. I suppose, though, when they're on their own like that. I mean, you never know what they're getting up to, do you? No, I suppose you don't. The only consolation is, will it be mine anyhow? What? Well, they don't know what you're getting up to here, do they? I mean, two can play at them games. Yeah, I suppose they can. Help yourself to sugar. Thank you. There you are. That lady you introduced me to, that was the landlady, was it? Oh, yes, Mrs. Walker. She's very nice. She's been a, a very good friend to me. Look, but what I want to know is, well, there's all sorts I want to know. 
I'm sure. How did you know where I was working? Oh, well, I was up here at my sister's, about a month or two ago. And there you were, in the newspaper. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a victim of an attack. I didn't know what sort of state I'd find you in, to tell you the truth. No lasting damage, I'm glad to say, of it. Whew, it takes some forgetting. I'm sure. <laughs> Not exactly the kind of world we were looking forward to in 1947, is it? No. When you think how we were then, the war behind us, everything to live for. By the way, there wasn't any one single reason why I didn't come back from Portsmouth that Monday. Oh, no. Well, I had every intention of doing so, as a matter of fact, but then an uncle of mine had died and... It was an offer of a job, so I just... Well, somehow got involved with things. I hope you didn't wait for too long. Oh, no. No, it's all so long ago that it could have happened to somebody else. I married a Portsmouth girl, actually. About a year later, it'd have been. Now, well, that's her there. I see. And that's our daughter. Mind you, she's married with daughters of her own now. Well... That's my husband there, Cyril. He, uh, well, he died about eight years ago, but we had a very happy life together. Oh, I'm very glad to hear it. Mm. Well, did you have any children? A son. Ah. I've always said I'd like to have a son. Or a grandson come to that. But we seem to be a family of females. Mm. Ah, it's funny how things turn out. Oh, hello, Wilder. Well, what, what colour is that when it's at home, then? Uh, this colour is, um, well, this particular shade is called uh, Jamaican Sunset. Oh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? Well, it's sunset, isn't it? It gets dark. No, oh, what you'd have thought? Well, Jamaican. Yeah, well, the, uh, the fellow that sold it to us said that, uh, well, this particular shade dries brighter. Isn't that right, Stan? Oh, all right, yeah. Oh. Well, it's an improvement, I suppose. Well, out of being improvement. <laughs> hey, uh, how about a cup of tea? I mean, this paint to get tired of his throat, you know. Yeah, well, I suppose it's not beyond the reams of possibility. Hey, mind that paint, Hilda? Yeah. So you know I could get to like this paint, couldn't you? Hey? You might as well get off, love. I shall have to stop on anyway. And the way Doris's nerves are, we won't be seeing her again all week. Thanks. Getting that earlier bus makes all the difference. Oh, and uh, by the way, cheer up, eh, love? I mean, I don't want to sit there tonight thinking of you sticking pins in that little wax doll of your Brian. Serve him right if I did. Of course it would. But if men got what they deserve, there wouldn't be one of them left standing. No, now what you need is something to take your mind off him. Now my idea would be half a bottle of gin. I'll take these over before I go. Oh, thank you, love. Save me bunions. Look, got a coat on already and eager. Eager to get home? Oh, everybody is, love. And once they're there, do you know the first thing they want to do? What? Get straight out again. Not tonight. Straight to bed, more like. Oh, hear that. Will you be in here tomorrow? Oh, permanent fixture. Would you like to come out for a drink? With me, at dinner time? Hey. Well, dinner time, we're rushed off his feet in here. Oh, I, uh, sorry, I forgot. I do yeah. get an hour off about two, though. Oh, well. See how I'm fixed, then. Right. Uh, I was only joking about him being a millionaire, you know. Ta-ta. ta ta Ta-ta, love. ta love. And what's got into you? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we haven't seen him for a night or two. <laughs> no, it's this rotation they've got at work, you know, it's Cumbert's turn for nights. How much are them, Betty? Uh, 90, 10 p on the bottle as well. I mean, he's up and about now, you know, but like he says, I mean, it's like morning to him. I mean, what's he want coming in a pub for? Well, you can imagine, can't you? <laughs> How long's he on nights for? <laughs> Three months. He'll be a right night time when he's finished, won't he? Will. <laughs> See you, well, love. Ta ta, Doc. You're being very coy tonight, Miss Preston. Ah, go on, tell us about Ted then. You've hardly said a word. I mean, was he the great love of your life or one of a dozen great lovers or what? Oh, look, it's all a long time ago now, love it. I have to pretend that I remembered more than I did to tell you the truth. Blimey, you mean there were that many you could hardly tell them apart? 
Are you saying to them or should I? Suit yourself. I will if you like. Uh, two pints of your very best bitter, Princess. It's all best, love. What happens to the worst, I have no idea. Goes down a flying horse, doesn't it? Your shout, I got him dead, time. I could argue that Hilda got him at dinner this time, even though she knew nothing about it. Ah, well, we're, we're married. I mean, what's hers is mine, isn't it? Ah, if she's not careful. All right. All right. Oh, I do. And that was good timing, what are you having? Oh, it's very kind of you, it's Ah, I'll uh, find a bit of it. And a pint of bit of it, a counsellor. Anything for Al. Do you know this is the most generous, considerate and kind man in the whole world? I thought it was Al Robert. I'm telling you, I wouldn't live with anybody else. Not for a mink coat or a bucket full of diamonds. Uh, just tell them what you mean now. What's that, old master? As a lodger, of course. You're all right, Alf. You seem to be safe with us, mate. Do you know, he's scared stiff in case I leave. Don't you worry, Chuck. I'm going to be there for a long time yet. You know, dear, I thought you weren't looking 100%. What about visit to the dentist? Can I tell you something, Mrs. Oh, well, I should hope so. Yes, of course. Look, you know that man that was in this dinner time? Mr. Farrell? Yes. Oh, dear, did it upset you meeting him again? Well, the trouble is, you see, he's not mm. just... Well, he's not just... Somebody that I knew, he was, he was Gordon's father. Well, I mean, you knew, didn't you, that I had Gordon long before I married Cyril. And then our Maggie looked after him all that time. And he was the father? Yeah. Well, does he know? He hasn't any idea. No idea at all. He says he's going to pop in here tomorrow to, on his way back home. And you're wondering whether... To... Well, should I tell him or no? Or should I let him go no wiser than he was, say, you know, 35 years ago? Undercoat, isn't it? Undercoat? Don't we have undercoat with cheap stuff? I mean, what we in the trade call Weatherfield Wallop. What we got here isn't wallop, you know. This is best quality satin silk gloss. You put undercoat with this, it's like, uh, well, it's like wearing a plastic mac under the mink coat. Oh, you'd tell me anything, you would, Abby Yates. Take a little trick, all this says. You gave us a good rubbing down, did you? Give you a rub down. Well, rubbing down's one of the secrets, you know. Do you think we haven't put paint on before? Yeah, well, the way you're shaping, we'll not be able to see out of them windows. You're overloading the brush, Dan. Yeah, you're getting little runs, see, leaving brush marks. You tell them, Hilda, love. Get the whip out. Listen, Seged, have you ever been christened? Hey, listen, if a drop of that gets on me yet, I'll have you off that perch. If it don't work with the right thump, no danger. On your bike, clogged. Yeah, you couldn't paint your flipping toenails, you couldn't. He hasn't seen his toenails for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I could knock spots off that lot. They don't know the difference between chip fat and paint, they don't. I've never seen a shade like it. Well, of course you haven't, because it's contemporary, isn't it? It's the latest thing, that. The in colour. Concept. It looks like brown sauce. Don't let him upset you, Hilda. You do his front room out with whitewash. Yeah. I wouldn't paint our cludgy with that. Well, that's the sort of stuff they use on bin wagons, that. You know, it does have that extra deep gloss, doesn't it? Well, I always say, you get what you pay for. <laughs> have you seen that performance out there? Can you miss it? They didn't get that muck out of a shop, I do know. Hilda Rengs, it cost him a tenner. A tenner? It's toxic, is that? One sniff of that up your left nostril, you'll end up on a slab, you will. <laughs> Cloth, was it? Back's bad enough. Oh, sciatica. Huh? Sciatica, your back. Not my back, Ogden's back. The back of the house, the house that they're painting with the paint that I'm calling to... Oh, give us this. Hey, uh, people around here are a bit slow on the uptake, aren't they? Oh, What's wrong with him? Painter's colic. Oh, give all the toxic painter's oh, colic. It's no joke, you know what paint can do. Gets in your pores, gives you this terrible thirst. I had an uncle once who suffered from it. He had a nose like a traffic light with a bad case of corrosion. Paint on his sinus. Paint on his sinus, which gave him this terrible thirst. Nothing on his whiskey would stop it. When he couldn't get whiskey, he drunk thinners. Do you mean terps? Oof, well, honestly, you lit a match near me uncle. You know what he was, what they call burning off? He never used a blow lamp. He just used to breathe and there it was, blisters. <clears throat> if you could have that ready for me. I'll... Hey, big job on there. The <laughs> Taj Mahal won't be in it. <laughs> I just passed your girl down Rosamond Street. Oh, you're going back to work, I expect. Oh. Oh, I bet she's glad to have work to go to. Mm. What makes you that? Well, I just heard the O'Brien's got to stay on in Qatar for another two months. How does that make her glad to have work? 
Well, it'd just take her mind off things, you know. There's no to take her mind off if she looks at it sensibly, which she is doing. She knows the longer you stays out there, the more brass they'll have in bank. Come on, she'd be daft, wouldn't she? Not see advantage of that. Well, of course she would. Nice to have a bit of brass tucked away. Yeah, mm. it's not everything, though, is it? They want financial security. Now, what's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. Honestly, Ivy, I'm sorry I spoke. Look, I know that you had a husband that went to work abroad. All right, the cat jumped one way for you. Doesn't mean to say it's going to do the same for our Brian and Gail, does it? Did I ask for that? Should I go out tonight and duff her up? She meant nothing by it, love. <laughs> hey, you're out early doors, aren't you? Yes, me day off. I'm doing a bit of shopping. I've got somebody coming for a bit of lunch. Well, I've got some very nice fancies. Oh. I'm only painting the clouds with sunshine. You know it, You can hear you screeching yeah. down that cellar. Oh, thanks for the information. I thought it's either somebody <laughs> strangling the cat or illness taking her tonsils for a walk. <laughs> oh, uh, the stock check's OK, Mrs Walker. The brown nails are all right. The milk stouts were, but since I've heard of the singing, they've, uh, they've turned sour. <laughs> well, I don't know about a stock check, but my nose tells me that you've had a stock sample into the bargain. <laughs> no wonder he fell down the stairs. I'm surprised he doesn't fall up them. <laughs> well, I mean, if you went down that cellar, Mrs. Walker, you'd, you'd smell a veil. Uh... Oh, the door. I'm coming. I'll get it. Hang about. Oh, I thought it was your day off. Oh, I was passing, so I thought I'd just pop in. Oh. Good morning, Elizabeth, dear. Now, you wouldn't say no to a nice cup of tea, would you? Oh, well, I didn't think you might have one on. <laughs> the kettle's actually on. Ah. So, if Mrs Ogden would kindly do the honours. Oh, yes, certainly. Come on. <laughs> and the bread, perhaps you'd sort out the yard, would you? What about my bagging, Mrs Walker? Mrs Ogden will see to your bagging. Did you see Mr Farrell? Well, no, I've not seen him yet, but he's going back on that late train, so I've asked him to come round to our house and I'll give him a bit of lunch. Oh, dear, do you think that's wise? Well, I don't want to be standing on the platform station with nothing said. I mean, I suppose his sister will be there to see him off. Stay with the sister, is he? Well, yeah, I mean, that's how he found out that I was still alive, isn't it, when he saw me mugging, saw the pictures. Mm. Still, you know, dear, being alone with him, your old sweetheart, who went off to the wars with all those memories, don't you think you're putting yourself in rather a delicate position? Well, I'm not still in love with him, Mrs. Yes, Walker. but he may still be. Look, if Ted Farrell is in love with anything, it's his wife, his two kids and that little house down in Portsmouth. He's probably kept a few letters, you know, a few wishful memories. Mm. I see what you mean, dear. To him, it was all idyllic, yeah. and you don't want to shatter it. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure at all, Mrs. Walker. Perhaps he won't come. I mean, he's supposed to meet me here about 12 o'clock, you know, for a little drink first. <sighs> Might be kept waiting, you know, like I was waiting 35 years ago. Uh, I was just out the back, Mrs Walker, taking Freddy's morning refreshments. And uh, not that he hasn't sucked his share down that <laughs> cellar. <laughs> and I just happened to notice the state of your paintwork. Time for it to be done, I suppose, in your expert opinion. Oh. In the delightfully modish colour you yourself have chosen. Well, if you wanted a match, and we have any left over. <laughs> no, thank you, Ella. I need more paint. Eddie, I want out of paint. I'm just trying to scrape some together. How much do you want? I've got half a dollar yet. Yeah. Oh, there would have been plenty of them sloshed it all over the pavement. Well, it dripped, didn't it? Why didn't you get non drip? Trick off the tip. You want jam on it, you do. It sticks like hell, this stuff. Paint does, Stanley. It's one of its drawbacks. Otherwise, it wouldn't stick to the flaming wood. I saw an advert for non stick paint on telly. That was frying pans, you clown. Oh, but I don't want frying pans, do I? You might as well have non stick fly catchers. Look, there's half a can here. Oh, down to the dregs, we won't have enough. Stanley, will you stop worrying? It's all estimated. That door drinks it. Look, all right, we've cut it fine. There's been uh, sloppy workmanship. There's been unforeseen wastage. Flaming cats. There's also been unscheduled use of materials, like the practical joker that painted the kludgy seat. Cost me a fortune in tapes and pan scrubbers. You started that by painting the train handle. I'd have gone through life for the bar and now it's assistant, wouldn't I? Look, Stanley, all that was allowed the area to be covered, plus the extra for wastage, plus the extra for the brush hands being half slewed. Plus extra my foot. Look, Stanley, knowing I was mixing a paint entirely new to mankind, am I thick enough not to leave a sufficiency? There is enough there to finish the job. But there won't be if you stand gobbing while it gets a skin on it. Uh, 
Hey, it looks a fair treat as you come up the back. Just one thing I noticed, though. That cludgy, the back of the door. I've done the back of the door. Ah, you've skimped on it, Stanley. Now, I knew a fella in the trade once, and he always reckoned a cludgy door needed three coats. Because, you see, they sit there inspecting. <clears throat> yeah, that ought to do it. Hey, we need that. I want that for the front door. Well, you can get some more, can't you? You know, where the shops are. Well, she said, oh, not a dicky bird. He's waiting for you. Don't think she's bothered. Yeah. Well, anyway, we haven't got all week. We should be halfway up the M62 by now, you know. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Listen, about that arrangement we made, uh, you know, going out for a drink. Well, uh, another day, perhaps. Could be this dinner time. We're only going to Leeds. She'll be back by half two at the latest. I you to take me dinner hour earlier. Couldn't you take it later? Well, yeah, I could, but... No, I don't know. You did say, I, I mean, has out happened since... Oh, no. Nothing's altered, nothing's changed. A few more bob in the bank. <clears throat> so shall I see you? Hey, I can't put this on the sheet, you know. Caught in time. Some more eggs, yeah. Neck, it's only a drink, isn't it? Okay, two thirty. Right. <clears throat> Gail, there's eggs there somewhere. <laughs> morning when I was in town. I nearly rang and said, look, it's best if we don't meet again. I had me 10p, but this woman, she was rattling on. I can imagine. Look, dear, if you would like to go, and he does come in, I could have a quiet word with him, if you like, if you think that would solve it. Mm. Well, some folks <coughs> might think that he had the right to know, you know, whatever my feelings. I see Betty's here in a glad rags waiting for her old flame. You're a right old woman, you, aren't you? Oh, give over. You've been here wigging, trying to suss it out. Give over. Excuse me. <laughs> Betty, I wonder if you'd give Elizabeth a small pour, would you? Pleasure. And uh, Fred. Yes, Mr. If Walker. Elizabeth leaves <laughs> and a gentleman called Mr. Farrell happens to appear, oh. could you buzz me twice and then show him into the living room? <sighs> On the house cock. Oh, darling. Eee, all dolled up. On your day off, looking a million dollars. Feel more like one and nine off the market. What do you mean? Do you know, I can't understand you. Fellas from years back, tracking you down, taking all this trouble. It can't be bad. All right, he's married. But if there's still a bit of the old magic. Mm, a bit too much of the old magic, lovely. It's as if it was yesterday. But you've got to see him, Betty. I mean, you can't just walk off and let a nibs give him the gate. Oh, I'm frightened to see him after I've thought about it. Oh, well, if it goes that deep. It does go that deep. I had his son. That's how deep it goes. Crimes, Betty. I didn't realise. No, you didn't realise either. No idea what I went through when I had our Gordon. Oh, the stigma it was in those days. Lies I had to tell love with. My Cyril never knew, you know. He went to his grave never knowing that I had a son. He always thought that my Gordon was our Maggie's son. And now Ted comes back with no idea either. As though, you know, what happened between us never went any farther than... than moonlight or roses. What do you think, lovey? Do you reckon I should tell him? I can't answer that, God. Oh. Listen, Betty, love, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, it's all right, love. You having a drink? Well, <clears throat> just one, and then we'll go, eh? Oh, have you got nothing else to do but sit there giving that page three a good coat of looking at? Oh, good, I think my love take a paint, haven't you? Yeah, well, that cludgy door looks a treat now. And, hey, I don't want you sat in there playing noughts and crosses. I only hope the shop's open. I hope we get the same shade. Well, there's other shops, as I hope Eddie's got the good sense to realise. Now, listen, there's an old soul down Nelson Street wants their bed turning. I'm not turning beds. Oh, I'm not asking you. I'm just telling you I'm going. And when I get back, I want to see that front door done, right? Mr. 
coast clear, Stanley. No chance of a sudden return if they get out. I think we've struck lucky, mate. I think I might just have the mixing. There was a decorating firm. Sent their van down the tip. There was loads of gas here. Here, look. Well, I'll tell you, it's gas. Don't skin. It's only skin on top, Stan. Look, let me demonstrate. Now, watch closely the art of the scavenger. Extra that right, me, mate. First, you turn the tin over like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Then you get the tin opener, right? Open the bottom, right? Then, with the spoon, you scrape out the contents with this implement here, right? Fourthly, you mix together as before, and Viola, another pot of Jamaican sunset. Yeah. Had a very strict father, you see. He was an inspector on the trams. Devout Methodist. Both him and my man were God-fearing people. I never actually met them, did I? I made sure you didn't. You weren't a suited at all. Yeah, bit of a fly-by-night, I suppose. That's how I'd have seemed to them. Well, you weren't the sort to come caught in, you know, in your best suit. Not the sort to sit in the parlour and discuss your future prospects. I suppose I rather guess they'd be glad to see the back of me. Jumped up engineer, fancying his chance with his pips up. So, you have a son. Yeah, sir. I can see the resemblance to you. But not to Cyril. Well, no. Well, it's not surprising, really. Cyril wasn't his father. You mean you've been married twice? No, 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 just once. Oh. A love child, you might say. My Gordon. Before you were married? Oh, yes. Oh, long time before. Well, that must have been pretty grim with your parents being so straight-laced and everything. Well, they felt the shame of it, but once they got over that, the, the family closed ranks, as family did in those days. Well, that must have been a bit of a struggle, bringing him up with no wage earner. Oh, I didn't bring him up. My sister brought him up. Ah, oh, Maggie, you see, she couldn't have any kids, so she brought him up as one of her own. And then her husband died, and she married again and, and went abroad. Well, one way or another, that's when it all came out. And this man you took up with but never married, Gordon's father, was it through me? Or was it because we lost touch? Lost touch? You disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah, well, well, I wasn't much for writing, I suppose. And I wasn't settled. I knew you weren't settled. Uh, the truth were known. We were both a bit on the flighty side, weren't we? Times were flighty in some ways. Exactly. Well, it's just hard for you that you fell for a rotter. <laughs> I was as daft as a brush in them days. Well, to be honest with you, when you said they weren't father and son, for one awful moment, I thought it might have been me. Could have been, couldn't it? Well, thank God it wasn't. I couldn't live with that. I'm sure the family couldn't live with it either. I, uh, I do lay down the law a bit, you know, with regard to morals and such like. You might have suited my dad after all. Well, you know, I've always seen what happened between us as... Well... I'm searching for the right word. Innocent. Innocent, that's it, yes. I mean, what were we, really? Sweethearts. Sweethearts, yes, that's what we were. Oh, I never miss seeing me mum in the week. And I was saying to her, you see, that I was minding for you, like she said, oh, bring him down. Well, if it's not too far. It's on the way to your in-laws. Are you sure your mum doesn't mind? Oh, don't you worry. You'll get spoiled to death at me, mum. She dotes on kids, does <laughs> me, mum. Oh, she must be daft, mother, she? <laughs> and don't forget what I said about taking him to see his granddad. Number five, Coronation Street. That's third on the left at the Rovers, isn't it? That's right, yeah. And don't linger outside the factory, cos that's where my mother-in-law works. And if she sees you, she'll be out <laughs> wanting to know all the ups and downs. Well, if you like, mm. I could leave him. Leave him? Yeah, I could leave him here with hey, you. Hey, we've got a cafe to run, you know. 
Oh, I didn't mean this afternoon. I just spent it for <laughs> dinner hour or something. Well, as it happens, I am. Oh, she's there. She's got an arrangement. Nothing's fixed. Oh. Come on, then, little pudding. Come on, your mum's very busy. Oh, yeah, I know. He's breaking his little heart. He was this morning for his mum, yeah. Say, tell her. <laughs> oh. Come on, then. Come on. You nearly got lumbered then, didn't you? Well, it's obvious what we're going to do now, isn't it? Well, go on, you're the expert, you tell me. We'll have to do the old door, that colour. Stanley, we haven't got enough of that to do the old door. We'll have to mix some more, won't we? I've mixed four batches and everyone's different. You'll have to mix some more, won't you? I can't mix any more because we haven't got none. You've boobed, haven't you? Go on, admit it. I've boobed? Doing the back, that was the boob. That was a democratic decision to break get our hands in. And with your stupid ideas, we've finished up with a broken tin owner and blood on the tea towel. Oh, thanks very much. Never mind me bleeding to death. All you're worried about is a flaming tea towel. Look, she's coming back. What's our next move? Well, uh, our area of manoeuvre in the short term, Stanley, is uh, is strictly limited. Look, matching the colour that Hilda sees is giving your habitation that little touch of technical splendour is beyond us. It's not known in the shops, so there's only one option left open. What's that? Emigration. Hey. I reckon we go down the rovers, wet our tonsils and give Australia house a ring. Aye, why not? Two pints of bitter, Corporal, if we're not disturbing you. Let's have a look here, Hans. You what? Well, we don't want that paint all over these pots, do we? Fred, we're both sick as parrots. We're here for the beer, not for the laughs. No, you've got stinky fingers. <clears throat> what are them lot doing, sitting over there, trying to make the place look full, or what? No. Them are. They've been at it all day, they have. Talking all about summit and out. He gets sick of them. Gets sick of working with women, you do. You know, you work with women that long, you get to be like them, you do. Well, you know, does that? Oh, I, I couldn't tell him. I could have found the words, but, well, I could see that he didn't want to face it. I could tell that he'd half guessed as well. But he wasn't going to ask. He got a wife and a family, and all of a sudden I'm rattling skeletons. Oh, he'd have gone to pieces. Well, for what it's worth, dear, I think you were right not to tell him. Well, if it's this son, I suppose. Suppose what? Well, it might matter quite a lot. To a man, could argue he got a right. Yes, but don't you think he's forfeited that right? Well, I know he did a bunk, and OK, it's all in the past. Wouldn't you say that Elizabeth's first responsibility is to Gordon, who may not want all the emotional upset it would obviously cause? But nobody knows what Gordon wants, do they? Here we go. Well, if it isn't young Master Tilsley, I don't know who it is. Minding him for his mother. You're a long way from home, aren't you? But girl said to take him to see his grandfather, but I've just knocked and there's no answer. Well, he'll still be at work, love. She said to be in. Oh, he's likely gone for a stroll then. Oh, I'll take him a walk round. That's a good again. idea. Get on the jelly baby. We certainly have, love. Uh, oh. Ah. There you are, your master. Where is he? What? Where is Nick? Nick? Hang on, I'll see if he's gone through back. <laughs> is he there? No, there's no sign of him. Nick! Hey, hey, lovey, come here. What's your name, love? Uh, Jill, where is he? Look, just calm down, he can't have got far. Now, just answer me one question. He was standing by my side, just standing by my side. I felt his little hand on my skirt. Yeah, will you listen to me for a minute? Look, come inside, come in. Oh. Now, just listen. I was looking after him, honest. I wasn't, I just turned will around and he Will you listen? Look, can he climb stairs? Uh. Do you hear me? Can he climb steps? Oh. Oh, no. you got to watch them every minute. Look, don't get yourself too upset. We'll find him. Now, you wait here and I'll go look upstairs. Mickey. He'd be 
you'd said, love. Is Mr. Roberts in? Me, dear. No, there's no sign of... Oh, have you seen a young lass? She's just run out. Oh, she was in a state. Oh, dear. We've got a bit of a crisis. We've lost a little lamb. Hey, bless him. Hey, listen, would you mind coming back a bit later on? Because I've got to... It's just... Uh... Where is he? I don't know, love. We'll soon find out. Just calm down. You can't have gone far, love. Robert, to what do I owe the honour? Yeah, uh, well, we've had a bit of a... Well, actually, this young lady was looking after young Nicky. You know, um, Tilsley's grandson. Yeah. And he, he's just wandered out of the shop. This door hasn't been open for the last, uh, what, ten minutes, say? Yeah? Do you think he might be in here? Well, you never know, do you? Oh, I'll go and have a look. Would you like to come in a minute and sit down and have a cup of tea, love? Uh, no, we'll... Uh, don't worry about it. All right, I'll go and have a look, then. <laughs> I bet that's where he is. Somebody might have taken. No way, look. He's only been gone a couple of minutes, look. He'll be sitting in a corner somewhere, and I'll tell you something all. He'll be thinking it's great. He won't be worried. Do you think somebody might have taken him? Nobody's taken I've told you. Oh, you read about it in papers. Oh, well, you read all sorts in papers. Any luck? No, no, he's not in there. Somebody's taken Nobody's taken him, I've told you. Are you sure she wouldn't like a cup of tea? I don't want a cup of tea. I want to find him. Nicky! Hush, love. Hey, listen, look, we'll knock on a few doors and, and see if anybody's seen anything. Yeah, I'll help. Oh, good, yeah. Well, look, you, you go with Mrs Ogden, then, and, and, and I'll go ask in the rovers. I mean, he only went missing a few minutes. Yeah. I mean, he can't be... Yeah, come on, love. We'll try it first. Here's my landlord. He can't keep away from me. Oh, whatever's the matter, dear? It's, it's Nicky, you know, girl's little lad. A uh, young lass looking after him, brought him into the shop. She's standing there talking, looks round, he's gone. Vanished off the face of the earth. Oh, no. When was this out? Well, it's not ten minutes since. Uh, excuse me, I, I don't know if you've just come in, but has anybody seen a little toddler? You know, a little lad, within the last few minutes, wandering up and down the street? No, no, no. Oh, I don't know. Well, they move like grease lightning, these kids. Well, he can't have gone far. Have you tried the centre? Well, it's locked in there. Yeah, but he could have wandered round the back. You know, I'll have a look. Where's the girl? Oh, she's with Hilda. They're asking up and down the street. She's at the right stick. I'll bet she is, poor devil. Well, whatever was she doing round here? Well, she brought her to see his granddad. That's why she came in the shop. She was asking about Bert. The bean knocked on the door and there was no answer. Think you should call the police? Oh, no, give it a bit, love. I mean, we don't want to blow it up into a big thing. Not yet. There must be hundreds of kiddies walking about, you know, that, that get lost for a few minutes. They wouldn't thank you for ringing them straight away. I mean, and what was Gail doing while all this was happening? Well, she'll be helping out at the cafe, won't she? I don't suppose she knows yet. Well, that's the same thing, isn't it? I mean, she'll go cork legged. No, leave it a bit. Well, I agree. No point in worrying Gail until we've had a thorough search. But I do wish that these young mothers would be more responsible for their own children. Does Ivy know? Nobody knows but Hilda and you. I'm sorry, Annie. It's getting to me a bit. It's getting to all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me interrupting your pleasure, but uh, as Mr. Robert says, a little boy is missing. Now, he's only 18 months old and he must be somewhere in the neighbourhood. So, I wonder, on your way home, could you spend a little time looking for him, asking people that sort of thing? It would be much appreciated. Thank you. There's always stony ground. On average, I think you got a very fair response. Mm. Oh, dear. Now, just sit yourself down there for a minute. Just... Nothing doing down the street, Al. I got no answer at most doors. Well, there won't be many in at this time, Hilda. Emily's away for the day, Elsie's working, and Deirdre's gone into town. I know that for a fact, because I spotted her at the bus stop not ten minutes since. Oh, yeah. I had a little look in Rosamond Street and all, but there's nothing doing there, neither. Do you know, I've had the most trouble with her. She keeps wandering off. She's in a right state. Bed. Bring her around. Yes, Mr. Can you look in Carl Street, look? Because there's all in little streets. Only on the corner. Yeah. Come on with me, love. I've got to find him. Well, don't worry, Chuck, because there's people looking. Now, come on. i got to. I was looking after him. Come on, love. Don't, don't worry, love. We'll find him. <laughs> Come on, 
Right, well, he's nowhere near the centre, and uh, I've had a quick look round the viaduct. Well, we shouldn't be standing here. No, we shouldn't be rushing around madly in all directions either. Now, let's just run it through, Al. What happened exactly? Well, she came in... What time is it now? About 20 to 3. Is that all it is? She came in with the kiddie. She's standing there talking. She turns round and he's gone. No sign of him. But you don't know how long he'd been gone. Well, it couldn't have been more than a minute and a half. That's all she was in the shop. I mean, I looked round the shop and then I went through the back. I came out, she'd gone in the street, so I brought her back in and I went and had a look upstairs. So you're quite sure he's not in the shop? Well, I checked everywhere. So then we went down the street and I knocked on Hilda's door because that was open. Now, she had a good look round, did, no yeah. dice there, and then I came in here. Now, have you tried the back entry? Oh, I never thought of that. Oh. I mean, I thought he'd be walking Come up and on. down the street. He could have gone round the corner. Yeah, he could. Um, little lad, did you say? That's right, dear, only a baby, really. Come on, Freddy, get your skates on. Yeah, well, he's not deliberately hiding, that's for sure. He's too young, is he? Well, I think so. Yeah, I mean, he's a bright kid, but he's not that bright. From what I can remember, my kids didn't start those sort of tricks till about five. Oh, of course, you've had some, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I'll spare this, though, thank God. No, I'll never let them out of sight. Has anybody killed his mother? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> hey, get it! I don't pay her till after you, you know. <laughs> It's funny. It's the way I tell them. Oh, is it? Well, could you tell her that table four's ready? Hey, what about that drink then? You're not busy. I don't want to go to the Rovers. Oh, I'm not thinking at Rovers. I was thinking at Farriers. They've got an organist in there at lunch times. It's drill. I'll make sure. Hey, I'm just popping out for half an hour. Half an hour? Just till the pubs are shut. He's asked me for a drink. Oh, I see. You know he has. You were there when he suggested it. Well, maybe I was, but you can't just walk away from your job, you know, and it takes your fancy. I know. I don't know who I get it from. Oh, sauce box. Go on, then, for your cheek. Oh, wait a minute. Can you take these and clear table three? OK. You're eating late, aren't you? Yeah, well, his stomach works 24 hours a day. I know, but I thought you'd be in the Rovers. Yeah, well, we're keeping a low profile. A bit difficult with your stomachs, isn't it? Look, we want service off you, not impertinence. Come on. OK, I'm coming. Stanley, I'm not the one to admit defeat, but there's no way we're going to mix that shade of paint again. I said I didn't like it, and the word go. You never did. I said, I said, so it's bound to go wrong because of our illness. You lying article, you were tickled pink when you got that tenner. Didn't stop you boozing that away, did it? Now you're trying to change the subject. Oh, you amaze me, Stanley. You do. You flaming amaze me. I wouldn't have pulled a fast one like that. Well, it's done now, isn't it? It's pulled. We got an half finished door and a mix of paint we got off the tip, and we can't get any more. Only problem now is who's going to tell Hilda? You must be choked. Right, we're off to the Bahamas. See you in a month. Half an hour, madam. <laughs> Glad to see somebody's happy. It's the pure life I lead. Why is it always us that gets the flaming aggro? So what do we do next? What do you think, Ken? Well, they've got to be informed sooner or later, but you know what the police are like. They're no great respecters of finer feelings. I'd rather tell Gail and have them do it. Well, we don't want to do that yet. Right, so we don't inform the police yet. I bow to your judgement. She's calmed down a bit. That brandy did the trick. Oh, good. She thinks somebody might have taken him. Well, dear, it has happened before. More than once. Indeed. There is Ina Sharple's great-grandson, little Christopher Hewitt. That was terrible. That was 20 years ago, Annie. Yeah, but human nature doesn't change in 20 years or 20,000. Well, what well, now, then? If somebody has taken it. Oh, hello, dear. <coughs> You're feeling better, I hear. I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm all right now. I'll tell you where we haven't tried, the factory. He could have wandered into the loading bay. Well, he wouldn't climb their metal stairs, would he? We can soon find out. Yeah. Well, let me go. No, you stop here, love. Oh, please, I want to do something. Let her go, Alf. You know where we mean, do you, dear? Yeah. 
I'll come back here, should I? That's right. Yes. She'll feel better helping. Glad I've caught you. Masons have just been on phone. Uh, will you drop their order off first off? Because they're in a rush. Right. Um, you haven't seen a little lad, have you? No, why? This young lady's lost a little lad. Here I am. When, when did you lose him, love? Well, I was just in the in corner shop and I turned around and he vanished. He's not my little lad. I'm looking after him for his mother. I bought him round to see his granddad across the road, but he weren't in. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, my God. So you'll take the back of the viaduct, Tiles Street, Nightingale Terrace. Hey, now there's the red wreck and all. I've seen him there with Gail on the swings. At the court. Oh, hello, Ivy. Oh, have you found him? Well, we're looking, though. There's a lot of people looking for him. Well, in Gail here. Well, we haven't told her yet, dear. We thought that... Not the... told her? But she's his mother, for God's sake. Oh, come on, Gail. You're going to have to tell her she's expecting that door to be finished. And she loves the colour. She would. It's going to take a Rembrandt to mix that colour again, and I'm no flaming red top. Now, Eddie, swearing isn't going to make it any better. Where's Gail? Oh, she just popped out, love. Well, where to? Where's she gone? Well, she'll not be a minute. She's she only just popped out. Well, I'm... Could I hardly hear myself. The, <laughs> the noise. Hello, Eddie. Do you want... I want you, excuse me. That Gail. Do you know that girl? Well, she's lost the baby. <laughs> Did they not say where they were going? Now, let's see. Ken is looking down Tile Street and the Recreation Ground. Alf is looking under the viaduct artist from the shop to the sorting office. And I think Mrs Tilsley and Mrs Alton are looking down Morton Street. No chance he could have got across Rosamond Street, is there? He'd be spotted the main road. Yeah, that's a logical stand. Hey, Mrs Walker. I don't know what to think, I really don't. So it's the end of Viaduct Street, Arkwright Street and Disraeli Road, right? Oh, and them disused garages at Vernon Street. Could be anywhere. Yeah, on the other hand, it's got to be somewhere. Come on, Stanley. Don't you worry, we'll find a little devil. You want me? No, you play the minister now. You're good at that. Good luck. Good luck. Lock up, will you? Yes, Mrs Walker. More tea? No, thanks. Will they find you? Of course they will. It's all right, love. I was looking after him, honest I was. I was just holding his little hands and it's he just... It's not your fault. Tell her it's not her fault. Of course it's not. Come on, love. Stop crying. Bet. I've just had the most terrible idea. When did the draymen leave? Oh, they came in here for Yes, I know that, love, but when did they leave? Oh, it'll be about half two. Yes, it was, because they left just before Alf arrived with the news. Oh, dear. Why? Whatever's the matter? Well, they had this silly habit, dear, of leaving the trap door open before they go back to the lorry. And you think... Well, if he passed us and turned the corner... You think he might have fallen down the cellar? Oh, I can't live, love. I really can't. I'll go. A woman's work, never done. Is it true what I'm hearing? Everybody's out looking for him. How long has he been missing? About three quarters of an hour. Oh, my God. Have you sent for the police? Not yet. We're just waiting. Oh, Thank God. What? What, love? We were afraid he might have fallen down the cellar. Oh, God. Hey, hey, where do you think you're going? I'm going to look for me baby. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to sit down there and oh, do as you're told. Fantasy. No. Can't have you parading around the streets looking like that, can I? I was out with a fella, Elsie. Oh, come <laughs> here. Why don't you come in and have a brandy? Oh, I couldn't, Sildred. I'd choke on it. Not while that babby's 
God knows where. What are the police doing? Why aren't they here? Well, I don't think anybody's told them yet. They're waiting till we've had a good look round first. Not told them? What do you mean after all this time? Well, I'm telling them, Milda. I'm telling them. Hey, Ivy's phoning the police. Good. thinks she's in here. Is there a window oh. around the back that I should get in? Yeah. I might have to break a pane. Knock the house down if you Right, stay with you. I hope he hasn't climbed upstairs. Some at Bannister's aren't in. Do you feel better after your little nap, Mrs. Walker? I wish I could say I did, dear, but I don't. I feel drained, utterly and completely drained. Yeah, it takes it out of you, doesn't it? Something like that's <laughs> happening. Particularly, dear, where one carries the burden of ultra sensitivity. I lay on my bed, and all the possibilities that could have happened to that little boy. They surge through my mind, like, like... Well, I wish I could help you, Mrs Walker, but if you can't find the right words, what chance have I got? Oh, it's been a very traumatic day, dear. One can only hope the lessons have been learned. That's just what Hilda said, them very words. Really. Where is she, Stan? Who? Oh. The missus. Why? How many she's have you got in your life? I don't know. God's thing, I expect. They always got to be women. Ah, well, that's because they haven't learnt, isn't it? What? That your mouth's for supping ale with. I mean, there's some of us still think it's for talking through. Oh, I thought it were for whistling at fellas with. Well, there's that and all. Hey, is that why you're in a bit early? Grab yourself a bit of rough while Len's out at road? Bye, if that's the case, I'm in the right place, aren't I? Well, take your pick. They're the Stanley here. Oh. They don't come much rougher than that. Yeah. And here's his sidekick, who runs him a very close second. Oh, well, you'd be surprised what kids can get up to when they've got a mind to. Well, all right, so he went in and shut the door behind him. But the door must have been open in the first place, mustn't it? That's what I'm saying. I can hear you, Hilda. Well, I should hope you can. They're death traps houses in that state, you know. No banisters, electric wires all over the place. Well, don't blame me. I were nowhere near. You wouldn't credit it, would you? You wouldn't, Chuck. What? I'm out in the street doing me good deeds. Some tearaway gets in the shop and pinches a whole shelf full of fags. Oh. I've just checked. There must be two or three hundred cigarettes gone. Vanished. Give us a pint, Annie. Let me cool down. Oh. Rita. What? You, Sharon. Oh, she's popping on the lock, isn't it? Well, of course. And the other one. Oh, late. Well, go on then, and not a minute later. 
not what Len's like. I know he's not here. That doesn't mean to say he can break all rules because he can't see you. So think on Cinderella, 12 o'clock, no later, I'll have the shoes off your feet. Right, eight, just before you go. Were you in number seven before you went out? I see. And left the door open, I suppose. What time were this? Don't matter, love. See you later. ta -ra. Well, that's a mystery solved. Young Sharon left here at about half past two, but before she left, she took a pal of hers to have a look round the new house and left the door open while they had a look round, which didn't take more than two minutes. They come downstairs straight out into the street and shut the door behind them. And during that two minutes, young fella, my lad, toddles in. Are you listening, Hilda? Oh, yeah, I'm listening. That girl of yours left the door open. I heard that bit. He was as happy as Larry. Oh, well, I'm glad somebody told me. Do you know I never got to hold him? I never got a chance to put my arms around that babby. My own grandson. Oh, give over, Ivy. You don't stop to consider people's feelings at a time like that. Oh, we thought about hers. Well, she's his mother. She just got him back. She was in a hell of a state, and so were you, for that matter. You were no help at all. So I just put him in a taxi and took him home, and they're as right as rain. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Ivy, tell yourself, all's well that ends well. Never mind the ends. This should never have started. Oh. Damn, damn the vanishing man. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna tell your daddy, eh? Tell him what a naughty boy you've been and giving your mummy the shock of a life, shall we? No. Ah. We'll just tell him you wanted to go for a little adventure, eh? See if Mr. Fairclough was making a proper job of that house, did you? Is that what it was? I wonder who that is at this time of the morning. I'm going, I'm going. I've just sent word round to say I'll be ten minutes late, that's all. Oh, I have had a bad night. I've had to come and see if we were all right, bless him. This is all right. You knew yesterday it was all right. Oh, you had to have a sleepless night for. Yes, well, some of us can't take it quite so lightly, Gail. I'm not taking it lightly. I mean, if you haven't been doing that stupid job yeah, well, in the first place... Well, I'm giving it off if it's any consolation. You are? I'm going round to tell Alma this morning. Quite right and all, leaving him with some flighty little piece of... It wasn't woman. her fault. No. No, it wasn't her fault, was it, Gail? No. It was mine. All right, is that what you wanted to hear? I've given up my job. I've admitted it was my fault. Are you happy now? No. No, I'm not happy, not altogether. What about that lad that you came in with? Who was he? When? Yesterday, when I come round to tell you we're missing. You'd been out with a lad. I hadn't been out with him, Ivy. I'd been for a drink with him. He's a perfectly nice lad. Oh, heck! I don't have to explain my whole life to you. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. As far as you're concerned, I can't do right for doing wrong, can I? Look, Ivy, I'm a good wife and a good mother, and I don't have to explain to nobody. I don't. Uh, uh, look, uh, I've got to get back now. I'll, um, I'll come and have a bit of dinner with you later on, all right? Hey, and that's for you, you little old dinner, you. Don't you go putting no more scares in your nan on, hey? I don't mind telling you. Put a few years on me. I mean, you don't know what to think, do you? Hey, Alf, if I'd have had a years, every time one of my two went missing, I'd be, let's see, 575 at least. All right, you haven't seen me. I'm not here. How many more times have I got to ask you not to come in a shop dressed like that? I've told you I'm not here. This is just the ghost of a beautiful, tragic woman that used to live on this spot in olden times. And she flung herself from a casement window when her husband and lover killed each other in a duel. Do you like that? I'd like if you put some clothes on. This is what's known as local colour flower. Any road else, you don't mind your cock. Me? Not a bit. It always cheers me up when I see somebody looking a bit more frazzled than I do first thing in the morning. <laughs> ta! See, I'm just in time for cabaret. Now, you see? Listen, don't you complain. In all other respects, I'm a model lodger. I don't play the bongos, I wash my bathhouse after I've used it, and I pay my rent on time. Such as it is. Hey, you haven't got a paying rent, have you, Al? Oh, you'll never get rid of her now. Listen, she knows it's only temporary. Of course she does. Of course I do. Hey, Rita, is your oh. lens still off in Blackpool, having a dirty fortnight with a 20-year-old blonde? No, he's in Skelmersdale for a few days, helping a bloke who's got a plumbing contract on a housing estate. Why? Great, in that case, I'll have a flat warming. And before you have a coronary out, it'll be girls only. Just me and Rita. And you can come too if you promise to stop saying such nasty things. And I'm 
if I'm in a good mood, I might just feed you both, OK? Yeah, why not? I can always tell Paul Newman to take me out some other night. Well, in that case, I could have done myself a favour. Only come in for some fruit and a frozen lasagna. Sharon's out tonight, Len away, I won't be a slut for once. Never mind your frozen what's it's Tonight I will show you what good cooking is. What she really means is she's going to scrape the black burnt bits off the fish fingers. I mean no such thing. Not only am I very, very lovely, but I'm also very, very talented oh. in the kitchen. All right, all right, I'll have gone. Oh, you look no, I uh, just came to say I'm sorry. No, I feel that miserable about you. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you said all that yesterday. Now forget it. You can't keep track of them all the time. You need eyes in the back of your head. It could just have easier that end with me. I think you're a very nice person, Gail. Mm. Really admire you, honest. Do you? Yeah. Wish I was like you. You got everything so well organised. Home, husband, baby, job. It's everything I haven't. Well, I've got home, but that's about all, I suppose. Mm, well, I haven't got a job anymore. Not after today, at least. We're just going round to tell Alma the news, aren't we, chicken? Well, you're never giving it up, are you? Not just because of what it's happened no yesterday. It's no big deal. I was never sure I was doing the right thing anyway. Oh, I feel awful. If it hadn't have been for me... Would you like to take it over? I could mention it. Mm, no, I, I couldn't. Not with all them men. <laughs> You're only serving them food, you know. No, no, not me. Well, I know you enjoyed it and that, but it's like I said, you can do anything. You're dead confident. So you're not be needing me again, then? Oh, that's a daft thing to say, isn't it? I mean, you'd not have trusted me with him again any role, would you? Look, uh, I'll tell you what you can do for me, if you like. You don't mind housework, do you? No, I like it. Well then, do you fancy clearing round a bit for me? I mean, I'll pay you, of course, but by the time I get Yeah, that'll be great, if you're sure. Right then. I don't think you find too many fellas lurking in the cupboard. Uh. You think I'm dead soft, don't you? No, of course I don't. We've all got something we can't quite face up to. Even me. Mama, mama. Tell me, Hilda, what did your decorating team run out of? Inspiration or perspiration? They're going to finish it today, most likely. I must say I agree with that, Mrs Ogden. It does look rather peculiar. Well, it won't when it's finished. When it's done, it'll show all the others up. Well, apart from that new house of Fairclough's. And personally, myself, I think that's been done up rather vulgar. Well, it's definitely not got the faded charm of yours. Well, you should know what you're talking about when it comes to faded charm. <laughs> hey, dear, I was wondering if you'd do me a favour. Certainly, Mrs. Walker. So long as it's not changing my night off, I'm uh, entertaining oh. in my flat. No, dear, not at all. I wondered if you'd slip into town. A brassier I ordered has come in, and Fred has a marked reluctance to walking through the ladies' laundry <laughs> department. Yeah, okay, I don't mind. I'll go now. Yes. Oh, uh, can I use the phone? There's something I forgot. Get crafty death on you. Crafty? I'm obliging. My legs are younger than hers by a couple of centuries. I smooch round the shops, then coffee and an eclair, and I'll bet you don't land back here before dinner time. Well, I may just have to wait to get served, Hilda, and you know me. I can't be rude. Hi, Alf. Listen, it's me, Cock. Can you do something for me? Only, you see, I meant to take a chicken out at Freezer, and I've got to go into town. It's for me entertaining tonight. Will you pop it in my room to defrost, love? Oh, and Alf, take that plastic bag out with giblets in. There's a love. You know what I'm like. I always forget and cook them in. Ta, you're a pal. Bless him. He'd do anything for me, my landlord. Of course, I'll put it up for you, Petal, as long as it isn't advertising something that Mrs Whitehouse wouldn't like. <laughs> oh, disco for the under-16s. Good. That means I can come. Oh, with pleasure. Always welcome a bit of glamour. Oh. Oh, do you say things like that to your wife? No, you don't. Husbands don't. You serving food today, then? No, love. Pot lemons. We thought we'd have a change. Of course I'm serving food. Well, he wasn't yesterday when I come in. Oh, yes, well, yesterday we had a bit of an emergency, you see. I'm sorry I had to shove you out like that, but uh, Gail's kid had gone missing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, is she all right? I suppose she's having a couple of days off to get over the shock. Oh! Oh, she'll be in in a minute. I mean, she's tougher than she looks, this little girl. I mean, she'll take it in a stride. 
Mind you, I mean, if you're a mother, you've got to, haven't you? Have you got kids? Yeah. yeah. And you run a club for kids and all. Oh, you're right. Glutton for punishment, aren't you? You don't like kids, then? Oh, sure. I like them boiled. Uh, except this one. Now, for this one, I'll make an exception. <laughs> Everything OK? Yes, thanks. I think my nerves have finally stopped quivering. And thanks for helping look yesterday. I don't know if I thanked everybody who helped looking on the family. Not necessary. He was found well and fit, and that's all that matters. Now, hey. You behave yourself today, Tarzan. One drama a week is quite enough. <laughs> Bye. 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 Do you know, I could fancy him. I mean, he's quite attractive in a pompous sort of way. He reminds me of my GP. I could fancy him and all. Hey, I thought you said you were serving. Oh, yes, look, yeah, could you take his order? Oh, and those, are those two that just came in over there. Oh, who's, the, who's minding him today, then? I am. The thing is, I'm not stopping. I only came in to tell you I've got to finish. Oh, Gail, I don't believe I it. I don't want to, but you know what happened yesterday. How can I leave him again now? Well, he seems happy enough. Look, look, while you're here, couldn't you just stop and give me a hand through the rush hour? I mean, you can't abandon me just like that. I mean, look at him. Talk about starving piranhas. Mm. All right, just for a couple of hours, or as long as his lordship behaves himself. We'll have to ring home first, though. Jill oh. said I'll tell them. It's the rottenest thing I've ever heard. I'm ashamed of you, Eddie. I am, really. But what was so rotten about it? It was perfectly good paint. It just happened to be Ogman's, that's all. Ogman's they've chucked on the tip. How come she knows so much? Oh, she got it out of me. You know how they are. I knew there was something fishy about you two finishing that door. Oh, poor Mrs Ogden. She'll go spare. She mustn't know. Don't you tell her. I'll not say anything to her. But for how much longer do you think you can keep on avoiding it for? She's going to want a pretty good reason. We'll have to tell her the truth. What? Do we got that paint off the tip and can't get no more? Oh, that's brilliant, that is. See, the skin is alive. It's no more than you deserve. Look, Marion, much as I love you, why don't you go off and deliver a couple of reeds or something? This is between Stan and me. Right, if that's the way you feel, I know I'm not wanted. Look, I never said you were <laughs> Oh, wanted. I can take a hint. Right, I'll leave you two to sort it out yourselves then. You got into it, you get out of it. Uh, well, I see you tonight. Possibly. No good looking like that. She's a woman. They're all the same. Especially our illness. Twenty quid it cost me. Yeah, well, you're lucky then they took fags. They might have taken a few bottles of scotch. Yeah, it's not like though, Ken, is it? I mean, it's not whether it's two quid or two hundred quid. It's the fact that there's people about can do things like that, take advantage of other people's misfortunes. I mean, when a kiddie goes missing, you don't think to lock up. You just go, Luke. How? Save my life, will you? Only I'm mad late back and I want some strawberries from that shop in precinct. Only I know you're going to the post office when Deirdre gets back, but you see it's early closing and they'll be shut by the time I finish. I'll settle it with you later, love. Strawberries. Get me a couple of punnets, will you, love? Now, if they've not got strawberries, get me raspberries. Raspberries. Oh, did yes, you? Yes, I've defrosted it. Oh, did you? Yes, I took the giblets out. Oh, he's a saint, this man. Ta-ra, love. Right, one sausage, egg and chips, one bait and mushy peas and chips. Oh, yeah. Thanks, love. Well, you were right. I couldn't just leave you, could I? And Emily's taking Nicky to the park, and by tomorrow the job centre will send somebody around. Yes, I can just imagine what. <laughs> there you are. Right, gents. Has the big decision been made? Oh, I don't know. What do you fancy? Oh, so this is where you're skulking. No, skulking. Get away and have dinner. Saving you time and money. Oh. I'll have pie and chips and two elbows of uh, beans. Yeah, and I'll have the same. Oh, I'll have sausage instead of pie. Marion said I shouldn't eat pastry. And two teas well wet. Perhaps you'd like a cup of tea, Elder Chuck, seeing as how you're here. You can have a cup of tea if you want, but like Rose Tongue and Dance about it. I don't want a cup of tea, Sally. I want me front door finishing. That's what I want. Because I'm sick of people making so called jokes. Ah, oh, well, you see, it's been an itch. So you said yesterday. Now, what I want to know is, what sort of itch? Yeah, well, he can tell you better than me. <laughs> hey, well, uh, you see, that paint we got you, Hilda, uh, it was to make your house look uh, exclusive, you know, so that you'd have something that nobody else had got. I've got some of what nobody else has got. Half-painted front door. 
yeah, that's because we slightly underestimated, you know, and now we've run out of paint, like. Well, get some more, then. Or is that solution too complicated to have occurred to you? Well, can't you see, because they've run out, too. Oh, well, try somewhere else. There's more than one shop, you know. Although, I admit, it must mean dragging your flab a bit further. Yeah, well, the thing is, you see, we, uh, we didn't actually get the paint from, uh, from a shop, like. Well, the discount store, then. Where did you get it? I mean, we often find cracking gear there. It beats me how people can chuck away perfectly. Find good stuff. it where? The tips. <laughs> it's not all rubbish, you know, Elder. I mean, only the others ain't chalky. You've got paint off the tip. That's what you've done my house with. Some mouldy old dried up rubbish that you found on the tip what nobody else wanted. It wasn't dried up. Too it easy. Do you know what belong? It can be as long as it likes, Chuck, because they won't be wanting it. Uh. Once you've sucked that out. And whatever you were going to spend on your bellies can go towards some brand new paint in unopened tins from a shop. And I don't want no bargains what were used for camouflaging tanks in the last war, neither. Hilda, I've tried to explain the problem. I mean, we mix that colour, we can't get any more. Well, get something else. Like mauve. I quite fancy mauve. Mauve from the door? No, Stanley, a mauve house. Huh? What? Do the old flaming house again? Exactly, Eddie. I might have a decrepit, cobbled-up husband, but I'm not flaming living in a decrepit, cobbled-up house. I'll just have the two teas. What the egg was all that about? I don't know, but I gather we've to cancel the order. Well, I can't do that. They're nearly cooked. Well, they'll have to pay for them. Oh, Alma, someone else will eat it. I mean, look at them. Can you imagine giving them to any more bad news? Oh, heck. What? Oh, hello, Ivy. I'll give you hello, Ivy, madam. Now, just a minute. I... You're coming for your dinner, weren't you? Clean went out of my mind. Did you go all the way to the house? Yes, yes, I did. And when I got there, I found that kid who informed me that you were back working here. Naturally, I thought she got it wrong in her usual dim-witted way. But it seems it's me that's got it all wrong. Yes, you have, actually, Ivy, but I'm not prepared to discuss it right now. Well, I... Because she's right, you know, love. This is neither the time nor the place. Right. I'll come round tonight, then, Gail. Because I think me and you's got to have a long talk, madam. There's a couple of bottles to take out, will you, Bess? To take out? You mean you're going to deprive yourself of the pleasure of looking at me while you're stopping it? Not unless you'd like to come and sit on a bin while Stan and me get on with the painting. With your dress, or tantalisingly, over your knee, give us a bit of incentive. Ah, sealed has got you both at it again. By gum, the way these two duck and die, we'll be lucky if we all live long enough to see it done. <laughs> you can't rush a good job. Have you seen the way they work? One brushful to stop for a tea break. They make a tortoise look like Sebastian Coe. It's a local disease, Alvin. I know someone who recently took hours to do a 30-minute errand. Hello. Bet. Arita, have you nearly finished work? No. I have. How would you fancy going to a charity fashion show with me, which starts in approximately half an hour, to which I've been given two free seats? And Mavis doesn't mind holding the fort. What sort of clothes? Sexy, glam, cheap. That sounds just me. Words out of my own mouth. Right, it'll be breaking if I don't buy out. Right, pick us up, our house, ten minutes. Right. Right, that's just about time, people. Oh, eh, cow. What? I was going to switch that oven on about five. It takes yonks to eat up. I don't know if I'll be back in time now. So? So would you be a 24-carat gold stain to do it for me? I suppose so. And if you're feeling even more angelic, will you just sprinkle a bit of seasoning on that bird and shove it in? It'll be no trouble, will it? Anything else? Well, you could just wash me a few spuds and stick them in at the same time. It'll save on electricity. It's your bills I'm thinking of, Flower. I might as well warn you, Ivy. I've no intention of having a row. I've not come for a row. I'll explain to you what happened, and today, which you seem to have got hold of the wrong stick about, and then I'm not mentioning it no more. Well, go on, then. Yesterday, we'd been mad busy. I was hot, tired and thirsty, so I went to the Farrier's for a drink with Les. There was an organist playing, so we stopped to listen to it. And that's it, Ivy. That's all it was. 
Well, what about today, then? Today? I went to give him a notice like I said I would. And when I got there and saw Al Alma up to her eyes in it, I thought, I can't just walk out and leave her flat. You've got to have some sense of loyalty, haven't you? I mean, would you have just walked out and left somebody in the lurch? No, of course you wouldn't. Nicky was fine. He was with Emily most of the afternoon. And even you can't complain about Emily as a babysitter. We got back about three. We had a smashing game of trains. He ate nearly as much tea as his daddy would have eaten. And now he's fast asleep in his cot, perfectly happy. Well, let's hope it's taught you a lesson, Gail. There is just one other thing. When I got back, I started thinking. It don't have to be all or nothing. What do you mean? Well, maybe I was wrong to try and work full time. But I'm sure Alma would take me back part time. So when Jackie's mum gets back and can look after Nicky again, I might, I say I just might, consider it. And I'm only telling you this so you don't say I've gone behind your back again. Well, I suppose a couple hours is better than full time anyway. Exactly. Shall I put the kettle on? I thought you'd never ask. I'll do, Bernard. Hi, Al. Right, now, did you turn that oven down? Yes, I did. And I put a block of ice cream and some frozen peas in your fridge. Oh, I didn't lay the table. Oh, well, that's all right, cos I'll have time to do that while my peas are cooking. Now then, to say thank you, what would you like me to give you? How about a week's notice? Do you know, without that sense of humour, you'd not last a week. Who says I'm lasting? <laughs> Hey, what are you doing there? I thought we were supposed to be dining with you. Don't tell me I should have got that frozen lasagna after all. Cool it. I'm just hanging on here for ten minutes while Betty comes, then we're off. Oh. Well, I hope you haven't gone to a lot of bother. I'm not very hungry. Tough. I have got a slap-up nosh that would put Fanny Addict to shame, so you'll eat it and shut up. You're not actually made of summer, have you? Yeah, what? Underneath all this glamour, I'm a proper little housewife at heart. Oh. When it comes to my mates, I don't care how much trouble I go to. Hello, love. What are you having? You I'm glad to see I've had some effect on you then. Hey? What I said to you at dinner time. I obviously shamed him to do something about the house. Oh, it wasn't you. It uh, was. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, of course you did. Well, we got to thinking, you know, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves letting poor old Hilda down like that. So we went out and got some new paint and we've started the old job again just for you. It's not for me, you daft thing. It's for Mrs. Ogden. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> You're not so bad, though, are you? I'll have a snowball, please. Uh, snowball. Could I borrow her for a minute, please? Oh, she could. Look, look, I've, um, I've had a phone call from our Linda. She's having husband trouble. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, it's not new, really. They're not what you might say the ideal couple. They were quarrelling the day they walked down the aisle, and I think they're still at it. However, I said I'd go over there first thing in the morning. Yeah, of course. Well, I'll only be gone a couple of days with a bit of luck, but the uh, problem is I've got no holiday time coming. So I thought, if you tell Mike Baldwin that I've gone down with flu, it might help. Could you pass the message on? Yeah, I'll never cross from my way to work in the morning. Lovey, I hate to ask you to lie for me, but it will save a lot of aggro. Well, I don't think they'll lock me in the tower for that. No, well, uh, <laughs> same thing applies if anybody knocks on the door and you're in. I'm too ill to see anybody, right? Look, Elsie, you've done a lot for me. Oh. Listen, you go off and do your marriage guidance, but that's the main thing. Yeah, and the right sort of mother they've got for that sort of advice, <laughs> haven't they? Oh. <laughs> there. What was all that about? Well, I don't suppose she'll mind you knowing, as you're my fiancé. Elsie's got to go away for a couple of days, but no one's to know, so I'm saying she's poorly in bed. Elsie's going away? Yeah, but you don't have to say anything to anybody. It's for family reasons. What, you mean you'll be in the house on your own? I don't need a babysitter. You certainly don't, darling. You'll have me. And the street's back tomorrow morning at nine. Next today, Countryside Chronicles in Emmerdale.